The Life of Ippo Makunochi From Hajime no Ippo Ippo Makunochi is the eponymous protagonist of Hajime no Ippo. He is a trainer, retired featherweight professional boxer from the Kamogawa Gym, and former reigning featherweight JBC champion. He originally started boxing to try and answer one simple question, what does it mean to be strong? Since then, he has formed a rivalry with Ichiro Miyada, Takashi Sendo, Ryo Mashiba, a brotherly bond with Mamoru Takamura, Masaru Aoki, Tatsuya Kimura, and a deep trust for his coach, Genji Kamagawa, whom he aims to become the world champion for to honor the coach's teachings. After retiring from boxing, he has become a trainer, being a second for his gym mates while training Taihei Aoki and Kintaro Kaneda. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Ippo Makunochi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, double check that you are still indeed subscribed. YouTube has been unsubscribing users from channels for whatever reason. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background Ippo was raised by his mother, Hiroko Makunochi, for the majority of his childhood because Ippo's father, Kazuo, died early in his childhood when his boat crashed in a storm. During the time when his father was missing on the sea, Ippo went every day to the shore to wait for his return. He believed his father's words that upon his return, he would never leave Ippo and Hiroko again. Although his father never returned, Ippo was able to satisfy himself that his father fulfilled his promise by finding the cap his father wore. After his father died, Ippo grew up assisting his mother with the family fishing boat business. Early Days are After being bullied by Masahiko Umezawa, Takamura, and Matsuda, Ippo was saved by novice boxer Mamoru Takamura, who drives the trio away. An unconscious Ippo is then taken to the Kamogawa Boxing Gym, where he's nursed back to health by Takamura. Before letting Ippo go, Takamura gave him the opportunity to punch a heavyweight bag with a drawing of Umezawa's face on it. After following his instructions, Ippo successfully performed a straight on the sandbag. Ippo's power was such that the skin on his hand is peeled after hitting the bag. While bandaging Ippo's hand, Takamura noticed his well-built body and encourages him to defend himself from the gang. Before leaving, Takamura gave him a video compilation of Mike Tyson's knockouts. Inspired by the videos, Ippo decided to become a professional boxer and requested Takamura's help in doing so. Thinking it was impossible for someone like Ippo to become a professional, Takamura told him he would only agree to train him if he caught 10 leaves falling from a tree midair with his jabs within a week. With much struggle, Ippo successfully caught 10 leaves on the promised day with one hand, surprising Takamura and earning his acceptance. Believing Ippo to not be boxing material, Genji Kamagawa had him spar against prodigy outboxer Ichiro Miyata in order to see whether he could be accepted or not. Terrified at the idea of an actual fight, Ippo followed the advice of Takamura, who served as his second in the match. Utilizing everything he had learned, Ippo managed to get to the third round, surprising all witnesses. However, he fell into a trap and was caught by Miyata's counter. Despite losing the spar by knockout, Ippo's great determination earned him Kamogawa's respect and acceptance. Realizing his potential, Kamogawa decided to have him fight Miyata again, to see how much they could improve in three months. In order to face the counter that defeated him, Ippo learned how to perform an uppercut and worked on a strategy to lure Miyata in. However, after a conversation with Miyata about what motivated him to fight, Ippo decided that he does not want to run away from the counter. After convincing Kamagawa, he went through intensive training in order to face the counter head on. Ippo faced Miyata, who, unlike before, became desperate after realizing just how much Ippo had evolved in three months. With both boxers scoring multiple downs and Ippo's strategy against the counter working as planned, they got to the fourth round. In this final round, Ippo threw his newly acquired uppercut in an attempt to end the fight, but seemingly missed. It was this uppercut that caused Miyata to go down and be unable to get up, making Ippo the winner. Minoru Fuji revealed that Ippo's uppercut indeed landed by barely a centimeter, making Miyata lose control of his legs despite still being conscious. The result of the second spar caused Miyata to leave the gym in order to be able to face Ippo as a professional in the future. Before parting ways, they each promised to make it to the East Japan Rookie King Tournament and settle the score. Debut Arc 
With Miata's departure, Ippo lost a goal to fight for and no longer showed his characteristic enthusiasm. In an attempt to solve this problem, Kamagawa ordered him to follow Takamura's training routine, with hopes of him realizing just how difficult a boxer's life really is. Kamagawa's attempts proved to be successful, as Ippo understood by watching Takamura go through his training schedule with such energy despite suffering the effects of his weight management. After regaining his motivation, Ippo applied for a professional boxing license. Despite easily passing the written test, Ippo was extremely nervous before the test fight. However, his opponent's level of skill proved to be much inferior to Miata's, which made it easy for Ippo to defeat him. Another newcomer, Ryo Mashiba, threatened Ippo by advising him to switch weight classes, as they would face each other in the tournament otherwise. Ippo vowed that he would not, as he has a promise to fulfill with Miata. After Umezawa takes Ippo's boxing license, Ippo defended himself and took it back, earning the bully's respect. After Ippo received his boxer's license, Kamagawa announced that his opponent for his pro debut would be Yusuke Oda. When the match began, Ippo had the advantage until in round 2 when Oda grazed Ippo near the eye and caused a cut to appear. This caused the doctor to almost stop the match. In the third round, Oda went straight for the cut, trying to make it bleed again. Ippo switched to southpaw and eventually knocked out Oda with a series of jabs, thus winning the fight. As a celebration, Kamagawa left money, which Ippo and the others used to celebrate at the Sugar Ray. Rookie King Tournament First Rounder Arc Ippo's second match is scheduled, and his opponent's name is Yoshio Fujiwara. When the match begins in round one, Fujiwara intentionally headbutted Ippo. After the next headbutt, Ippo noticed that Fujiwara was doing it on purpose. Fujiwara then began to headbutt Ippo again, but the latter knew it was coming and threw an uppercut that knocks out Fujiwara, making Ippo the winner. After school, Umezawa introduces Ippo to a group of delinquents. Umezawa then started calling Ippo his friend. Ippo celebrated his first year at the gym at the Chuka Soba. At the Kamagawa Boxing Gym, Yagi and Kamagawa announced the lineup for the Rookie King Tournament. Ippo's first opponent would be Jason Ozuma. After hearing about Ozuma's devastating right hook, Ippo trained to dodge hooks by having Takamura throw hooks for him to dodge, and Ippo using hanging bars to act as a punch to dodge. At the weigh-in, they met for the first time. To Ippo's surprise, Ozuma was a kind man. The match against Ozuma began, and in the first round, both Ippo and Ozuma were on the same pace, dodging each other's punches. However, Ippo was hit by one of Ozuma's hooks and went down. In the second round, Ippo went down due to a hook. After exchanging punches, Ozuma threw a large hook. Ippo dodged and threw a body blow, knocking Ozuma down. After getting back up, Ozuma threw multiple punches to Ippo, winning the exchange. Ippo, running out of options near the rope, saw an opening as Ozuma threw a hook. Ippo dodged and threw an uppercut and a combo that knocked out Ozuma, winning the match. After school, Ippo watched Miyata's match against Teruhiko Takada. There, he also saw a girl who was looking for a seat and dropped her ticket in front of him. After Miyata's win, Ippo was surprised with how much Miyata had gotten better since their spar. Later, Ippo went to Yamanaka Bakery and saw the same girl he saw during Miyata's match, working at the bakery. At Kamagawa Boxing Gym, Fuji arrived with a tape of Ippo's next opponent, Kenta Kobashi. As Ippo watched the tape, he noticed Kobashi clinches and had weak jabs. He then watched a tape of Ryuichi Hayami, who used his shotgun technique to batter his opponent with punches. Later, Ippo got an invitation to go to a training camp from Takamura. After accepting, he arrived at the camp. There, he did multiple exercises, running in the sand, shadow boxing, sparring, and dodging tennis balls. After the camp at the Kamagawa Boxing Gym, it was revealed that Ippo's match against Kobashi was before Takamura's match. As Ippo left the gym, he noticed someone staring through the window. The person ran and dropped his journal. Ippo picked it up and caught up to him, immediately finding out that it's Kobashi. When he found out Kobashi was observing, he started watching videos of Kobashi's matches. When the match against Kobashi began, in the first three rounds, Ippo had trouble with his left arm sticking out. Ippo was unable to hit him and was getting exhausted as Kobashi kept clinching. In the fourth and final round, Kobashi began to throw more punches than usual, hoping for a KO win after hitting with a clean 1-2. Ippo saw an opening and threw a clean hit to the face that downed Kobashi. As Kobashi was unable to stand, Ippo won the match. Ippo then watched Takamura's match against Yoshiaki Yajima. When Takamura went down, Ippo and the others' cheers helped Takamura stand back up. The match then ended with Takamura winning. Rookie King Tournament Finals Arc at school, Ippo attended a teacher's conference about his future. Ippo declined his teacher's request of going to college, wanting to stick with boxing. Later, Ippo saw Kobashi, who informed Ippo that he couldn't find any way of winning against Hayami or his shotgun. At the Kamagawa gym, Kamagawa theorized that Hayami's shotgun must tire himself out, suggesting that this be the moment that Ippo strike. Ippo began defensive training in order to dodge Hayami's shotgun. Miata arrived at the gym, reminding Ippo that he should wait for him at the finals. 
Ippo noticed how Hayami was always doing an uppercut at the end of his shotgun. So he began training with Aoki in order to counter the uppercut. The match against Hayami began, and in the first round, Ippo started to dodge his punches perfectly. After getting hit by a barrage of punches, Ippo got ready to counter the expected left uppercut, but Hayami did not throw it, much to everyone's surprise. Hayami threw a barrage of punches at close range. Ippo went down thinking that there was no hope. After getting back up and gaining his fighting spirit back, Ippo began to hit Hayami better than he did before. He saw a chance for the uppercut counter punch, however they both hit each other. With Hayami's legs damaged, Ippo began gaining his speed and overpowered him with punches, and eventually Hayami went down on the first round, with Ippo declared as the winner. After watching the match between Miyata and Mashiba, Ippo received a message from Miyata who lost the match, saying to forgive him. Ippo, frustrated, punched a sandbag at the gym until he was stopped by Takamura who discovered his bloodied fist. After looking at the wounds on Ippo's fist, Kamagawa suggested he must not use his fist for two weeks. Ippo then began training, focusing on his speed. Ippo went to the Yamanaka Bakery and saw Kumi. There, Ippo found out that Ryo is Kumi's brother. Then, at the gym, Fuji explained the Mashiba family's background to Ippo and everyone else. Kamagawa claimed to have found Mashiba's weakness, which was his left guard, noticing that he uses the Hitman style. However, Ippo had to go head on. After Kamagawa noticed Ippo's fist was healed, he let Aoki and Kimura spar with Ippo. When the match against Mashiba began, Ippo had trouble with the flicker jab's range at first, but adapted. In round two, Ippo was on the offensive. However, he hit Mashiba's elbow with his elbow block three times. Due to Ippo's punching power, Mashiba's left arm fell due to his elbow being bruised. Before round three began, Kamagawa noticed Ippo's right hand is bleeding through his glove. Kamagawa started to then use his right hand as the finishing blow. In the third round, after receiving multiple punches, Mashiba forced his left arm into his hitman style. Ippo, thinking it was a bluff, got hit multiple times and went down. After noticing Mashiba's legs were shaking, Ippo got up. Ippo began throwing punches. Mashiba clinched, and Ippo then began hitting Mashiba while clinched. Once he broke out, Ippo then threw combos to Mashiba till he went down. As Mashiba was unable to get up, Ippo was the winner. Ippo then received the Most Talented Rookie Award. All Japan Rookie King Tournament, Rocky of Naniwa Arc. At school, two weeks after the match, Umezawa reminded Ippo that the next tournament was the All Japan Rookie King Tournament. However, Ippo revealed that he has to withdraw due to his right fist being broken and the healing period being two months, which is the same amount of time when the tournament starts and did not want to hurt it again right after it healed. Ippo then wondered how far he'll go in boxing, needing to find a new goal. Ippo went to the Kamagawa gym. There he saw Takashi Sendo, the West Japan Rookie King, who told him not to withdraw. However, Ippo declined the request and began to go road work. During the road work, Ippo learned Sendo's reason for boxing, that he loves sticking to strong people and win in order to confidently say he's strong. After witnessing Sendo spar with Takamura, seeing the smash in action, Ippo went with Sendo to the airport, where he'd be departing for Osaka. Before Sendo got on the plane, he told Ippo that he'd be waiting at Osaka and accidentally left his souvenirs on the ground in the process. Hearing Sendo's words resulted in Ippo wanting to fight him. Ippo then went to the doctor, Tomoko Yamaguchi, who confirmed that he was able to fight, but had to do certain training for his shoulders, along with putting his hurt right fist in ice. Ippo would then later send Sendo's souvenirs back to him with a note claiming that he may be able to fight. Two days before the match, the Kamagawa group arrived at the Ishino Boxing Gym in Osaka. Kamagawa had Ippo partake in a spar with the lightweight 8th rounder Komori. The spar ended abruptly when Ippo found that he could not throw his right, due to him subconsciously stopping it to avoid damaging his fist. Kamagawa then wanted to know if Ippo could really hit with his right, however the next day Ippo was unable to hit Kamagawa's mitt correctly. As Kamagawa began to quit and pack for Tokyo, Takamura offered Ippo advice when he sprained his right wrist before a match. As Ippo wondered what would happen if he and Sendo threw their best punch after hearing Takamura's story, Kamagawa instructed Ippo to cool his fist so he can throw one punch that he wanted. The next day, Ippo arrived to the Osaka Prefectural Gymnasium for his match. In the waiting room, due to Ippo being unable to clinch his fist hard enough to punch, Yamaguchi, who arrived to Osaka, gave Ippo a shot containing painkillers to smother the pain. In the ring, Kamagawa asked Ippo about the shot, which Ippo answered that he had no idea as he could not feel his fist. When the match began, Ippo's guard was immediately knocked back by two of Sendo's jabs. Ippo backed away to the ropes from the pressure Sendo emitted. Knowing that being defensive would not cut it, he tried to strike with a left, but was hit back immediately, causing Ippo to go defensive again. Ippo got closer to Sendo and stopped at close range as he decided that he had to use his right to defeat Sendo. Ippo tried to aim his right by throwing a left jab, however he got hit by a right. Ippo was then instructed to stop his movements with a body blow only for Ippo to be hit by one. After getting hit by another body blow, Ippo noticed Sendo stopped his movements. He then landed a right, discovering that he felt no pain after throwing his right. 
Ippo, now knowing that his right fist was safe to hit with, goes on the offense, making Sendo defensive. After hitting Sendo with an uppercut, the first round ended. With Ippo surprised that Sendo's punches were different than the videos, Kamigawa informed him that Sendo must be thinking the same, as his right is fine. When the second round began, Ippo's guard was hit with a left smash from the start. Sendo then got into a crouching position and hit Ippo with an uppercut from below. After dodging another smash, Ippo got close to Sendo, making him unable to use his smash due to it being a middle range technique. After taking a breather from the close range brawl, Sendo stepped back and motioned for a smash. Ippo attempted to counter the smash's uppercut with a hook, but failed when it turned out to be a feint. Ippo then shoulder blocked a right straight. Sendo immediately used the low smash that barely hit Ippo, who then had to hold onto the ropes to stay up. Before Sendo was able to deliver the seeming final hit, the referee got between them, ending the second round with Ippo saved by the gong. When asked to sit down by a second, Ippo informed him that if he sat down, he would not be able to stand back up. He also told them that he had something left to do, so he could not afford to sit down. Right as the third round began, Ippo dropped his usual peekaboo style stance for Sendo's more open stance, creating a mirror image. Angered at the thought of someone trying to use the smash on him on their first try, Sendo attacked as Ippo dodged and tried to measure the distance. Ippo then hit Sendo with a 1 centimeter punch, which Sendo initially thought was the smash due to the punch being similar to his own. The two fighters then exchanged punches at the same time that led them to both being off balance. They then launched punches again, this time with Sendo being the only one hit with Ippo's 1 centimeter punch, resulting in Sendo's first down of the match. When Sendo got up, Sendo's damage became clear as he wobbled from a jab. Leaning on the rope, Sendo switched places with Ippo by grabbing him and pushing him onto the rope and delivered a strong body blow. After both fighters exchanged multiple punches with each other, Ippo landed a direct right at Sendo's temple. Ippo became shocked when Sendo did not react at all and began to strike Ippo directly multiple times. As the gong to end the third round sounded, Sendo continues to beat Ippo's unguarded head and body as both Sendo and the referee were unable to hear the gong due to the crowd's cheering. After 10 seconds of the gong ringing, the referee noticed and ended the round. After Kamigawa forced Ippo to sit down, Ippo wondered why his punches were not working and how Sendo was still standing after the right to the temple. Despite knowing that he took the most punches, Ippo claimed he had not lost, wanting to continue. Ippo became shocked as the referee ended the match after looking at Sendo, who was revealed to be unconscious due to Ippo's punch to the temple, and was now unable to move. Ippo's hand was then raised as the victor of the All Japan Rookie Tournament, becoming the Rookie King. Ippo walked away from the ring after feeling like the win was a dream and imagining Sendo still sitting down, waiting to fight Ippo. Ippo, after hearing that Sendo claimed, today I've lost, began to feel that he really did win. Later that night, a celebration party was held. The party ended shortly after a drunk Kamigawa countered Takamura's incoming punch, causing the latter to knock out his coach. The group then left to go to an adult location, much to Ippo's dismay. 2 Rookie Kings Arc After Ippo graduated from school, he met with Umezawa, who wanted Ippo to take pictures with his fans. After taking pictures, Ippo gave his farewells to Takamura and Matsuda, and began walking with Umezawa. Before Ippo and Umezawa split paths, Umezawa made an attempt to apologize for everything he did in the past to Ippo. However, Ippo believed that he just wanted to know when the next match was, and told him that he would call him when he knew. As Ippo walked home, he encountered Miata, who had just graduated as well. Miata revealed that he'd be moving away from Japan to go to South Korea and Thailand in order to face their strong boxers, and would not come back until he closes the gap between himself and Ippo. When Ippo returned to the Kamigawa gym, a big group of newcomers were in the gym due to the gym having Takamura, Aoki, and Kimura having a match the same day. After a roadwork training course set by Takamura, only one newcomer completed and joined the gym, Naomichi Yamada, who turned out to be a fan of Ippo. Ippo was soon chosen to teach Yamada the basics. Ippo arrived at the Korakuen Hall to watch his three gym members' matches. Before going to see the matches, Ippo was met with the JBC featherweight champion, Aiji Date, who requested for Ippo to go to his gym after Ippo's right fist heals to play. After watching the matches, Ippo thought that while Aoki and Kimura had four people between their charge at a champion title, he has nine people between. He was then told by Kamigawa to be more greedy, as he only has nine between, with a chance of fighting the champion being possible within the same year. One month later, when Ippo visited Yamaguchi to have a checkup on his right fist, he discovered that his fist was 100% healed. Ippo then tested his right fist out on a sandbag in the gym, successfully hitting it while thinking back at Date's words to go to his gym to play when his fist heals. Ippo was then informed of a spa request from Date at the Nakadai Boxing Gym in three days. Upon arrival at the gym, Ippo was greeted by Nakadai and the spa soon began. When the three-round spa began, Ippo was pushed back by the champion's overwhelming pressure. After getting hit in the face, Ippo began blocking and dodging Date's punches while punching occasionally where he saw a chance, however it hit Date's guard. Ippo eventually landed a clean right to Date's face and was about to throw a follow-up punch before the gong rang, ending the first round. 
Before walking back to his corner, Ippo overheard Date mentioning that he'd have to use his magic punch. Ippo wondered if Date meant the corkscrew blow as Ippo saw him using it while shadowboxing before the spar began. When the second round began, Ippo started weaving in a motion that prevented Date from using the corkscrew. Ippo's movements to prevent Date from using the corkscrew blow caused him to go into the corner unknowingly. Ippo was then hit with a corkscrew blow to his heart. Ippo, seeing a follow-up attack coming, attempted to guard. However, his body would not move, getting hit by the punch and going down, believing that time had stopped for him. The spar then continued after Ippo got up, and when Ippo saw the corkscrew blow coming at him again, he attempted to block it. However, Date successfully hit him, with Ippo realizing that Date's target was the heart before getting knocked down again. After getting up, Ippo continued to spar until the gong for the third round ended, thanking Date before leaving the gym. Later that night, Ippo talked with Yamada, who watched the spar as Ippo's second, about the spar. When Ippo heard about how Yamada looks up to him and how he used to get picked on, Ippo told Yamada a story about when he himself got picked on for 11 years of his school life until he picked up boxing. The story moved Yamada, who thought that Ippo was strong from the start. Ippo believed that he doesn't know what true strength is, wondering if Date does. When Ippo returned to the Kamagawa gym, he read a copy of the boxing fan magazine containing a statement about Date challenging the world after two or three more title defenses. This disheartened Ippo as he wanted to fight Date in the ring, win or lose. Ippo was then immediately informed of a request from the Nakadai gym, requesting for him to fight last year's rookie king, Kaigo Okita, who was also ranked 5th. After Ippo asked to accept the request, Kamagawa accepted, realizing that Ippo would be ranked 5th if he wins. When the match between Ippo and Okita began, both boxers had an in-fight where neither of them got a clean hit in until Ippo made Okita step back after hitting his guard. Okita used the corkscrew blow on Ippo's guard, causing Ippo's guard to break as his hand flung into the air. Okita then began to use feints, tricking Ippo to guard his head, allowing him to get a body blow in. After being advised by Kamagawa not to go defensive and not to forget his boxing, Ippo decided to block Okita's jabs and bury into his space. However, Ippo was unable to do it due to the feints, getting hit in the confusion. Okita soon got Ippo into a corner and broke his guard, leaving Ippo open for a corkscrew blow. Okita threw the corkscrew blow, however, Ippo dodged it and hit the now defenseless Okita with a right uppercut affecting his legs. Ippo and Okita both have another infight, with both fighters showing damage until Ippo downed Okita with the right. After he got back up, Ippo went on the offensive, as Okita blocked his punches until both fighters threw a punch at the same time, with Ippo's punch landing first by a split second. After fainting Ippo, Okita began throwing a right corkscrew blow counter. However, Ippo landed a right counter of his own, knocking Okita down to the mat. Okita was then unable to get up despite attempting to, resulting in Ippo winning the match. Before leaving the ring, Okita told Ippo that Date would not be as easy. After watching Date's match against Toshio Suzuki, Ippo witnessed Date's victory interview where he was asked whether or not he would relinquish the belt and go for the world. Date answered that he would not relinquish the belt as he has things to take care of in Japan, glaring at Ippo. Ippo glared back at Date after being nervous at first. Ippo then left the hall with his 8th knockout victory and ranking 5th. Class A Tournament Speed Star Arc Due to a new boxing boom, a television station visited the Kamagawa gym in order to capture how the youth put their hopes in boxing. The interviewer was the idol Kumiko Morita. After the members show their boxing to the television crew, spar with Kumiko, and get interviewed about their goals, the television crew left. With the event being shown on television, the gym members realized that Ippo sent a challenge to the champion Date by saying that he wanted to fight Date on a national broadcast. The broadcast then showed Kumiko arriving at the Ottawa Boxing Gym, where the third-ranked boxer from Russia, Alexander Volkzangief, claimed that he wanted Date's belt, shocking Ippo. After Ippo sparred with Yamada, he left with Yamada for his protest. After Yamada Yamada won, Ippo was overjoyed and congratulated him. When Ippo got back to the gym, Kamagawa and Yagi announced a Class A tournament entry list. The entry list showed Ippo's featherweight class having Volg against Suzuki and Ippo against the other ranked Olympic representative, Takama Saiki. Takamura then invited Ippo and the others to the annual training camp to prepare for the Class A tournament. At the Makonochi fishing boat, Ippo informed his mother about the recent events and asked her if he could go to the training camp for a week, which she allowed him to. At the gym, Kamagawa revealed the date when the gym would go to the training camp, which made Ippo fire up and begin mitt training with Kamagawa until Yagi urgently told Ippo that his mother was sent to the hospital after collapsing. Upon hearing the sudden news of his mother being sent to the hospital, Ippo rushed to the hospital and he met Miyazaki. Ippo was informed by him that Hiroko fell after getting off the boat and that she needed to be hospitalized for a month due to anemia from overwork. Seeing his mother in the hospital bed, Ippo regretted not noticing her being overworked before, feeling that he was selfish for making his mother work on the boat alone while he did things that he wanted to do. 
Ippo then began working at the fishing boat, noticing how hard it must have been for his mother to work the boat and make his meals on top of that. At the hospital, Hiroko suggested closing the business for a month or selling their spot in the port so that Ippo can continue training for his next match, but Ippo refused. He did not want to give away the boat that his father left them, and he could do basic exercises well away from the gym. Seeing that it was impossible to do the fishing boat business and boxing, he chose to work at the boat to help his mother. When he returned to the hospital, he saw his mother getting ready to leave, two weeks before being cleared. Knowing that his mother would just push herself too hard when she gets out, Ippo told her that he would not quit boxing, but it would be a hobby while he worked on the boat. Hearing from Yagi that Ippo was retiring, Fuji visited Ippo and gave him the tapes of Saiki's matches. Fuji then attempted to stop Ippo from retiring, but was told by Ippo to leave him alone. During a typhoon, Umezawa visited Ippo, offering his help at the fishing boat so that he could draw a manga as a mangaka about a boxer's rise of fame and becoming a champion, with the boxer being based off Ippo, and if he quits boxing, it'll ruin his manga. After four days of Umezawa helping at the fishing boat business, Ippo thought he quit and was surprised to see Umezawa, who told him to go do road work so that he can be a mangaka as Ippo boxes. When the Kamagawa gym members returned to the gym, they were shocked to see Ippo in it. Takamura decided to have Ippo spar with him as a welcoming ceremony. After Ippo went down, he began to cry tears of happiness as he was happy to be back. After Kamagawa helped Ippo train with a sandbag, he realized the right body blows he threw hurt him through the sandbag. He talked with Ippo about his body blows, which Ippo had already planned to use in his strategy against the outboxer Saiki, surprising Kamagawa, who then decided to let him enter the Class A tournament. After getting advice from Kimura that an outboxer's worst opponent is someone that's faster than them, Ippo decided to be faster than Saiki, starting by finding his own rhythm. A week before the first round of the Class A tournament, Ippo attempted to use outboxing in a spar against Yamada, but realized that he could not throw punches while doing footwork. He then came up with a plan after talking with Yamada. Later, Ippo and Umezawa went to the hospital where Hiroko was being released. There, Ippo received new boxing trunks that his mother sewed and boxing shoes that Umezawa bought. That night, Umezawa noticed Ippo poking holes in his new shoes, which Ippo told him was to reduce traction and that he would definitely win his next match. On the day of the first round of the Class A tournament, Ippo bumped into Saiki at the weigh-in. Saiki commented on Ippo's fists and then told Ippo to come at him with everything he has. In the waiting room, Umezawa visited a nervous Ippo, wanting to take a picture of him for his mother. However, the film popped out of the camera, and before he could fix it, the Korakuen Hall caller told Ippo to get ready for the match. In the ring before the match began, Ippo explained to Kamagawa that he would stop his legs, planning to only attack when he comes to him. When the match began, Ippo entered the peekaboo style while Saiki kept his distance, going in a clockwise motion around Ippo. When Saiki walked towards Ippo and opened his guard in a free shot pose, Ippo began throwing punches that Saiki dodged and then used a body blow that got blocked, but pushed Saiki back from the power. Ippo then pressured Saiki to go into a corner. Ippo attempts to hit Saiki at the corner, however, he dodged every punch while moving closer to Ippo. Ippo threw another punch, but was shocked to witness Saiki dodging and appearing behind him suddenly. The first round then shortly ended. At the corner, Ippo believed he was out of options since cornering Saiki did not work. Kamagawa instructed him that the waiting tactic was not wrong and to aim for only body blows when Saiki's cornered. When the second round began, Ippo pressured Saiki into the corner again and began punching him, who successfully dodged the punches. Ippo then saw a chance for a hit, however, Saiki created extra space by leaning into the ropes and dodging the punch. When Saiki got out of the corner, Ippo began getting hit by flicker jabs at the corner. When Ippo ran out from the corner, he realized his right eye could not open up due to swelling from the flicker jabs. Saiki began using Ippo's swollen eye to his advantage, going outside of Ippo's vision and hitting him with a right before the second round ends. In the corner, Kamagawa noticed Ippo could not see out of his eye and asked what he wanted to accomplish during the match. Ippo answered that he wanted to show everyone who was worried about him that he was alright. Kamagawa then told Ippo to show them that he was alright with one hit. When round 3 began, Ippo attempted to get closer to Saiki to create a smaller blind spot. However, he opened the distance to get into Ippo's blind spot again, landing hits on Ippo's face multiple times. Saiki hit Ippo with a body blow, causing Ippo to begin to fall until Ippo remembered that Umezawa told him not to fall on the advertisement as it would be bad advertising for the Makanochi fishing boat. Saiki continued hitting Ippo, who then fell forward, leaning on Saiki as the third round ended. Ippo informed Kamagawa that he figured out how to catch Saiki after stumbling on him. When the fourth round began, Saiki rushed forward and hit Ippo with multiple punches until Ippo threw a punch into his blind spot, making Saiki step back. After Saiki hit Ippo again from his blind spot, he made another attempt. However, Ippo realized where he was coming from and landed a punch on his face and then a body blow, making Saiki go down. When the shocked Saiki stood back up, he got back into Ippo's blind spot only to be hit again and pushed out of the blind spot. Ippo then threw punches that get dodged. Saiki noticed that his body keeps freezing up. Ippo landed a punch to Saiki's face again and then an uppercut, knocking Saiki down. After Saiki tried to stand up, he fell down with the referee ending the match with Ippo winning and passing the first round of the Class A tournament. In the waiting room, Umezawa stayed with Ippo as Kamagawa and Yagi act as seconds for Aoki and Kimura. As Umezawa went to get water for Ippo, Saiki entered Ippo's room and asked how he could find him when he was in Ippo's blind spot. 
Ippo answered that it was because his rhythm was so precise. After hearing the answer, Saiki left the room. When Umezawa came back, he wondered how Ippo did not fall during the match, but Ippo told him it was because he was told not to fall in the advertisement, thank you Umezawa. Umezawa then attempted to take a picture of Ippo again only for the camera film to pop out. Ippo then watched the match between Volg and Suzuki, and he learned that Volg was called the White Fang and witnessed Volg using the White Fang winning the match. Ippo was shocked by the performance of his next opponent and wondered why Volg did not smile after winning. After Aoki and Kibura won their matches, the boxers go to Giant Echo Karaoke to celebrate. There, Takamura decided to sing the song Champion. Ippo was then shocked that he saw Hayami in the video as the song played. Ippo then joined Takamura to sing the song along with him. Class A Tournament, White Fang Arc after celebrating at the Gaiant Echo Karaoke, Takamura invited everyone to his house for a second party. Upon arrival at Takamura's home, Ippo learned that Yamato would be leaving Tokyo in two days. Ippo was shocked at the news and he did not want to let Yamato leave. When Kimura mentioned a traditional Kamagawa farewell party, Ippo suggested to do it. Two days later, Ippo waited in the basement with everyone for Yamato. When he entered the room, the farewell party began, with Yamato having to spar against Takamura, Aoki, and Kimura. With Ippo as his second, Yamato fought against the three. After the spars, Ippo then got into the ring wanting to spar for one round with Yamato to not be forgotten. Ippo decided to go all out and ends the spar by hitting Yamato with the technique Yamato told me he admired, the liver blow. With the farewell party over, Yamato leaves the gym with Ippo seeing him off. Later, with the semifinals of the Class A tournament coming up for Aoki and Kimura, Ippo then began examining videos of their opponent and then mimicking their styles as he sparred with Aoki and Kimura. The days of Aoki and Kimura's semifinals of the Class A tournament arrived. After the two lost, Ippo was shocked that despite no matter how hard they trained, they lost. He was then told by Takamura that there could only be one winner no matter how hard they work. When Ippo returned to the gym, he told Kamagawa, who had just come back from an interview with Volg's trainer, Ruslan Ramuda, that he could not find a way to defeat Volg, angering Kamagawa due to Ramuda's statements in the interview. Ippo was then instructed to train for a new weapon by doing 200 squats to strengthen his legs to be as resilient as a gazelle. After a week of doing squats at the local pool, Ippo returned to the gym and met with Kamagawa, who instructed him on how to use a new technique. Upon using the new technique called the gazelle punch on a sandbag, Ippo wondered if it would hit due to the huge motion. Ippo was then informed that the match with Volg will be a battle of endurance, fighting close range, throwing punches until one runs out of breath, with Ippo being able to use the gazelle punch if Volg runs out of breath. Kamagawa then tasked Ippo on endurance training to make sure that he is not the one who runs out. With the training Ippo is doing, making Ippo's body become fatigued, Ippo receives a massage from Yamaguchi as instructed by Kamagawa. Ippo then continued his endurance training the next morning. After watching Date's title defense match, Ippo met with Date in his waiting room to congratulate him. Ippo then learned that the other challenger candidate, Volg, was watching Date's match as well. At the Korakuen station, Ippo overheard people talking about a weird foreigner who looked like he was in trouble. Ippo then met Volg, who was seeking help. Before Ippo helped him get a train ticket due to Volg not understanding the station's map, Volg requested to talk with Ippo. During the conversation, Ippo felt as if he could understand Volg, as even though he does not like boxing, he boxes for his sick mother's soup as she's waiting for him in Russia. Later, the finals for the Class A tournament arrived. When Ippo and Volg arrived to the ring, Ippo felt as if the ring was getting smaller due to Volg's pressure, feeling as if he was locked in a cage of the wild beast. When the round first began, Ippo entered his peekaboo style. In an infight, Ippo and Volg attacked each other with a rush of left jabs, not landing any hits for a long period of time until Ippo was hit by an uppercut. Ippo began to block his face, however, the uppercut went through his guard. Ippo tightened his guard but was hit by a third uppercut. Ippo dodged an incoming follow-up and made an attempt to get away from the ropes. Volg stopped his attempt and Ippo was hit by a series of blows that caused him to become unconscious. Volg threw a straight right at the unconscious Ippo, however, Ippo still unconscious stopped the attack with a right and began throwing a combination of lefts and rights on Volg's guard. When Volg backed up into the middle of the ring, Ippo woke up and they both go into another infight until the gong ending the first round sounded. When the two began, Ippo and Volg got into an infight. When Ippo dodged an attack, he landed the gazelle punch on Volg, knocking him down. When Volg got back up, Ippo became hopeful for a chance and charged at Volg, who dodged Ippo's punches. Seeing no way to stop him with jabs, Ippo attempted to land another gazelle punch, however Volg blocked it and began throwing a combination of punches. Ippo was then hit by the white fang, blocking the first hit from below and then got struck from the second hit from above, getting knocked down. With much struggle, Ippo got back up and the second round ended. In the corner, Ippo asked Kamagawa what to do about Volg's white fang, but Kamagawa simply told him to go for it. As round 3 began, Ippo widened his stance, choosing not to run away. Ippo was hit repeatedly with a combination of punches on the ropes until the referee got between them, giving Ippo a standing down. After the referee continued the match, Ippo was shortly downed again by an uppercut. Recalling memories of Kamagawa, Ippo stood up and the match continued. Ippo began attacking again, with both fighters trading hits multiple times until the third round ended. At the corner, Ippo told Kamagawa how he remembered hitting the mitts with Kamagawa when he did not know what to do, with his punches began hitting. Round 4 then began, and Ippo was immediately hit with body blows and a blow to the liver. Ippo and Volg then continue an exchange of punches. When Ippo believed it to be end for him, Volg missed an attack. Ippo began attacking Volg again, who was unable to dodge Ippo's punches due to lacking the stamina. As Ippo was preparing to use the gazelle punch, Vol threw a big punch that missed as a feint. Knowing that it was a feint, Ippo widened his stance, allowing him to hit Volg with a low gazelle punch and then struck Volg two times, causing him to go down. 
Volg got back up, and Ippo attacked his guard until Volg clinched. When the clinch broke, the two exchanged hits until the gong sounded ending the fourth round. When round five began, Ippo and Volg widened their stands and commenced in an in-fight battle. When Volg saw a chance, he went for his white fang, however, Ippo dodged both hits. Noticing Volg was unable to breathe anymore as Volg gasped for air, Ippo delivered the gazelle punch on the defenseless Volg, causing him to go down. With Volg unable to continue, Ippo was declared the winner of the Class A tournament. While in the ring, Ippo passed out and was escorted to the hospital on a stretcher. Challenge for the Throne Arc after waking up at the Kawaii Hospital, he found Kumi working there and then found out that Mashiba had also won the Class A tournament. Ippo went to the celebration party where Takamura, Kimura, and Aoki gathered four girls from the hospital to party with them. The group then played a game of bowling, with the first winner getting to pick first which girl they wanted to go out with, and at the end of the game, Ippo went out with Kumi. After escorting her home, he went into her house and they had a short conversation before Ippo got scared of Mashiba and left. When Ippo returned to the gym, Kamagawa announced that the championship carnival had been scheduled, with Ippo fighting the current JBC featherweight champion, Date Eiji. Ippo, having trouble finding a plan against Date, went to Takamura's house to find magazines to help him, but came to a conclusion that he had no plan and instead would throw everything he learned at him as the challenger. Ippo then went with Takamura for his match against Atsushi Tamaki. After Takamura's match, Takamura informed Ippo that Date's punches were heavy because people's feelings are connected to his fists. After finding out Mashiba was a junior lightweight champion now, Ippo got a call from Kumi asking him to come over for a celebration party. After the celebration party and encouragement from Mashiba, Ippo was requested to spar in the gym for the press with the Philippines junior featherweight fourth ranked boxer. After defeating the boxer, he sparred with Kimura with a strategy to defeat Date. When the day of the match arrived and with both boxers in the ring, the match began. In the first round, Ippo guarded with his left side to eliminate Date's corkscrew blow. Ippo and Date threw punches at each other with no punches landing clearly until Date left his side open after missing an uppercut. Seeing no way to block in time, Date decided to take the hit and Ippo delivered a liver blow. Ippo realized that Date was waiting for him to attack to leave himself open and now he was open for Date to hit him as he was unable to block. Ippo was then hit with a left straight. Ippo rushed towards Date who backed up to the ropes. Ippo saw a right hook incoming and blocked his face, however, Date hit him under his ear. Date continued to show the difference in experience and threw a corkscrew blow after landing a counter, however, Ippo blocked it and pushed Date back to the ropes. Date noticed that Ippo was planning to hit him from the clinch distance, but deduced that Ippo could not land a good hit from there. He was then surprised when Ippo landed a liver blow, making Date's body buckle over. Ippo continued pushing Date back with a barrage to his guard. Ippo then landed a clean right to Date's face. Date attempted to clinch until he remembered that Ippo could throw a liver blow at that range and quickly lets go when Ippo began the motion. The round then ended when Ippo pushed Date to the ropes again, ending the round with a draw in points. When the second round began, Date attempted to beat Ippo at his best range in an infight, which caused Date trouble as Ippo hit him and Date was barely able to keep his guard up. Date noticed Ippo was about to use the liver blow and blocked his right side, however it turned out to be a feint. Ippo then landed a barrage of punches to Date's face as his neck swings from every blow until the second round ended. Ippo informed Kamagawa that Date did not take any damage despite hitting him at full swing. Kamagawa did not believe that to be the case and Ippo was instructed not to change the fight plan. The third round began and Date rushed towards Ippo, looking for another infight. Date was only able to land some light punches as Ippo attacked Date's guard. Ippo landed a body blow and began hitting Date's face again, however, Date spun his neck to roll the punches, negating the damage. Ippo was then hit with a left jab, causing him to go down. Ippo got back up as he was in shock as his punches seemed to be doing no damage. Ippo went for body blows, but the punches were unable to do damage due to Date moving his guard along with Ippo's punches at the moment of impact. Thinking that if he doesn't land any clean punches, he would not be able to knock Date down, Ippo attempted to throw a big punch. However, Date countered it and Ippo was hit with a combination of attacks until the gong sounded, ending the first round. Ippo began questioning himself if he's being too predictable. Ippo then informed that he was using his instincts and intelligence cultivated from years of experience. In the fourth round, Ippo kept getting hit from clean punches. After Date used the next spin to neutralize an attack, Ippo landed a left right after Date put his head in the normal position. Ippo then landed a liver blow and a gazelle punch, however much to his shock, Date was still standing, with Ippo wondering if his punches were light. Ippo then felt the weight of a champion's fist as Date unleashed a full powered right, going through Ippo's guard and hitting him. Date then landed multiple hits until he attacked with a punch from above. Ippo, wanting to give it his all like he said to Takamura, threw an uppercut, hitting Date cleanly. Damage from the attack, Date barely dodged Ippo's incoming attack, with the round ending shortly after. In the corner, barely able to speak, he told Kamagawa that he would not stop until he gives everything he has, as he is the challenger. In round 5, Ippo successfully blocked Date's corkscrew blows out of pure faith in Kamagawa. Ippo and Date have a battle of exchanges, with Ippo eventually leaning on Date and attacking him. When Date got far enough away from Ippo, Ippo fell from his own weight, resulting in himself getting downed. Ippo slowly got up, looking for Date. When he found Date, Ippo walked up to him and, after a quick exchange, readied a liver blow. Seeing this, Date stepped back and landed the heartbreak shot on Ippo. Just as Date was about to land another hit on the frozen Ippo, the referee stopped the match as Kamagawa had thrown in the towel while Ippo fell down, resulting in Date winning and Ippo losing for the first time in his career. Later in his waiting room, Kamagawa apologized to Ippo for his poor planning as Ippo apologized himself, wishing for Kamagawa to continue looking after him. Ippo then thanked everyone for their cheering. Road Back Arc 
After waking up, he found out that Date relinquished the belt and Sendo and Volg were going to have a match for it. After being told to take a break from boxing for three months, seeing Koraku in Hall during a date with Kumi and watching a replay of his match, he started feeling the effects of losing. Ippo went to Osaka to watch Sendo and Volg's match where he met Miyata, who he had not seen since he came back to Japan. The two watched Sendo and Volg fight for the JBC featherweight belt, which ended in a controversial win for Sendo. After the fight, Ippo found out from Fuji that the Otowa Boxing Gym was cutting ties with Volg, who was leaving Japan that evening. Ippo took a taxi to the airport where Volg was leaving. There, Volg thanked Ippo for teaching him the fun in boxing and gave Ippo his old boxing gloves. Volg then left after saying his last Japanese word to Ippo, sayonara, leaving Ippo in tears as he witnessed Volg walking away. Later, after watching Miata fight against Lee Chon Pier, Ippo met Date, who commented on Miata's match and revealed to Ippo that he'd be fighting an American who is ranked 5th in the WBA, and if he wins, he'd be going after the world title. Date warned Ippo before leaving not to idle around too long by having no matches while everyone else is progressing, or he will be forgotten. Ippo went to the match and found out that he, Aoki, and Kimura have matches coming up. With Ippo only knowing the name of his opponent, Panchai Tuatana, and record, he did not know what he looked like or what his fighting style was. Kamagawa had Ippo training more in defense than offense. During training, Kamagawa collapsed and was sent to the hospital. At the hospital, Kamagawa revealed the goal for his match, to hit before getting hit. Kamagawa recovered from the hospital and Ippo went to the weigh-in, where he met Panchai for the first time. Ippo then did one last training session before the match, with Umezawa noticing how Ippo's movements are different from before. When the day of Ippo, Aoki, and Kimura's comeback matches arrive, Ippo arrived at the ring for the first time in five months after Aoki and Kimura won, and looked back at how much things have changed since his first loss. In the ring, Ippo was instructed to start with his left and observe Panchai for the first round. With Ippo and Panchai in the middle of the ring, the match began. When Ippo put both fists forward to start the match, Panchai knocked one of his fists back and threw a right, which hit a surprised Ippo's guard. Ippo blocked Panchai's attacks until Ippo dodged two big punches by weaving. Ippo then threw a 1-2, which pushed back Panchai, who guarded the attack. Panchai stepped back from another attack and then attacked, with his punches missing the weaving Ippo who advanced forward. Ippo made Panchai's guard break by throwing an uppercut, which he then followed with a right. However, Panchai spins his neck with the punch, negating the damage. Ippo got pushed back to the center of the ring while dodging Panchai's attacks. Ippo stopped stepping back, remembering that he fought back against Date's neck spinning by throwing small and precise punches. As both boxers threw punches that miss in close range, Ippo saw an opening for a liver blow and hit Panchai. With Panchai's face uncovered, Ippo hit him with a right uppercut. Panchai immediately recovers and threw a right, barely grazing Ippo. Ippo noticed that Panchai's eyes show that he's determined not to lose. The gong at the end of the first round sounded with Ippo leading in points 10-9. After Kamagawa gave him advice, Ippo declared a victory in the next round by claiming that he would defeat him in the next round to his coach. In the second round, when Ippo threw a left, Panchai threw a right in an attempt to use a right cross counter, but Ippo dodged it. Ippo began weaving his body as Panchai attempted to land a clean hit. Ippo eventually got into the back and forth motion of a sideways figure 8, throwing punches from side to side, successfully hitting Panchai till he went down. Kamagawa was in awe witnessing Ippo's attack, recognizing it as the Jack Dempsey's Dempsey role. The referee then saw Panchai unable to continue and ended the match, with Ippo winning his comeback. Overjoyed in his victory, Kamagawa informed Ippo that he saw him use the Dempsey role, with Ippo not knowing what that was. Ippo was then interviewed by the ring interviewer. With Ippo asking what his next goal is, the crowd noticed the champion Sendo in the crowd. Sendo walked up to the ring and signals from the microphone. Sendo explains that he does not care about such titles as champion and claimed that he owed Ippo one, wanting to fight Ippo again. Ippo replied, accepting the rematch. Ippo then walked away from the ring, feeling thrilled to walk away after winning. Aoki and Kimura's Delinquent Youth Days arc at the Makinochi fishing boat, Umezawa showed Ippo all the magazines of his comeback match against Panchai he bought in Excitement, which had more coverage about the mic performance when Sendo requested a rematch than the actual match. Takamura visited Ippo, where he found an album called Memories, which contained pictures of him during his school days. Takamura noticed a girl who he thought was cute, and Ippo remembered her as the first girl willing to talk to him in school. Ippo and Takamura leave and go to Aoki's house. When Takamura found an album in Aoki's house and found an image of Aoki and Kimura in their delinquent days, Ippo was curious about their past. Ippo, Takamura, and Aoki then go to Kimura's house, where they're informed by his mother that he has a fever. When they entered Kimura's room, Ippo saw an arawana, which Kimura deemed his pride and joy. When Ippo fed the fish, it fainted, not realizing it was Kimura's aspirin. This made Kimura angry and hit Aoki, wondering why he came. Ippo then pointed out that Aoki and Kimura looked like they got along well in their delinquent photos, wanting to know details about their past. They then told Ippo about their past as delinquents up to when they won their debut matches. After telling Ippo their story, Takamura teased the two by offering them to hit him, causing Aoki and Kimura to retaliate and hit Ippo for starting it until Ippo pointed out that the fish was up and moving. Mountain Training Arc Ippo watched Sendo's first title defense match against Saiki on TV. He was amazed how Sendo won, thinking that Sendo was predicting his opponent's movements using a sixth sense. Ippo was then visited by Kamagawa, who asked for Ippo's reaction to the match. 
Ippo expressed his shock of him beating someone as fast as Saiki in a minute, noting Sendo's growth after each match to be inhuman. Kamagawa told Ippo that his next match would be against the champion Sendo, urging him to win and take the belt. Ippo felt that a non-title match against Sendo would suffice, as he felt that their last match never ended. As Kamagawa began to leave, Ippo claimed that he believed that the Dempsey role would not work on Sendo. Kamagawa simply instructed him to rest his body for the fight and not to think about it. Later, Ippo and the other boxers get ready to go to the training camp at the beach before Kamagawa explained that they'd be going to the mountains, where a friend of his was letting him use his pension, much to the boxers, beside Ippo's annoyance. Ippo and everyone else from the gym arrived at the pension Yoshio and was greeted by Kamagawa's friend and rival Ginpachi Nakoda, with Nakoda recognizing Ippo from sports magazines and videos. Kamagawa then had Ippo run with Aoki, Kimura, and Shinoda. Before they left, Nakoda warned them of bears. While running in the woods and acknowledging the strengths of the road work, Ippo noticed a bear behind him, making him run faster back to the house as he warned the rest of the group. When he returned, Nakoda offered something to keep the bears away, leaving the group relieved. Unable to sleep, Ippo went outside and reflected about the Dempsey Roll's completed form. Kamagawa approached Ippo and explained that he has to master every stage of the Dempsey Roll, which he admitted to be difficult, but noted that forcing Sendo back would be harder. The next day, Ippo received a bell to keep bears away and ran with his friends in the woods. Just as the runners began deciding that the bells were working, Ippo was jumped on by an animal. When Aoki and Kimura ran back in fear to inform the others that Ippo was attacked by a bear, Ippo came back with a white dog, which Nakoda revealed was his dog, Hachi. Kamagawa explained what everyone would be doing during their stay for the week, with Kamagawa instructing Ippo to chop logs with an axe. As Ippo did his training, Nakoda visited him. Ippo requested his help on how to chop wood properly. Ippo watched in awe as Nakoda chopped wood perfectly. Realizing that Ippo was training to increase his power, Nakoda warned Ippo that power-to-power -power battles have devastating lasting effects, breaking boxers down by becoming punch drunk, telling him how he himself retired because of brain damage and still has effects. Despite the story, Ippo decided that he would not run away from Sendo. Ippo then became curious when Nakoda mentioned a way of punching without punching. After finishing his log training, Ippo went inside the house, where Kamagawa began explaining the Saki, and how Nakoda used it on him while they were boxers. With Ippo not figuring out the difference between Saki and a regular feint, Takamura decided to show Ippo the difference by sparring with him. Outside, Ippo and Takamura began to spar in order for Ippo to see the Saki. When the spar began, Ippo tested a regular feint on Takamura before landing a full force blow on him accidentally. Ippo then dodged Takamura's full swings until Ippo became confused when he saw a punch coming but it never came, realizing that that was the Saki. Seeing as Ippo had figured it out, Takamura stopped the spar. That night, Ippo compared Kamagawa and Nakoda, not accepting their last match ending in a draw with him feeling as if his fight against Sendo never ended. On the final day of training camp, he tirelessly did mitt training with Kamagawa and then went back to chopping wood after. Ippo was then visited by Nakoda, who understood how Ippo felt fighting a man more than once. Ippo asked him how a rematch felt, which he then learned to look at his opponent's eyes to know their state. As night came, Takamura had not returned from his road work. Beginning to worry about him running into a bear, Ippo wondered if he could defeat one. When an injured Takamura returned and claimed to have knocked a bear out, Ippo wrapped up Takamura's wounds with bandages. Nakoda then brought a bear nabe out for everyone to eat. When Nakoda told a story about how he killed the bear that was made into the bear nabe, Takamura began crying when the bear he knocked out and let live was turned into the bear nabe, making Ippo realize the story was true. The next morning, when it was time for the Kamagawa gym to head back to Tokyo, Ippo thanked Nakoda for everything and gave him his farewell. Once at the gym, a coach requested to Kamagawa for his boxer, the fourth ranker in the JBC rankings, Akira Shigeta, to box against Ippo. When Kamagawa accepted the request, Ippo began sparring with Shigeta, recognizing him as Sendo's next opponent and wishing to get information on him. As Ippo began having trouble against him, he noticed that he's a southpaw. Ippo continued having difficulty against Shigeta until the three-round spar ended. Kamagawa then made Ippo realize a possibility of the title switching hands, with him possibly fighting Shigeta for the title instead. Ippo returned home and gave Umezawa a bell for repelling bears away, and was asked if the story of Takamura defeating a bear was true, which he confirmed before noticing that Nakoda reported it. Ippo then received a phone call from Sendo, who asked if the bear story was true. After confirming, Ippo warned Sendo about Shigeta, but Sendo claimed not to care about him, and only has been training to go against Ippo, who began to hear a certain sound. He was then offered tickets to see Sendo's match against Shigeta, but Sendo told him he had to pay. After axing logs at his home, he went to the Kamagawa gym where Takamura was telling reporters of the story about how he defeated a bear. Once the reporters left, Fuji stayed and accidentally revealed that Takamura would be fighting in a world-ranked match. After Kamagawa explained that Takamura would be doing if everything went through, Ippo became fired up about the gym possibly having its first world champion and began hitting the sandbag. Later, Ippo went to Korakuen Hall to watch Takamura, Aoki, and Kimura's matches. Outside of the hall, Ippo noticed Nakoda arguing with an employee trying to let Hachi in. After it was decided that Hachi had to stay outside, Ippo and Nakoda entered the hall, and Ippo wondered what was in Nakoda's big sack. Ippo then watched with Nakoda as Kimura and Aoki won their matches. Before Takamura's match began, Ippo was approached by Mari Imura, who expressed her interest in him. 
When Takamura's match against Takaki Ito was about to begin, Ippo was shocked about Takamura's entrance as he wore a bear skin into the ring and revealed a scar of three bear claws on his chest. When Takamura won the match with only his left, Ippo discovered from Nakota that he went with an old proverb of he who rules with his left rules the world. Ippo then celebrated with the others at the Sugar Ray. When Ippo left the gym, he saw Tomiko and Kumi. Ippo informed Tomiko that Aoki had not returned to the gym, causing her to leave Kumi with Ippo. Ippo then did road work while Kumi followed him. During a break, Ippo made a promise to Kumi to be the first female to get an autograph from him. They then split ways so that Kumi could buy a paper and pen for Ippo to sign his autograph. At the gym, Ippo met Mari, who wanted to see Ippo spar, but when she found out that Ippo could not spar, she decided to ask him questions. When asked what match left the biggest impression on him, Ippo answered that it was his match against Date. Ippo was then pressured into signing his autograph for Mari. When he left the gym, he discovered a Baka sign outside, not knowing that Kumi put it there due to Ippo breaking his promise. Later, Ippo came back to the gym and saw that Takamura, Aoki, and Kimura had returned. As Nakota began training students during their stay at the gym, Ippo noticed how experienced he was to Takamura. Later, Nakota left the gym to go back to his pension, with Ippo giving him his farewells. Ippo then received his tickets to Sendo's title defense against Shigeta. Lalapalooza arc on the train to Osaka, Ippo and Kamagawa discussed the odds of Sendo winning against Shigeta. When they arrived at the Osaka Prefectural Gymnasium, he was shocked to witness Sendo getting hit in a one-sided fight in the first round. When asked what he was going to do against Shigeta, Ippo told Kamagawa his close-range plan of going against the southpaw's right jabs. However, Kamagawa notes that the difference between Ippo and Sendo is that Sendo attacks in a middle range, with the middle range being in Shigeta's favor. After Sendo defeated Shigeta in the third round, an interview commenced. When Sendo announced to his fans that he'd be fighting Ippo in a rematch in the Korakuen Hall, he handed Ippo the mic. After much aggression from Sendo's fans, Ippo told everyone that he wishes to spend his 23rd birthday in a good mood by winning the title match, which is close to his birthday, gaining respect from the crowd. Before leaving the stadium, Ippo and Kamagawa went to visit Shigeta's room. As Ippo and Kamagawa left the stadium, Ippo believed Shigeta to be in better condition than he thought. However, Kamagawa noted Shigeta's reaction to his trainer's hands coming towards him was the sign of punch eye. Kamagawa warned Ippo of Sendo's ability to implant fear into his opponents, becoming a monstrous champion. While thinking about Sendo's performance and how Sendo sealed his Dempsey role, Ippo got a phone call from Kumi. Ippo asked her to go somewhere with him, which she agreed to. Ippo looked into a dating magazine with dating spot suggestions and decided to go to the Shimono Zoo with Kumi. While seeing the animals and comparing some to people they know, Ippo stopped by a tiger, which he compared to Sendo, before getting urinated on by the animal. After getting a change of clothes, Ippo apologized for thinking about boxing during his date, but Kumi admitted that she couldn't stop a boxer from thinking about boxing. Ippo then decided to make up for giving his autograph to another girl besides her by promising that the first autograph he gives at the JBC featherweight champion will be to her. Later, Ippo was approached by Mari, who returned from Osaka, asking for his opinion on her magazine article about his and Sendo's match. Ippo described the article section about Sendo's spar as if he was watching it and noted Sendo's widened stance would make it hard to push him back, and felt that he wouldn't be able to use his Dempsey role. Ippo then expressed how instead of going into the match thinking of it as a title match, he believed that they are not fighting over a belt. The day before the match, Ippo arrived to Korakuen Hall and met Sendo in the weigh-in room. Ippo was surprised at the champion's relaxed nature, and both boxers were amazed of each other's muscle build as they partook in the weigh-in. After the two passed the check, Ippo ran into Sendo again while trying to leave the hall. While Ippo mentioned how calm Sendo was, Sendo explained that he is in fact not calm. After their conversation, they shake hands while making a statement about how they'll win against each other. The next day, in Ippo's waiting room, after Kamagawa reminded Ippo that their previous fight was a fight between rookie kings, and now it is to box as a challenger against a champion, Ippo left for the ring. When both fighters entered the ring, they were unable to remain calm. The gong then sounded for the title match. Immediately after the signal to begin the first round was given, Ippo dashed towards the unsuspecting champion and got into his Dempsey roll motion. After failing to hit Ippo during the motion, Sendo could only block the punches coming from both sides. Once Ippo broke Sendo's guard, Ippo hit Sendo's face and caused him to go down. After Sendo got up, Ippo sent out another Dempsey roll which almost downed Sendo again. However, he hung onto the ropes. Ippo then blocked Sendo's right. Despite Ippo's block, the right caused Ippo's nose to spurt blood. As Ippo began the Dempsey roll motion, the motion was stopped by Sendo's left hitting him. The two then entered an even in-fight brawl at the center of the ring until the referee separated them as the round ended. At the corner, Ippo realized that if he guards too often and not exchange blows, he will lose. When the second round began, Ippo and Sendo continued their in-fight brawl as the cheering fans stomped their feet, causing the hall to shake. The even-hitting match at the center of the ring ended as Ippo began to get pushed back. Ippo then became worried as Sendo appeared bigger to him than before. Overwhelmed by the pressure, Ippo was beaten into the corner by Sendo, who implanted fear into the challenger until the second round ends. 
At the corner, Ippo was instructed to attack instead of defending and to take the initiative. In the third round, Ippo attempted to attack again after barely dodging the champion's punches, but he got pressured into blocking instead. Ippo then became confused as he witnessed Sendo using the Saki, eventually cornering himself. After getting hit in the corner, Ippo barely dodged an attack and then slipped. As he falls, he felt as if the match was over until he realized that he had not done everything that he could do. Ippo then regained his footing. As Sendo was launching his left smash, Ippo used Saki, causing Sendo to cancel his smash and step back. The third round then ended. In the corner, while Ippo was in a daze trying to think of what he practiced, Hachi barked from the crowd. This caused Ippo to remember his training at the Pension Yoshio for the Saki. He then got ready to continue the fight with a look of courage and confidence that he will show everyone what he learned. In the fourth round, Ippo advanced towards Sendo while throwing punches and knocked his smash away with his hand, stopping it. Ippo then began weaving to dodge feints and real punches. Ippo and Sendo began an in-fight exchange until Ippo pushed Sendo back with a right. Ippo then noticed Sendo about to use a smash, guarding his face for a left smash. However, Sendo sent out a right smash which goes through Ippo's guard. Sendo then rushed Ippo into a corner by throwing punches at his block. Believing to have won the fight, Sendo sent out a big left. However, Ippo hit Sendo with a gazelle punch as Sendo was throwing his left, causing Sendo to go down. When Sendo got up, Ippo dashed towards Sendo and got ready to motion for his Dempsey roll. However, his knees dropped, preventing him from using it. The gong then sounded to end the round as Sendo was about to land a punch. In the corner, after Kamagawa gave Ippo encouragement, he got ready for round 5. When the 5th round began, Ippo quickly got Sendo into a corner until Ippo got hit by a counter. The two then switched positions as Sendo got away from the corner and put Ippo into one. Eventually, Sendo got pushed back with his face bloodied and Ippo was then hit with a cross counter as he charged at Sendo. After Ippo got pushed into a corner and a short exchange occurred, Ippo fell down. The confused Ippo got back up, and when the match continued, Sendo quickly went towards Ippo. Ippo attacked first, however Ippo was hit by a right straight, causing him to go down a second time. In a daze, Ippo did not want to think about getting the belt anymore and believed that closing his eyes and going to sleep would be easier. Ippo then came back to his senses and got back up, not wanting to repeat what happened when he lost to Date. Ippo was then quickly beaten into the corner. When Sendo prepared to send out a smash, Ippo saw an opening and hit Sendo with a liver blow, cracking two of his ribs. Sendo continued his onslaught on Ippo in the corner with Ippo landing the liver two more times, further cracking Sendo's ribs until the fifth round ended. In the corner, Ippo asked Kamagawa what it means to be strong. Kamagawa instructed Ippo to defeat Sendo to get his answer. In the fifth round, Ippo and Sendo quickly got into an in-fight exchange. During the exchange, Ippo recalled his past, wanting to know what it means to be strong. He then acknowledged that the answer is right in front of them. Their exchange then ended after the gong sounded, ending the sixth round. Both boxers remained standing at their corners with both of them thinking that the next round is the end, as they did not have much energy left and planned on using only big punches. When the seventh round began, Sendo immediately used the cross arm block, making Ippo step back. When Sendo got closer to Ippo, Ippo motioned for the Dempsey roll. However, Sendo pushed into Ippo mid-motion, stopping the Dempsey roll. Ippo and Sendo hit each other at the same time with Sendo landing a clean hit on Ippo with a left smash and Ippo landing a liver blow, further breaking Sendo's ribs. The two stepped back from the damage. Ippo recovered first and landed a right straight. Ippo then dodged a right smash and landed another liver blow on Sendo. Sendo attempted to block a follow-up punch, however it was on Ippo's Saki. Ippo then landed a gazelle punch, breaking Sendo's guard. Ippo witnessed as Sendo got up on the count of 6. Ippo then launched a Dempsey roll, hitting Sendo until he went down, looking at him until Sendo fell over on the referee's shoulder at the count of 10, resulting in Sendo losing his title and Ippo becoming the JBC featherweight champion. With Ippo still not understanding the situation, Kamagawa directed Ippo's attention to Sendo. After Ippo thanked Sendo, Sendo wished to meet him in the ring again for a third rematch. Ippo received his JBC featherweight belt and raised his arms in joy as he becomes the champion. The camera crew then asked the champion for a pose. When Ippo posed, Hachi appeared in the ring and posed with him as the picture gets taken. In Ippo's changing room, before Ippo left with his gym mates to be taken home, Kamagawa told him very well done. When Ippo returned home, he immediately went to sleep with the champion belt with him. Ippo then arrived late to his party at the Sugar Ray. Ippo met Kumi, who congratulated him. Yagi then got Ippo onto the stage with his belt and introduced him to everyone and revealed that it was his 20th birthday. As a present, Nakoda gave Ippo a puppy from Hachi. As Ippo held the puppy, he defecates on Ippo's belt. After cleaning the belt, Ippo was requested to sing a song. Ippo chose the champion song, which caused his gym mates to throw things at him for being arrogant, making Ippo feel as if it was the greatest day of his life. Execution Arc When Ippo met up with Kumi, he was gifted a jogging suit as a late birthday gift due to her not knowing it was his birthday when she came to his celebration party. Ippo then gave her his signature as a champion as he had promised earlier. Though happy that he remembered, Kumi claimed that she cannot see him again. Ippo became heartbroken and confused as Kumi ran away without saying why. Ippo then decided to go to the Kamagawa gym and entered Kamagawa's office where he learned that the annual champion carnival was commencing, with two boxers from the gym fighting. Kamagawa revealed that before Ippo's first JBC featherweight title defense, 
Kimura has a JBC Junior lightweight title match against the champion, Mashibarillo. Ippo then assumed that this was the reason Kumi made her earlier statement, leaving mixed feelings about the match. When Kimura left the gym to seek help from someone he claimed would be able to help him, Ippo wondered who it was, which Takamura hinted towards Miata. When the day of Kimura's title match arrived, Ippo and everyone else went into Kimura's room, where Kimura informed everyone that if he loses, he would retire. With Ippo visibly upset, Kimura vowed to become the champion and be even with him again. Ippo then watched the match where Kimura lost in the ninth round. While reporters were talking to Kimura, Ippo listened as he told them that he was retired. He then told the two how his mother had named his puppy Wanpo as a pun of his own name. When Wanpo went outside the gym and barked, Ippo and the others went outside and saw Kimura. Kimura then announced that he would come back by changing his given name from Kanji to Katakana. First Step Arc at the Kamagawa gym, Ippo learned from Kamagawa that the elderly man he met earlier was named Don Kichihama, a trainer who was supposed to be in Mexico, but went to Japan and took Sanada after watching Sanada's 5th JBC title defense. Ippo also learned about Don Kichi's boxing history, when he fought both Kamagawa and Nakoda during the prize fighting days. Don Kichi then entered the gym and revealed that Sanada is ranked first, making him Ippo's opponent in the champion carnival, and warned his old rival and the champion about the Hien and the Tsubami Gaishi. Confused as to what the Hien is, Ippo tried to get help from his gym mates. When Fuji entered the gym, Ippo was asked if he felt the pressure of boxers training just to take him off the throne. Ippo answered that he would enter the ring as the challenger still. When Takamura, Aoki, and Kimura found that Sanada is a son of a hospital director, they begin to wonder if Ippo could lose Kumi and the belt to the doctor boxer. Ippo claimed that Kumi is not his girlfriend, so he would not lose Kumi, making the trio try and convince Ippo into calling Kumi to confess his love. Ippo decided to go through with it under one condition. He has to get beaten in an arm wrestling match. Goto switches with Takamura, as Ippo deemed it unfair to have Takamura partake in the challenge. When the arm wrestling match began, Ippo easily defeated Kimura and Aoki. Takamura then knocked out Goto as he knew the same would happen to him. Ippo then arm wrestled Takamura, however Ippo lost in the end. After she agreed, Ippo took her to the Kahuna Pasta House, along with a tape recorder, as Takamura, Aoki, and Kimura believed that Ippo would try to run away from his promise. After eating, Ippo and Kumi went to a park in the snow. Ippo attempted to confess, however he could not do it, instead telling her about his upcoming match against Sonata. Ippo then made Kumi upset and run away when he claimed that it was not her duty to cheer for him, nor his right to ask her to, instead telling her to cheer for who she wants to. When Ippo returned to the Makonochi fishing boat, he was gifted new red boxing trunks with 12 stars for his 12 knockouts, and shoes from Umezawa and Hiroko. That night, Ippo thought about how he will never give up the belt that the people he respected so much put on. The next day, when the match was about to begin, Ippo walked into the ring nervously and was feeling the pressure of his first title defense, as if it was his debut match. When the match began, Ippo got hit by a right straight that caused him to panic. Sonata took advantage of the situation and attacked Ippo, forcing him under the ropes, and Ippo was attacked again until he recovered from Sonata's right. Ippo attempted to get into his rhythm and went towards Sonata, however he was hit by Sonata who used his hien to change his jab into a hook. Ippo continued to have trouble getting close to him due to his hien, getting hit by the fastening technique until the round ended. When the second round began, Ippo attempted to take the pace by dashing towards Sonata immediately and started his Dempsey Roll motion. The Dempsey Roll motion was stopped by Sonata who pushed his body into Ippo. Ippo continued to be unable to get close to Sonata because of the Hien. He then got pushed back onto the ropes by Sonata's rapid punches, guarding against them waiting for a moment to strike back. Sonata's rhythm changed and Ippo guarded against a right uppercut. Ippo then prepared to guard against a second right uppercut, however the uppercut went through Ippo's stiff peekaboo style and hit him. Realizing that the double right uppercut was the Tsubamagaishi, Ippo retaliated and hit Sonata's guard with a right that caused damage to Sonata and made him fly back to the other side of the ring. Sonata escaped from Ippo's follow-up attack at the ropes by using his hien and began hitting Ippo on the ropes with it. With Ippo on the ropes guarding against it, Sonata launched his Tsubamegaishi, with the second hit going through Ippo's guard again, causing Ippo to go down and become unconscious. Ippo, after hearing Kamagawa in his unconsciousness wanting him to come back to him as he knew how to beat the Tsubamegaishi, Ippo got up, wanting to go back to Kamagawa. The second round ended shortly after Ippo gets up. In his corner, as Ippo left for the third match, Kamagawa told him to remember what Kobashi Kenta did that gave him trouble in the match. In the third round, not wanting to let Ippo recover, Sonata rushed towards him and used the Hien. Ippo blocked it and got his guard hit by the first uppercut of the Tsubamegaishi. Ippo then successfully blocked the second sideways uppercut with the cross arm block, remembering that Kobashi used the cross arm block against him. With the block, Ippo advanced towards Sonata, guarding his lefts. After Ippo got into close range after getting hit by Sonata's left and right hooks in the process, Ippo hit Sonata with a liver blow and the two began an infight due to Sonata being unable to escape. Ippo won the infight as Sonata went down. 
As the fourth round began, Sonata got into an infighter's range and got close to Ippo while blocking and dodging punches, delivering body blows at vital points, making Ippo's face blue due to cyanosis. As Ippo began to lose balance from the body blows, Sonata used his Tsubame Gaishi, but Ippo blocked the second uppercut by putting one of his hands between the attack and his jaw, still causing damage. As Sonata continued his attack, he noticed Ippo is at his limit and threw a right, making Ippo start to fall. Ippo barely managed to stop his fall by hanging onto the ropes. The light returned to his eyes, and he released a punch that missed as the fourth round ended. Before Ippo headed up for the fifth round, he received a slap on the back by Kamagawa as a request. Ippo dashed towards Sonata as the fifth round began and relentlessly attacked him. Ippo then prepared to do his last attack as he did the Dempsey Roll motion. However, Sonata pushed his body into Ippo, stopping it. Ippo landed a liver blow as Sonata stepped in as he predicted Sonata would step into the motion. Ippo then hit Sonata with a gazelle punch. Continuing his knockout pattern he used against Sendo, Ippo used his Dempsey Roll on Sonata until Ippo ran out of energy. Ippo attempted to hit Sonata, who withstood all of Ippo's punches. However, Ippo's right barely grazed Sonata's cheek. Sonata launched a finishing right, which caused him to fall down from his own momentum and miss Ippo, causing it down. The referee then signaled the end of the match, with Ippo winning his first title defense. With the help of his seconds, Ippo walked away from the ring and went to his changing room in the hall, immediately sleeping while tightly holding his belt. Two days before, Ippo became bored as he fished with Wanpo until Kumi approached him. Kumi congratulated Ippo on his victory and explained that she came to watch the match and was alone in the crowd cheering for Ippo. Bloody Cross Arc when Ippo returned to the gym, he learned that Takamura is training for his world contender match, and Kimura is sparring with Miata for his OPBF featherweight title match against Arnie Gregory. Later, when Fuji revealed details about Gregory's bloody cross he heard from his manager, Mr. Sakaguchi, and how Gregory's destructive power is comparable to Ippo's, the gym mates believed Miata has a chance to lose, leading Ippo to rebuke him for talking that way that may give Miata bad luck. Later, Ippo went to the Korakuen Hall and watched as Miata fought the OPBF champion, Gregory. The match ended in Miata's victory, becoming the OPBF featherweight champion. Ippo realized that the gap between them is more than filled. Revenge Arc when Date has to fight the WBA featherweight champion Ricardo Martinez, Ippo was surprised to find the news and was worried about Date's chances after seeing Ricardo's perfect record, until he was given hope by Takamura that Date decided to challenge Ricardo again because he was confident in his victory. Ippo then learned from Kamigawa that Ricardo requested to spar with him. After Ippo agreed to the spar, Ippo discussed it with Umezawa, who compared Ippo's 13 win record to Ricardo's 63 win record, and claimed that Ricardo was only 5 times stronger than Ippo, and that Ippo would be able to land one hit out of every 5 punches. Ippo then went with Kamigawa to the Otawa gym with the expectation of landing at least one punch within 3 rounds. When Ippo arrived at the gym, he met Ricardo and felt the pressure of the super champion after going into the ring with his match boxing trunks, wanting to treat the spar as an actual match. As the spar began, Ippo attempted to use a feint and a liver blow, however he stopped midway as Ricardo saw through the tactic. Ippo entered his peekaboo style and threw a 1-2, which Ricardo easily dodged the first hit and threw a jab that Ippo couldn't see coming. After repeatedly getting hit with Ricardo's motionless lefts, Ippo managed to get close to Ricardo by blocking some of his punches. In range, Ippo began the Dempsey Roll motion. Before Ippo could even start to throw a punch, he was effortlessly hit repeatedly by Ricardo's lefts until the figure 8 motion stopped and left Ippo standing unconscious and frozen in shock. Noticing Ippo was unconscious, Ricardo walked away and stopped the spar. Kamigawa got Ippo still unconscious out of the ring, and the two leave the Ottawa gym with Ippo realizing that the gap between him and the world was huge. Back at home, Ippo looked at his face in a mirror and was shocked at how swollen it looked after Ricardo only used his left. When Ippo returned to the gym, he was immediately kicked up by Takamura, who told him to go see Date and apologize for his performance in the spar. When Ippo arrived outside the Nakadai gym, he looked through the window and discovered that Date was sparring with Miata. Ippo watched the spar and was shocked to see Miata easily beaten. Miata walked outside and was embarrassed that the spar was seen by someone. The two then realized that even though one is a Japanese champion and the other is an OPBF champion, they were still so far away and that the world is a big place. After watching the press conference between Date and Ricardo, Ippo received a call from Takamura to go with him for road work. Ippo went with Takamura to a park so that they could meet Date. When they met Date, they joined him in his road work to discuss the press conference and his upcoming match against Ricardo, with Ippo deeming Date as incredible and wished for him to become the world champion. When the WBA title match arrived, Ippo went to the Ryogoku Kokugikan to watch the match. After the semifinals, which ended in Okita's victory, Ippo was approached by Fuji and was informed that Date wanted to see him in his changing room. Outside the changing room, Ippo met with his wife and son, telling the latter that Date would become the world champion as he was beaten once by Date. When Ippo saw Date, Date told him that he'd be waiting at the top of the world and for Ippo not to take too long. Ippo then wished for Date to win and become his eternal rival. Ippo proceeded to watch the match between Date and Ricardo, which ended in Date losing, and Ricardo's 18th title defense win. Ippo was emotional about Date's loss, which sent him to the hospital, and at the Kamigawa gym, he told Takamura and the others not to mention Date's possibility of retirement. 
Fuji entered the gym and revealed that Date was awake with no brain damage, and that he is able to speak in short durations. Takamura advised for Ippo to go see him, claiming that there was a meaning to it. At the general hospital, Ippo saw Date, who called for Ippo to take Date's hand. Date placed his hand into Ippo's as a baton pass. Before leaving the room, Date's son Yuji asked Ippo if he would fight Ricardo in revenge for Date. Ippo apologized as he explained that he could not, as Ricardo was too strong, not being able to do so as he is now. Proof of Power Arc Ippo revealed to Takamura, Aoki, and Kimura what had happened in the hospital with him and Date. As Ippo's second JBC featherweight title match against Hammer Now was approaching, Manobu Itagaki, who recently joined the gym because he looks up to Ippo as a senpai, appeared in the Kamagawa gym. In order for the newcomer to feel the pain of being a pro, Ippo, along with the others at the gym, had Itagaki do road work with them. When they got back to the gym, Yagi and Kamagawa showed tapes of Hammer Now to Ippo and the others. Ippo learned that Hammer Now went from junior welterweight to featherweight to fight him, and that he was actually now Michi Yamada, Ippo's former kohai, who shaved his head and eyebrows. Ippo took the videos home and watched them, proud of his former kohai's skill in his matches while questioning why Yamada wanted to challenge him and if he can hit him. Later, while mitt training with Kamagawa, he saw Yamada's face on his mitt and pulled his punch, infuriating Kamagawa. When Mari arrived at the gym and revealed that Yamada had arrived in Tokyo, Ippo went with her outside to discuss the information she'd gathered. After hearing Yamada's background of him being an underdog and taking the shortest path to his dream match against his senpai, Ippo became disheartened about fighting him. Ippo eventually realized that just like him, Yamada set his goals high, and he was chosen as Yamada's goal, wishing to answer Yamada with his hands. Ippo's newfound motivation led him to continue training for his second title defense without holding back. During the training, Ippo was instructed by Kamagawa that it would be a mostly close combat match and he could not use his Dempsey roll. On the day of the weigh-in, Ippo met Yamada for the first time in two years. After the weight check, Yamada declined Ippo's handshake and thanked him for teaching him about boxing and that he was giving him the belt. Ippo responded by claiming that while they practiced together, he never taught him how to take the belt. Their match arrived the next day at the Korakuen Hall, where in the changing room, Ippo pondered on how different Yamada looked and still kept him as his goal. Ippo then went to the ring where he intends to go full power to answer Yamada. When the match began, Ippo, wanting to rush the fight to spare Yamada, immediately knocked Yamada down with a powerful combination 30 seconds into the fight. When Yamada got up, Ippo intended to knock him down again but was stopped with a clinch, which Ippo broke out of. After dodging many attacks, Ippo knocked Yamada down a second time. Much to Ippo's dismay, he got up. Ippo got Yamada at the ropes and began attacking his guard. Ippo then blocked a body blow that sent him off his feet. With Ippo aiming punches at Yamada's head, he was hit by multiple body blows. Their exchanges ended when the referee got between them as the round ended. Ippo then witnessed Yamada hitting the rope in disappointment. In the corner, Ippo was told by Kamagawa the three meanings to be a pro, to do any job with ease, to answer the customer's demands, and to devote oneself to the fight. In the second round, Ippo began blocking his body to prevent the body blows that happened from the last round. Just as Ippo was about to counter a right hook that missed, his guard was broken by Yamada pushing Ippo's left side of his block with his open hand. With Ippo's body unguarded, Ippo was struck by the solar plexus blow, immediately being unable to breathe and began getting hit. After recovering, Ippo was soon stopped again by getting pushed by Yamada's shoulder and getting hit with close range body blows. Ippo began to block his body blows until his guard was opened again by the previous tactic, leading Ippo to get hit by another solar plexus blow. With Ippo at the ropes, he was unable to stop Yamada as he used the tactic a third time. As Ippo got attacked after the third solar plexus blow, he acknowledged that Yamada had gotten strong. However, he wanted to teach him the feeling of the first loss. Ippo stopped Yamada's attack and proceeded to open and lower his guard into the brawling style stance, inviting Yamada to attack. Ippo received many hits after Yamada Yamada accepted the invitation until Ippo, after many exchanges between both, landed a liver blow on Yamada, sending him down. When Yamada got up, Ippo blocked Yamada's 1-2 and liver blow. Ippo then successfully delivered a 1-2 and liver blow of his own, along with a combination of attacks that sent Yamada falling. Ippo attempted to catch Yamada's fall, however the referee stepped in and signaled an end to the match, resulting in Ippo's second JBC title defense win. Ippo was interviewed and he commented that he did not want the match to last long, and that while it was painful during his first loss against Date, it taught him a lot about boxing. He ended the interview claiming that he believed that Yamada will be stronger when he returns to the ring. At the changing room, Kamagawa advised for Ippo not to see Yamada, as Ippo's comments may make Yamada hold a grudge, believing that the winner has nothing to say towards the loser. Ippo's words during the interview, however, made an impression on Yamada to continue boxing. Battle of Hawk Arc 
Ippo discovered that Takamura, Kimura, and Itagaki were going to a training camp at a beach, with Takamura taking Wanpo with him. Ippo got excited to go until Takamura mentioned how he was told to rest after the match. Aoki then arrived and invited Ippo to the beach with him, Tomiko, and Kumi. Ippo agreed after seeing Kumi. There, he soon ran into Takamura, Kimura, Itagaki, who were training along with Nakoda and Hachi. He then found out from Aoki that he set up a room at the hotel for him and Kumi, wanting to advance Ippo's relationship from just friends with her. That night, Ippo and Kumi decided to go to the beach, where Ippo tells her a scary story that brought her closer to him. Fireworks then bloomed in the sky, resulting in Ippo and Kumi's shock when they see Takamori groping Tomiko next to Aoki. When they ran back to their hotel and drank alcohol, Kumi began to talk about how she felt when she first met Ippo. Ippo then used the conversation for a chance to confess his love to her. However, Kumi fell asleep after Ippo's lengthy build-up to it. Ippo, however, was satisfied that he said it at all. The next day, Aoki misinterpreted Ippo's joy, wanting him to return the favor by helping him get revenge on Takamura, by helping him catch a sea slater to put on an okonomiyaki. They then went to the building being used for the training camp, where they witnessed Kimura and Itagaki sparring. Ippo then watched as Aoki's revenge ended in tears when Takamura split the okonomiyaki in half and shoved one down their throats. When Itagaki asked Ippo for a spar, he agreed to it, with neither holding back. During the spar, Itagaki showed his speed and skill, however, Ippo pressured him and knocked him down four times before he passed out. Then, Nakota stopped by with the fireworks to use at night, with Ippo later going to the beach with everyone but Takamura who decided not to go. On the beach, with everyone enjoying the fireworks and sparklers, the group noticed Takamura who claimed would just go back, as he would just get in the way. After Ippo and Itagaki's sweet talk and everyone cheering for him, Takamura finally joined the party. After watching fireworks, Ippo looked up at the stars, setting his goal to have a firm grasp on Date's baton. Takamura's fireworks that he set earlier for revenge start going off towards the group as they ran away. When Ippo returned to the Kamigawa gym, he was informed by Kamigawa that a sparring session was set up for him against someone who has yet to debut. The sparring partner, Kyosuke Imai, arrived, who introduced himself and expressed how he looks up to him. Ippo then got into the ring to spar against Imai. The spar lasted three rounds with Imai having no downs and was giving Ippo a hard time. It then turned out once Itagaki entered the gym that Imai was Itagaki's high school rival, with him then explaining his history with Imai to his gym mates. Takamura asked Ippo who fought both who would win in the pro ring, but Ippo really did not know. That night, Takamura's WBC junior middleweight title match was announced. Hearing the news, Ippo arrived to the Chuka Soba and was surprised to see everyone so down. It was then explained that the champion's manager scheduled the match for December, knowing that Takamura would not have a chance to recover in his match in October. At the Kamagawa gym, Ippo learned that he'd be having a third JBC title defense match as a semi-final for Takamura's match against the champion at the Ryogoku Kokogi-Kon if he wins his next match. When Fuji entered the gym to give details about the champion, Brian Hawk, Ippo was shocked to find out that Hawk hates to train. Ippo arrived at the Korakuen Hall to watch Itagaki, Kimura, and Takamura's matches. After Itagaki lost his debut match by Fumito Makino's fouls, Ippo went to Itagaki's change room and explained how they were not fouls, as the referee did not stop the fight and that it was Itagaki's fault. Ippo returned to Aoki at the audience's seats as Kimura's 10th round against Arman Allegria was about to begin after the previous rounds consisted of Kimura throwing large swings. Ippo then watched as Kimura won in a decision and Takamura won in a ring out victory against Morris West. In Takamura's changing room, Hawk arrived to see Takamura. Hawk's visit eventually led to Takamura rushing towards him in anger. Ippo, Aoki, and Kimura attempt to hold him back. However, they were overpowered and the punch lands on Hawk's open hand. Hawk then left after claiming it was a handshake. Later, after being shown tapes of Hawk having two ring out victories, Aoki and Kimura got into an argument as to who would win between Takamura and Hawk, until they were stopped by Ippo, who told them to believe in Takamura, reminding them that meeting Takamura was like meeting boxing itself. The three then decide to meet Takamura to ask him why he began boxing. When they arrive in his home, they instead meet Takamura's sister, Kyoka, and his little brother, Wataru. They were then informed from Kyoka and Wataru of Takamura's status with the family in his past. The next day, Ippo, Aoki, and Kimura were doing road work with Takamura and asked him why he started boxing. Takamura answered that he did it to prove that he's the best. Itagaki then approached to join their training after his absence. In his training for his third JBC title defense, Ippo sparred with Aoki and Itagaki. Ippo and the others became worried about Takamura's weight management and bought him bags of dried shiitake. After Takamura's harsh weight management, Ippo attended the press conference where he, Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki were tasked to be on standby to stop Takamura in case the conference did not go well. When Takamura was struck in the jaw during a pose for a picture, Takamura began to rush towards Hawk. Ippo and the others hold him 
back, however, Kamigawa was the one to act as he grabbed Hawk by his collar in anger. Hawk then smacked Kamigawa in the face, causing Takamura to freeze in anger, however, it ended without anyone getting hurt. When his and Takamura's match arrived, Ippo met with Takamura at the changing room, where he made a promise with him that if he wins by a first round knockout, Takamura has to become world champion. When Ippo's match began against Yi Yan Shu, he was caught off guard when Yi charged toward him at the start. Yi attacked aggressively with lefts that Ippo dodged. Ippo started the Dempsey roll motion as he dodged Yi's lefts. Ippo grazed Yi's chin with a left hook. Yi then prepared to attack an incoming punch, but was countered first with a right. After Yi's body flew back after being hit, Ippo hit him with a continuous attack from the Dempsey roll. Right as Yi tried to respond with a punch, he fell to the ground instead, resulting in Ippo's promised one round knockout. Keeping his promise to Takamura, Ippo decided to visit Takamura, who he found surrounded by multiple Japanese champions, along with Date, Sendo, Miyata, and Yoshiaki Yajima. Takamura then mentioned the promise to Ippo, telling him he would not break it. Ippo then watched as Takamura won and became the world champion. The next week, a large package arrived at the Kamigawa gym containing a bronze bust statue of Takamura, which Aoki accidentally broke an arm off of. When Ippo heard that Aoki was sent around Japan selling mini versions of the statue for a higher price than it was, Ippo and the others decided to check on Aoki to see how many he sold. Upon arrival to Aoki's home, Tomiko answered instead, revealing that he went to Shinjuku. Ippo was then tasked to look for Aoki in Shinjuku the next day. When Ippo found him selling the statues, Aoki, mentally unstable about the situation, became overjoyed at the sight of him. Ippo then mentioned to Aoki that the reason Takamura was acting out is because Kamigawa is not at the gym, suggesting to get Kamigawa at Nakota's place. Ippo and Aoki went through a snowstorm to get to the pension Yoshio to tell Kamigawa to get back to the gym. Post-War Arc when Ippo and Aoki arrived in the Pension Yoshio to request for Kamigawa to come back to the gym due to Takamura's actions against Aoki and using his fight money to purchase statues of himself, Kamigawa instead decided to leave Takamura alone. When Ippo and Aoki asked about a picture of a woman, Kamigawa and Nakoda decided to tell Ippo and Aoki of their past as prize fighters and relations with the woman. Afterwards, Ippo, Aoki, and Kamigawa left to go back to the gym. Submarine Wars Arc Ippo attended Itagaki's second match at the Korakuen Hall where Itagaki had his first victory in his career against Haseo Baraki. As Itagaki was thankful to Ippo for sparring against him, Itagaki invited Ippo to his home for a celebration dinner. Upon arrival at his home, Ippo met Itagaki's sister, Nanako, who is a big fan of him, and Itagaki's mother. He then had dinner when Itagaki's father arrived. Throughout the course of the dinner, Ippo was caught off guard by the Itagaki family's plethora of bad puns and could not find time to eat, having to eat dinner at his house. Later, Ippo was surrounded by reporters at the Kamigawa gym and getting asked about his future. Ippo answered the reporters by saying that he would just take things one match at a time and focus on his next opponent when asked who he'd like to fight the most. Kamigawa and Yagi announced everyone's matches for early spring, with Ippo's fourth JBC featherweight title defense being first. That night, Ippo walked home while wondering what his goal is. He then came across Miyata, who grabbed Ippo by his collar and demanded an answer as to why he'd been ignoring his match request to the Kamigawa gym after he became the OPBF champion. With Ippo confused, Miyata walked away, expressing that he had thought it was a promise. Ippo then ran back to the Kamigawa gym, asking Kamigawa why he turned down Miyata's requests and never told him about it. Kamigawa answered that the gap between him and Miyata had been reversed by a great amount, comparing their individual abilities and weapons. Ippo, however, expressed how he wants to fight Miyata while he is at his best shape, not knowing if he can continue to win. Kamigawa smacked Ippo for thinking he's at his peak and deemed a fight with Miyata a dream. Ippo then left the gym after showing his intention to get stronger in order to make Kamigawa let him fight Miyata. Ippo began planning to improve his Dempsey role by increasing his speed. Soon after, Ippo learned his next opponent, Iwa Shimabukuro, claimed that he would destroy his Dempsey role in a newspaper article. Later, Ippo watched a recording of Shimabukuro winning against Keigo Okita. The recording revealed how Shimabukuro is the same type of infighter as Ippo and that he's shorter than him, making his usual short height advantage turned into a disadvantage. Ippo then came up with an idea to catch Shimabukuro with increased hand speed and step-in speed. He showed Kamigawa the Dempsey roll that he had recently trained to increase his speed, however, Kamigawa was displeased with it due to the speed taking place of power. Kamigawa decided to have Ippo increase both speed and power of his Dempsey roll with intense training. Ippo began his intense training with Kamigawa. After completing the menu, he sparred with Aoki, who could barely do anything against him. He was later visited by Shimabukuro at his home and was requested to show him the ocean. Ippo then showed him the Tokyo Bay, however, Shimabukuro was not pleased with the state of the polluted ocean, removing Ippo's title of Man of the Sea. However, when Hiroko arrived, Shimabukuro recognized her by smell as a woman of the sea and deemed Ippo a man of the sea once again. Ippo was then puzzled by Shimabukuro's departing words as he claimed that he would take Ippo to the bottom of the sea in a fight. 
With Ippo at peak exhaustion, Kamigawa ordered him not to do anything or come to the gym for a week, suggesting that he soak in the water if he needed to do something. Ippo took his advice and went to the swimming club. While there, he was watched by Kumi to make sure that he didn't do anything taxing on his body. Itagaki and Nanako also visited him there, with Ippo expressing his unwavering trust in Kamigawa to Itagaki about the meaning of Shimabukuro's bottom of the sea line. Ippo also learned that he can stay underwater for longer than he used to thanks to the training. After a week of recovery, Ippo returned to the Kamigawa gym and immediately commenced a mitt practice session with Kamigawa. During the session, Ippo landed a punch on a mitt that created a cracking sound, which sent Kamigawa down on the canvas. Ippo asked his gym mates if they heard the sound, but it turned out that only he heard it. Kamigawa was taken to his office by Takamura, and Shinoda then continued the session with Ippo, who tried to figure out how he did it, but to no avail. Afterwards, he noticed he can punch while holding his breath for much longer. Later, while talking to Umezawa, he expressed how he sees this fight as the least complicated but most difficult, and wished to have a good match where he can use his strength. Ippo went to the Korakuen Hall for his weigh-in. After Shimabukuro passed, Ippo accidentally took off all his clothes for his weight check, which surprised everyone. After Shimabukuro Ippo commented on Ippo's python, they shook hands, both aiming for the win. The next day, Ippo arrived back to the hall for his match against Shimabukuro. In his changing room, instead of warming up by punching, Ippo remained calm while sitting and closing his eyes. When it was time for his match, Ippo arrived to the ring and the match began. Ippo entered into his peekaboo style stance and quickly realized that his usual tactic of pushing into his opponent's chest is sealed as Shimabukuro is shorter and has a lower stance than him. Ippo chose to do what he hates being done to him and hit Shimabukuro with his reach advantage. Shimabukuro manages to get into Ippo's chest as they both fail an attempt to hit each other. However, their arms crossed and Shimabukuro lifted Ippo off his feet with pure strength. Shimabukuro then pressured Ippo into a corner while dodging his left jabs. They have an infight at the corner and Ippo began to have trouble due to the punches coming from below. Shimabukuro sent out a gazelle punch in the midst of the infight, blowing away Ippo's cross arm block. Ippo switched to only blocking until his block began to weaken, deciding to push into Shimabukuro, shoving his head up to create an opening to punch. The two then entered a hitting match too close to dodge, shifting their weight enough to throw punches with power until the first round ended. Ippo and Shimabukuro had a continuous close range hitting match until the fifth round, going accordingly to Shimabukuro's plan as Ippo has difficulty breathing and his face turned purple from cyanosis. Ippo blocked his face, thinking Shimabukuro will aim to finish the match. However, Shimabukuro aimed for Ippo's body. Ippo was hit many times by the body blows and unable to defend himself or catch his breath until the fifth round ended. Thanks to his experience with Cyanosis against Sanada, Ippo took deep breaths and planned to gather enough strength to use the Dempsey Roll. In the sixth round, Ippo set himself up to the distance required to use the Dempsey Roll. Doing the Dempsey Roll's motion, Ippo began to hit Shimabukuro. However, he was hit as well in exchange. Ippo and Shimabukuro continued exchanging punches, with Ippo using the Dempsey Roll until the technique's motion stopped and turned into a mere hook, resulting in Shimabukuro successfully defeating the Dempsey Roll. Ippo hung onto the ropes in despair of having his Dempsey Roll beaten. Despite Ippo being open for attacks, Shimabukuro Shimabukuro could not move at all due to the amount of damage he took to defeat the Dempsey Roll, and his face was purple with cyanosis, taking both boxers to the bottom of the sea. When the sixth round ended, Kamigawa instructed Ippo to take deep breaths to gather his oxygen from his cells in order to last another three minutes. When both boxers got out of their corners, Ippo became relaxed as he smiled at Shimabukuro. In the seventh round, Ippo, after throwing a weak punch, immediately got pushed to the ropes and proceeded to guard against a barrage. Shimabukuro launched a gazelle punch in an attempt to break Ippo's guard. However, Ippo placed his right hand over his jaw to avoid a direct hit. Ippo, following Kamigawa's previous orders, held his power back while using 1-2s. Shimabukuro sent out a gazelle punch, this time with more power, which Ippo blocked with a cross-arm block. Ippo attacked Shimabukuro while imagining himself hitting Kamigawa's mitts and blocking his punches. When Ippo lost his balance from his own momentum, he gathered enough strength to throw another punch, which Shimabukuro decided to take as Ippo's punches have weakened, planning to counter afterwards. Ippo landed the punch and heard the same sound he heard at the gym when he knocked Kamigawa down while mitt practicing. Shimabukuro lost his balance from the seemingly weak punch. He regained his balance as Ippo motioned his Dempsey roll. Ippo used the Dempsey Roll and exchanged blows with Shimabukuro until Ippo sent him down with a full body Dempsey Roll blow. When Shimabukuro took a fighting pose, he was unable to stand up before the count of 10, resulting in Ippo's victory, defending his JBC title a fourth time. After wearing his belt and doing a victory pose, Ippo passed out and was carried to the changing room by Kamigawa. In the changing room, Ippo woke up and wished to thank his mother for telling him long ago that his father would imagine his opponent's face as a fish, which is why he smiled in the seventh round. While walking into the shower room, Ippo came across Shimabukuro, who revealed his plans to leave for Okinawa the next day, and that he was retiring to protect the reefs from impending customers as summer was about to begin. Shimabukuro left after telling Ippo that he should live by the ring, and if he ever goes to Okinawa, give him a call for a swimming contest. Later, while resting, Nanako, Kumi, and Mari visited him and were arguing until Hiroko stopped them. When he woke up, Ippo was informed by Umezawa that a fight happened while he was asleep, which ended in a draw. Comic Show Arc
After Ippo recovered from his match against Shimabukuro, he returned to the Kamagawa gym and was shocked to see Aoki botch his weight management and become a bantamweight. He then went to the gym's office and revealed to Kamagawa and Yagi that he noticed the Dempsey Roll's weakness to counters during the match, and realized that this was the reason for Kamagawa turning down Miyata's requests. He then told them that he also realized that they would always support him. Later, after Aoki regained his weight, he asked Ippo how it felt to first hold the belt. Ippo answered that it felt accomplished, like everything he had done meant something. When Ippo saw the lightweight champion, Imai Katsutaka, claim he would crush the frog in a headline in a newspaper, he noted how similar it was to Shimabukuro wanting to destroy the Dempsey roll in a headline. Thinking that Aoki may not be able to use his frog punch, Ippo and his other gym mates try to help Aoki learn a technique he can mix with the frog punch. However, they stopped when Aoki ran away as he thought he was being made fun of. After the weigh-in for Itagaki and Aoki, Ippo went with Kimura and Itagaki outside Korakuen Hall where they noticed Imai and his girlfriend talking. They then witnessed Imai being rude to her, resulting in her crying and running away. The next day, Ippo watched Itagaki's first match of his East Japan Rookie King tournament, which ended in Itagaki's victory. Ippo, like the rest of the audience, were tricked by Aoki's look away, but Ippo was in a higher seating area and he saw him use the frog punch after doing the look away. The match ended after round 10 was over and the decision resulted in a draw, making Imai keep the belt and Aoki losing. After the match, Takamura made rude remarks about the match. Ippo, Itagaki, and Kimura had Takamura go to Aoki's house to apologize, as they believe it'll be his fault if he retires. When they got there, they overheard Aoki and Tomiko talking about how he'd become champion the next time if he tries. The group then left as Aoki seemed busy and they figured he was not retiring. Dragon Slayer Arc as Aoki has been away from the gym for a week, Ippo and the others begin to think that he's retiring. When Yagi informed Ippo that he is a visitor, he was surprised to see Kenta Kobashi. Kobashi revealed that he has retired and become a trainer after getting the belt, not even defending his JBC Junior Featherweight title once. Ippo learned from him that everyone who attended their East Japan Rookie King tournament besides Mashiba, Sendo, and Miyata had retired. Kobashi asked Ippo why he started boxing, which Ippo answered that he wanted to know what it means to be strong. However, he still has not found the answer. Kobashi then left, expressing how he would keep watching Ippo to see how far he has to go to be satisfied. When Ippo returned to the gym, Aoki arrived and introduced the two people who made him decide not to retire, Isamu Akamatsu and Hiroshi Kizakura. Ippo was in disbelief when the Aoki team refused to do what Takamura asked, as they only listened to Aoki. Later, Ippo went to Osaka to see Sendo's comeback match at the Osaka Prefectural Gymnasium. Ippo watched as Sendo won by a one-round knockout and excitedly went to his changing room to congratulate him. When Ippo entered, Sendo was arguing with Ryuhei Sawamura, who Ippo recognized as the the JBC third ranker in the featherweights. Ippo went to greet Sawamura, however the third ranker denied a handshake from the champion and walked away after suggesting for Ippo not to use the Dempsey roll. As Sawamura saw it as a clumsy technique that'll fall apart. Sendo noted by experience that Sawamura can back up his words and warned Ippo that he is a counter puncher along with being the Dempsey roll's natural enemy. Outside the building, Sendo told Ippo how Sawamura may have the potential to surpass Miyata, suggesting to train with someone else to be able to counter the Dempsey role. Later, Ippo went to Takamura's press conference for his first WBC junior middleweight title defense match against Larry Bernard. There, Takamura announced that he'd relinquish the junior middleweight belt to move up a weight class in his conquest to conquer six weight classes from junior middleweight to heavyweight. To prove it, he claimed he would not get hit once against Bernard. The next day, Ippo went to the Ryogoku Kokogi-Kan and was worried about Takamura's claim of not getting hit. Takamura revealed that he had a plan. Ippo then watched the match, where Takamura did Aoki's look away and then turned his body for a full body look away. However, it did not fool Bernard as he was able to hit Takamura during the action. Despite breaking his no-hit promise, Takamura won. In the changing room, Ippo told Itagaki that Takamura probably would have taken no hits if he had fought properly, and how he is like a superhuman after fighting a World title fight without a sweat. Later, Ippo went to Kamagawa's office where he's called a cheese champion by Kamagawa because Ippo has many holes like Swiss cheese, as he still has many challenges despite being the first ranker. Ippo was then handed names of four challengers to pick from. He decided to pick Sawamura, and he explained to Kamagawa and Yagi that he had already met Sawamura and he had called the Dempsey roll clumsy. That night, Ippo went home and watched Sawamura's match video in shock as Sawamura won against a tired Shimabukuro by decision after four rounds. Ippo went to Takamura's house to show his gym mates the video and another video where he purposely committed a foul. After watching the videos, Fuji entered the room and revealed details about Sawamura. Ippo was disgusted to learn that Sawamura beats people on the streets despite being a professional boxer and refuses to recognize Sawamura as a boxer nor his way of boxing as boxing. The next day, Kamagawa informed Ippo that he would give Sawamura's gym his reply to accept the match. Takamura asked Ippo what he'd do about the Dempsey Roll's weakness to counters. Ippo planned on using the technique on Sawamura to beat him and to make the Dempsey Roll not lose to modern boxing. Ippo announced to his gym mates that he'd evolve the Dempsey Roll, though 
although he does not know how. He asks for Kimura and Itagaki's help as they're both outboxers and counter users like Sawamura. Kimura attempted to spar with Ippo to counter the Dempsey roll, however the fear of the Dempsey roll did not let him. With Itagaki also not wanting to do it for the same reason, Takamura advised Ippo that he needs to do something soon because it may take too long for Kimura and Itagaki to get used to the timing of the counter for them to have the confidence to throw it, suggesting to have someone on the same level as Miyata to practice with. Kamagawa noticed Ippo being worried about evolving the Dempsey roll and has him think of what to do about it while having him run and dragging a vehicle tire on a rope, informing Ippo that if he found a way to evolve the technique, it would require a strong lower body to pull it off. While doing road work, Ippo was surprised when he passed by Volg, who went from Russia to Japan looking for Ippo. Volg revealed that he's planning on making a comeback in the United States, requesting for Ippo to give him back his gloves that he left him when he left Japan. Ippo let him know that he has them, but when he learned that Volg slept under a bridge for two nights, he offered Volg to stay at his house until he leaves Japan. Ippo then took Volg to his home where he shows him tape recordings of some of his matches. Volg was amazed by the Dempsey roll and mentioned that he'd aim for a counter if he were to face it. This made Ippo realize that Volg may be the one to help him against Sawamura. After dinner, Ippo asked Volg if he could spar with him. However, Volg declined as he felt he would be of no help to him due to his absence from boxing. While working at the fishing boat and training with Volg at the gym, Ippo later discovered that Volg left after watching tapes of Sawamura's matches. When Umezawa asked what will happen with Volg, Ippo answered that Kamagawa had contacted Denkichi Hama to Volg in America. On the day before Volg leaves for America, Volg asked Ippo to spar with him, wanting to show him the Dempsey roll counter. The next day, Ippo got into the ring at the Kamagawa gym and began to spar with him. After Ippo and Volg had a serious fight for two rounds, Ippo started his Dempsey roll in the final third round. As Ippo hit Volg's block multiple times, Volg stepped back as Ippo was struck with a right counter to the face as he was preparing to hit Volg, making him pass out on the canvas. Ippo later woke up, however Volg had already left for America. The next day, Ippo began to think that winning against Sawamura would be impossible for him. When talking with Kamagawa, he learned that he passed out to Volg's punch even though Volg was holding back, making Kamagawa worry that Ippo may not wake up from Sawamura hitting him with the counter in a worst case scenario. Despite this, Ippo was confident that he'd figure out what to do and come up with a strategy. While running, Ippo came up with a way to evolve the Dempsey roll by changing the rhythm after realizing that counter users are able to hit the Dempsey roll because the rhythm is easy to read. Ippo tried changing the rhythm of the motion, however he was unable to do it with the strain it puts on his legs and waist, noticing that Kamagawa made him drag tires in order to train his lower body. While testing his new Dempsey roll in the Kamagawa gym's ring, he fell down and was unable to get up. Kamagawa had Tomoko Yamaguchi come to do an emergency checkup. Yamaguchi revealed that his knees and waist had too much strain put on them, and any more would be dangerous and could end his boxing career should he injure them. When Yamaguchi warned Ippo to only do the new Dempsey roll twice in the match, Ippo was determined to do it more than that, as he does not want to lose. On the day before the weigh-in, Ippo and Umezawa start talking about his upcoming match, with Ippo expressing how he dislikes Sawamura ignoring the rules of boxing despite being strong. Walking away, Ippo planned on forgetting about the limits Yamaguchi mentioned, using the new Dempsey roll as many times as it takes, even if it means never arriving at the promised place with Miata. On the day of the weigh-in, Ippo arrived at the Korakuen Hall's weigh-in. Ippo was frustrated when Sawamura wanted to fight him in the weigh-in room, reminding Sawamura that they would fight the next day, wanting to fight fair and by the rules in the ring. Ippo then left to meet Kumi outside. On the way there, he was stopped by Sawamura's teacher, who pleaded for Ippo to take down Sawamura, which Ippo agreed to. Outside the Korakuen Hall, Ippo met with Kumi and Mashiba, who Ippo was not so thrilled to see. While walking towards an amusement park, Mashiba saw a parked motorcycle and wanted to ride it. Kumi got between Mashiba and the motorcycle to stop him. It turned out that it was Sawamura's motorcycle when Sawamura arrived and attacked Kumi, leaving a scratch on her face. Ippo was angered that Sawamura would hit a woman despite being a boxer. Ippo then stopped Mashiba from attacking Sawamura, telling him that he'll fight the next day. As Sawamura leaves, Ippo asked Kumi to come watch him fight as it would help encourage him. The next day, Ippo went to the Korakuen Hall for his title defense against Sawamura. Umezawa visited him in the waiting room to tell Ippo a Russian good luck charm he was taught by Volg. When their match arrived, Ippo and Sawamura got into the ring, and after Sawamura lunged at Ippo to try and start before the gong could ring, the match began. Ippo attacked Sawamura, who could only block the many attacks. When Ippo managed to get Sawamura to the ropes and blow his block away, Sawamura tripped Ippo, making him fall. While Ippo was still down, he was shocked as Sawamura throws a punch at him, nicking his face. Ippo got down and proceeded to attack Sawamura's guard. Ippo dodged Sawamura's counters and landed a liver blow at the corner. Ippo blocked Sawamura from escaping the corner, and when Sawamura tried to clinch, Ippo broke out of it after hitting him. Ippo dodged Sawamura's punches until the round ended. In the second round, Sawamura held out his hand as a greeting, but when Ippo held his out, Sawamura knocked it away and threw a punch, which Ippo dodged. Just as Sawamura began to read Ippo's hand speed, Ippo upped his step in speed and sent Sawamura down with a right to the face. When Sawamura got up, Ippo got him to the ropes with hits to his body and guard. 
Sawamura clinched and made Ippo fall down with him. When they both got up, because Sawamura purposely loosened his glove tape, the referee paused the match to let Sawamura's second fix it. When the match continued, Ippo became alert as Sawamura changed his stance to an unorthodox one with his left hand extending out. Ippo attempted to get close to Sawamura, however he was unable to succeed due to fast jabs called the bullet. The second round then ended. In the third round, Ippo used a cross arm block to counter Sawamura's bullet. When Ippo got close enough to attack, he was hit by Sawamura's flash, which almost caused him to fall. After getting hit multiple times with the bullet, Ippo steps into his range where he gets hit again with the flash. Leaning on Sawamura after the hit, the third round ended. At the corner, Ippo was told about Sawamura's tactics to make Ippo lose his cool by fouling, which made Ippo throw larger punches for Sawamura to easily counter. Ippo decided to go back to the basics in the fourth round by weaving to dodge Sawamura's bullets. After dodging most of the bullets, Ippo threw an uppercut that misses Sawamura who also missed his flash. However, Ippo immediately hits Sawamura with a liver blow and attempted to hit his face, but gets countered instead with a flash. When Sawamura retreated back, Ippo dodged the bullets and got close to Sawamura. After Ippo was unable to land two body blows, he fainted a high blow and was able to hit Sawamura with a liver blow. Distance between the two grew after Ippo was hit with a flash. Ippo dodged the bullets and hit Sawamura's guard at the ropes with multiple hooks. When Ippo broke Salmora's guard, he dodged his bullets by using the Dempsey Roll's motion. Just as Ippo began to attack with the Dempsey Roll, he stepped back and countered with the left. Ippo prevented himself from falling by hanging onto the ropes, devastated that his technique was defeated for a second time, and this time only he was damaged. Ippo made a failed attempt to hit Salmora with a right, falling over from his own momentum and leaned on him as the fourth round ended. At the corner, Ippo expressed how he did not want to lose, as if he does, every boxer in Japan would look like a fool. In the fifth round, Ippo was unable to land a hit, as he was hit himself multiple times until the end of the round. Ippo then went for a Dempsey roll in the sixth round, however it was countered with a flash. Thanks to Volg previously hitting him with a right counter and everyone's help before the match, Ippo managed to stay standing. He was then hit by bullets, and when Ippo fought back, Sawamura elbowed his back. After Sawamura received a penalty, Ippo soon followed up with another Dempsey roll. When Sawamura got ready to counter with his right, Ippo stopped the Dempsey roll motion. With Sawamura unable to stop himself from throwing a punch that misses, Ippo resumed the attack and landed the counter's counter, knocking Sawamura down. When Sawamura got back up, Ippo attacked him until he hid behind the referee as the 6th round ended. In the 7th round, Ippo repeatedly attacked Sawamura who attempted to trip and foul Ippo. However, he dodged Sawamura's foot. Ippo then began the Dempsey roll motion and stopped the motion when Sawamura was getting ready to throw a counter. Sawamura, however, had also stopped, but Ippo dodged the counter and stopped another Dempsey roll motion, confusing him. Ippo then landed a hit on Sawamura and continued hitting him with the Dempsey roll until he fell. The ref ended the match without a count, resulting in Ippo making a victory pose before acknowledging how Sawamura was strong as he successfully defended his JBC featherweight title for the fifth time. While he was walking down the stairs to get out of the ring, Ippo fell and was carried by Takamura to the changing room where Yamaguchi was waiting. She revealed that while Ippo's muscle fibers tore, blood vessels burst, and ligaments were somewhat hyper extended, there were no injuries that would affect his boxing career, much to Ippo's relief. His gym mates then had Kumi walk him home. Along the way, Kumi asked Ippo why he started boxing. He answered that he wanted to become strong, but while he has physical strength, he still does not know what it means and is unable to catch up, as the certain person's power is not only physical strength, but the strength to live. When Ippo arrived to his home, he immediately passed out and was taken to his bed. A Passing Point Arc after Ippo had no problems in his brain checkup, he went to Yamaguchi, where he was given a crutch for his hurt knee and was told not to exercise nor rely on his Dempsey roll due to the stress it puts on his body. While walking home, he was picked up by Umezawa in a vehicle. Along the way, Umezawa showed his intention of leaving the fishing boat business and focusing on being a mangaka. Ippo encouraged him to fulfill his dreams. As Umezawa previously promised, he let Ippo read his finished fishing manga. Since he's bad at giving opinions, he invited Itagaki to read it with him. However, Itagaki also brought Aoki, Kimura, and Takamura as well. Takamura ended up accidentally ripping some pages as the group fought over reading it, making Ippo angry as the group ran off. With Umezawa happy that they fought over trying to read his manga, he decided to go forward with his dream. Ippo then went to Umezawa's house to help fix the manga, thankful for how much Umezawa previously helped him. Back at his home, Ippo and Hiroko invited Umezawa for dinner before he left. And when Umezawa tried to confess to Hiroko what he did to Ippo in high school and was worried about he and Ippo's relationship, Ippo stopped him and told him not to worry. When Umezawa was walking away from Ippo's home, Ippo decided to tell him that they are best friends on top of any other title as he waved goodbye. When Ippo returned to the Kamagawa gym, Kamagawa immediately discussed the plans for his next title defense. He revealed that the previous challengers that issued a challenge before have taken back their challenge request after Ippo's victory over Sawamura. Ippo was advised to focus on recovering for the time being. Ippo went home and discovered that Itagaki and Nanako had been hired in Umezawa's place to help with the fishing boat company. Ippo then watched Itagaki win the second round of his East Japan Rookie King tournament. Later, Ippo was reminded by Itagaki about the WBA featherweight Ricardo Martinez's 21st title defense match that was airing on TV. 
Ippo rushed to his house to watch it where Ricardo quickly won. Ippo explained to Itagaki how big the gap between him and Ricardo is and even with the new Dempsey role, the world is still far away as the technique still would not work on Miata. The Kamagawa gym held a party at the Makanochi fishing boat by hosting a fishing competition. Ippo and Itagaki were in charge of steering the boat as the Kamagawa gym boxers and staff competed in catching fish for dinner. After the competition, Ippo went to eat dinner that Hiroko cooked with everyone. With everyone gathered, Kamagawa revealed that Takamura would challenge the WBC title for the middleweights. Aoki and Komura have matches, Miata has an OPBF title defense match before Takamura's title match, Itagaki continues his East Japan Rookie King tournament, and Ippo is instructed to continue his recovery. At the Kamagawa gym, Ippo was ordered to spar with Imai. After Imai had a brief argument with Itagaki and Ippo noticed Miata was watching, the spar began. Ippo quickly realizes that Imai has become stronger than the last time they sparred, as he loses dual exchanges and could only block Imai's fast punches. After two rounds of the one-sided spar, Ippo became depressed for failing to push Imai to help Itagaki. After watching the WBC middleweight champion David Eagles match on video, Ippo got a call from Miata, who was in a training camp with Takamura. Miata informed Ippo what was happening during the training camp, and mentioned his suspicions about Takamura, asking Ippo if he noticed if Takamura had been acting strangely. Ippo answered how he had not noticed anything. After getting off the phone, however, Ippo remembered how Miata said that Takamura called his punches a mosquito bite, and Takamura previously said that a mosquito kept him awake one night, drawing a conclusion that Takamura may have something wrong with him. To make sure he's right, Ippo met with Kumi so he could read a book from her hospital about eye problems. Ippo discovered that the mosquito that Takamura claimed to see might be myodysopsia, which is known to be an early symptom of idiopathic retinal detachment, which, if not treated, can lead to blindness. Connecting the dots by remembering how Takamura mentioned his eye hurting after his match with Hawk, and Itagaki noting that Takamura may be rushing giving up the junior middleweight belt, Ippo became worried about Takamura's eye. He then went to Sonata to ask for his advice for eye problems, but for Takamura's sake, he did not tell Sonata who the advice was for. They go inside the Imperial College of Medicine, where Sonata details the process and dangers of retinal detachment. After the explanation, Ippo acknowledged that he has to take full responsibility to take his right to enter the ring away from Takamura. Takamura for his safety if he does have retinal detachment. Ippo decided to go to Takamura's house and ask him if he can see out of his right eye. After Takamura claimed to be able to see out of it, Ippo tested him by having him read words out of a magazine with only his right eye. Ippo was relieved that his suspicions were false. When Takamura was challenging Yagi in a fishing match, Ippo, Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki went to the fishing hole paradise to cheer for Takamura. When they got there, however, the two fishers had left and the group noticed that there was a sign that permitted Takamura and Yagi from entering the fishing hole. They rushed back to the gym and were shocked to learn that the fishing match ended in a draw. Ippo later watched Itagaki win the quarterfinals of the East Japan Rookie King Tournament. Ippo encouraged Itagaki afterwards to become the Rookie King after two more matches. The champion David Eagle arrived to Japan and hosted a public sparring session at the Kawahara Gym. Ippo went with Kamagawa and Yagi to gather information for Takamura, though Kamagawa assumed that he went along to see Miata. There, Eagle was hosting an autograph session, which Ippo went over and received an autograph. Ippo saw Miata, who explained the reasoning as to why Eagle was doing autographs, with him also having one. Ippo then watched Eagle's public spar and was amazed with his boxing. After the sparring session, Ippo learned from Miyata that he has something new and that during his fight in the semi-finals, he would show how he stepped up to the challenge just as Ippo did during the Sawamura match. Walking back to the Kamagawa gym, Ippo mentioned to Kamagawa how Eagle seemed like a hero. After seeing Takamura outside the Kamagawa gym hitting children who asked for an autograph, Ippo deemed Takamura to be pure evil. The day before the event, Ippo went to the Yokohama arena and attended Takamura and Eagle's weigh-in, along with Aoki and Kimura's weigh-in with Papaya Daichu and Aleki Battery respectfully. The next day, Ippo went to the Yokohama arena and met coaches Date and Okita, whose boxer was defeated. Ippo then went to encourage Aoki and Kimura before their matches, telling the two that he was also nervous when he was the semi-final for Takamura's match against Hawk, but he did just what he did as always. Ippo watched Aoki and Kimura's matches, both ending in a draw, and then Miata's fourth OPBF title defense match against Medgo and Doc Boy, which ended in Miata's victory. After Miata's victory, Ippo got the crowd riled up when he mentioned fighting Miata for the title, making the crowd do a Makanochi chant, which made Ippo run away from the pressure and went to Takamura's waiting room. As Takamura left for the title match, Ippo headed to the audience area and came across Miata, who wanted a confirmation about Takamura's eye. Ippo informed Miata that Takamura claimed to be able to see and that he was able to read a small print on a magazine. However, Miata assumed that Takamura memorized the magazine beforehand, making Ippo's test irrelevant. Ippo then watched Takamura's WBC middleweight title match. Despite getting his right eye cut and the match almost stopping because of it, Takamura won, conquering his second weight class. Outside the arena, Ippo waited with his friends for Takamura to come out and take him home, as he was instructed by Kawagama to force Takamura to rest. Ippo and everyone else were then thrown out by Takamura as he was unable to rest with everyone watching him. Spirit of a Weed Arc
When Ippo went to the Kamagawa gym, he witnessed Takamura go through with an earlier promise by cutting Aoki's hair into papayas since he did not win. Back at his house, when Ippo and Itagaki watched a commercial featuring Takamura, Ippo mentioned how despite Takamura's eccentric nature, they trained with an incredible person. He was then shocked to see Aoki having a commercial as Brocko Man, influenced by his new haircut. Later, Ippo was worried about Itagaki being nervous about the East Japan Rookie King tournament, which Kimura suggested to him that it has to do with the match against Imai being close. Ippo discovered the reason for Itagaki's nervous when he went to Koraku and Hall with him and watched the match to see who Itagaki would fight next, with Makino defeating his opponent with flicker jabs. Walking away from the building, Ippo, Itagaki, and Nanako were approached by Makino. After Imai also arrived and tensions rose, Ippo stepped in to defuse the situation. Makino recognized Ippo as the champion and stepped on his foot as he walked away, warning Ippo that he won't be able to ignore him. Later, Ippo, Aoki, Kimura, and Takamura bet on who would win the East Japan Rookie King tournament, with Ippo betting on Itagaki to win. Ippo rushed to Itagaki's house after hearing from Nanako that he was hurt badly after sparring with Mashiba. Seeing Itagaki's face swollen, Ippo told him not to worry about working at the fishing boat the next day and warned him to not try sparring with Mashiba again. However, Itagaki informed him that he got results from the spar. Ippo told Aoki, Kimura, and Takamura about Itagaki's spar with Mashiba and was frustrated when his gym mates were more worried about their bets on Imai and Makino. Ippo went to meet up with Kumi to spy on Mashiba after she assumed he was going clothes shopping with his girlfriend. It turned out that the person he was going shopping with was Itagaki. Ippo and Kumi followed them anyway into the Hirosue after. Afterwards. There, they eavesdropped on their conversation, which Ippo heard Itagaki claim that Ippo destroyed his confidence, wishing that he would tell him that he looks like a pro. On the day of the semifinals for the East Japan Rookie King Tournament, Ippo cheered for Itagaki as he went up against Makino. Ippo was amazed when Itagaki dodged and blocked Makino's foul and felt that Itagaki looked like a splendid pro when Itagaki won. Ippo headed to his dressing room to tell him how he looked like a pro, however, Kawagama stopped him, forbidding Ippo from ever saying those words if he wants to see Itagaki continue to grow. Ippo went back out and watched Imai's match against Makoto Terai, who Imai defeated. Ippo waited outside the building to congratulate Itagaki for his victory. Later, Ippo was informed by Kamagawa about a request from his possible 6th JBC featherweight title defense opponent. In a month, he would face the 7th ranker Takuzo Karasawa, who Ippo was told to have a Dempsey roll counter plan. Ippo wished to accept the request despite the little time to prepare as he wanted to start all over and try something. Under Siege Arc since Ippo was willing to fight Karasawa as his sixth opponent for his JBC featherweight title defense match, Kamagawa accepted the request. Ippo began training by hitting tree logs, which he bought from his prize money into a hillside using a hammer in order to build his body for more powerful sideways twisting motions. Due to only having a month to train, Ippo did harsh training with Kamagawa. During the training, Kamagawa asked Ippo if he felt okay, as Yamaguchi claimed that there could be hidden damage from his fight against Sawamura. Ippo answered that he felt fine, but noted how a long fight may re-aggravate his injuries during during the match. Later, Ippo watched recordings of Karasawa's matches with Kamagawa, which showcased Karasawa doing footwork. Ippo concluded that he should use body blows on the outboxer. When Ippo returned to the spot to do more log training, a sign was posted in the ground, pleading for no more logs to be pushed into the hillside. Running with Itagaki, Ippo explained how he wanted to go back to the basics, as he felt that he would one day run into someone he won't be able to beat if he kept going the same way as always. He also felt that he had relied on the Dempsey roll too much, no longer wanting to use it recklessly as the technique continues to get studied by his opponents. Ippo returned to his home and he was informed by Hiroko that Takamura, who had been away on a trip for a while, had tried to contact him to tell him that he was doing fine, assuming Ippo was worrying. Ippo later got a call from Takamura who began to tell about his adventures to Ippo. However, Takamura hung up before he could start. Three days later, Ippo discussed Takamura's sudden hang up with him and his gym mates. When Ippo was worried, his gym mates predicted that Takamura would show up at the gym soon. On the day of the weigh-in, Ippo saw Karasawa and his second, Sanada. The next day, Ippo felt uneasy about his type of defense until he was approached by Takamura, who had just returned to Tokyo. Tokyo. Takamura's presence gave Ippo what he was lacking as Ippo exclaimed that he would smash Karasawa into little pieces. After a meal with Takamura and Itagaki, Ippo went to the Korakuen Hall that night for his sixth title defense match against Karasawa. Ippo and Karasawa arrived to the ring when their match arrived. Ippo was then instructed to aim for Karasawa's body and use lefts as the match soon began. Ippo trapped Karasawa into the corner early into the first round after not being bothered by his outboxing hit and run tactic hitting Karasawa with a liver blow. Karasawa escaped the corner and clinched Ippo when he got close. Ippo attempted to land a hit while clinched, however Karasawa was warned by Sanada to jump back, dodging Ippo's uppercut. Ippo, however, landed a left straight that made Karasawa have to hold onto the ropes. The first round ended shortly after, and in the corner, Ippo was instructed to keep throwing basic punches. As the second round began, Karasawa circled around Ippo while throwing lefts as Ippo slowly approached him, distorting Karasawa's circular path, until Ippo put Karasawa into the corner. Ippo then tricked Karasawa by using the Dempsey roll motion and then hitting with a liver blow from below. Ippo proceeded to force Karasawa to stay in the corner by throwing small precise punches on his block. When Ippo broke his guard, he hit Karasawa with a powerful body blow. 
Kurosawa tried to switch positions by throwing a left hook, however Ippo landed a left over his hook, knocking him down. The referee immediately ended the match, resulting in Ippo's sixth title defense win. When Ippo left the Korakuen Hall, Takamura asked Ippo why he sealed the Dempsey roll. Ippo explained how he saw that the Dempsey roll was shortening his career, and he wanted to perfect the basics of all punches. Phantom Card Arc Ippo watched Volg's match against the IBF fourth ranker Eric Thompson on TV, amazed of Volg's ability as he won. Ippo learned from Itagaki that his ranking in the WBC was 12, however Ippo explained that a world title match was beyond him. With Itagaki worried about his upcoming match against Imai and how everyone thinks Imai will win, Ippo helped raise his spirits by telling him what he was taught from Kamigawa to believe in himself. When Kumi arrived to congratulate Ippo on his recent victory, Itagaki revealed to them of Imai's request to introduce Nanako to him if he wins, which Ippo realized he would never be able to challenge challenge Mashiba for Kumi. Ippo and Itagaki went to Umezawa's house to congratulate him after discovering that his fishing manga had won a reward. Before leaving, Ippo told Umezawa how he was worried about Itagaki facing Imai, and he felt that he could not tell Itagaki about what gave him trouble before, as Umezawa suggested. Later, Ippo sparred with Itagaki in his last spar before his fight against Imai. Ippo was immediately caught off guard by Itagaki's improved speed and his porcupine-like punches. However, Ippo could read his punches. The spar ended without a knockout, and Ippo claimed that Itagaki was well prepared. Afterwards, Ippo went to the rooftop where Takamura suggested for him to tell Itagaki the truth that he would lose by knockout to Imai if he does not change his strategy. Itagaki overheard part of the conversation and questioned Ippo. Takamura ended up telling Itagaki, and Ippo added that he believed that Itagaki should enter an infight with Imai to throw off his rhythm, as it troubles Ippo when it's done to him. When Itagaki's match against Imai arrived, Ippo went to the Korakuen Hall and watched the fight. After the fifth round, Itagaki became unconscious while sitting down in the corner. As the referee was about to end the match because of it, Ippo arrived at the corner, which made Itagaki come back to his senses and let the match continue. After six rounds, Ippo cheered as Itagaki won in a decision, becoming the East Japan Rookie King. In the locker room, Itagaki thanked Ippo for encouraging him to continue. As Ippo watched the Rookie King Award ceremony, he was proud of Itagaki as his award was announced for the most valuable fighter. After leaving the Korakuen Hall with Kamagawa and Yagi, he met Sendo and the recent West Japan Rookie King Tournament winner. Hiroyuki Hoshi. Sendo expressed his desire to fight Ippo a third time when he gets stronger, but Hoshi also wanted to fight Ippo, promising that if he wins the All Japan Rookie King Tournament against Itagaki, he would face him. After Sendo and Hoshi left, Ippo asked Kamagawa how long he has to keep defending, wanting to relinquish the title and fight Miyata as watching the same tournament where he was supposed to fight him left an impact on him. Ippo was then thankful as Kamagawa accepted his request. When Itagaki's physical was done, Ippo went to the Kawaii Hospital to check on and congratulate him. Ippo mentioned how envious he was that Itagaki got to face his rival in the tournament, unlike him. Father's Back Arc When Itagaki was recovering at the hospital, Ippo did extra work at the Makanochi fishing boat in his place. At the Kamagawa gym, Ippo was brought into the office where he was told that his OPBF title match against Miyata was decided. However, Ippo has to defend his JBC title at the Champion Carnival next year in January, two days before Miyata's fifth OPBF title defense. Disappointed in defending his title again, even though he asked to relinquish it, he became excited when Kamagawa revealed that his schedule was matched with Miyata's and his match with him was unofficially set for the coming spring. When Itagaki was released from the hospital, Ippo nervously drove him to the gym while causing a traffic jam and hitting Aoki. Itagaki was told that the gym has decided to resign him from the All Japan Rookie King Tournament due to his injuries. Ippo informed Itagaki about his meeting with Hoshi and the terms he put in order to challenge Ippo. After talking about how he would worry about who would hold the JBC belt after he moves on, he gave Itagaki a baton pass. Later, Ippo learned about his 7th JBC title defense opponent, Kaichi Take, a veteran boxer who never lost by knockout before. Ippo went with Itagaki to see the All Japan Rookie King Tournament. There, he met Date, who warned Ippo about Take and revealed that he was nervous when Take once sent a challenge to him when he was the JBC champion, until Take pulled out. Ippo then realized he should focus on Take rather than only Miyata. Ippo immediately began training his stamina. When his way in arrived, Ippo met Take, who wore a face mask, coughing, and warned Ippo to stay away from him as he did not want to get him sick. Ippo expressed his worry and offered to postpone the match, however the challenger declined. After the weigh-in, Ippo was shocked to discover from Kamagawa and Yagi that Take being sick was an act to make Ippo act careless. The next day, Ippo arrived at the Korakuen Hall for his title defense match against Take. When the match began, Ippo was able to score an early down in the first round. When Take got up, Ippo was clinched multiple times for a minute and a half, making Take recover from the down. During the clinch, Take told Ippo that he found his weakness. Ippo kept thinking about that and attempted a close-range fight with Take, but was unable to reach his head despite his feet being close. The first round then ended and Ippo was told that Take knowing his weakness did not matter as Ippo beats the odds regardless. In the second round, Ippo continued having the same problem as in the first half of the round due to Take using the southpaw style, 
messing up Ippo's depth perception. After Kamigawa advised that he close the distance so that him being a south pod did not matter, Ippo dashed towards Take who also decided to go close range. The two get into close range, however Take had his shoulder on Ippo's chest, making Ippo's left and right fist unusable. In that position, Ippo was hit four times of short uppercuts and the second round ended soon after. In the third and fourth rounds, Ippo's punching power was cut in half due to Take being able to stop Ippo's rotation in his punches by ducking low enough to make Ippo have to punch in a downwards trajectory, which he has no experience in. While dodging an uppercut in the fourth round, a cut under Ippo's left eyebrow emerged and began bleeding, affecting his vision and precision of punching. After the third round, Ippo pleaded for Kamigawa to stop the bleeding, wanting to continue fighting the boxer that amazed him with his abilities to neutralize his punches. Kamigawa managed to stop the bleeding, Ippo threw a punch as Kamigawa purposefully moved his hands so that Ippo would hit his face as a way to wake him up. Ippo was then advised to fight as he always had done, and to get further and lower than Take. In the fifth round, Ippo figured out a way to counter Take's close positioning that was disabling his left and right fists by ducking lower than him and throwing the same uppercut, sending him back. Ippo then used the same strategy of ducking lower than Take to deliver multiple powerful punches from below. After a clinch, Ippo and Take entered an exchange match at close range until the fifth round ended. While at the corner, he began to realize that Take is unconscious despite fighting. In the sixth round, Ippo easily knocked down Take with a 1-2, however, much to his shock, Take stood back up. Knowing that a knockdown won't be able to stop Take, Ippo decided to use the Dempsey roll to force a referee stop. However, when Ippo motioned the Dempsey roll, Take ran into him, stopping the technique. Ippo was surprised when he was hit with a strong uppercut. When another uppercut was coming, Ippo ducked lower than Take, dodging it, then throwing an uppercut of his own from that position, striking Take. Ippo then downed Take with a right hook. The referee ended the match with a count, resulting in Ippo's victory. Ippo was interviewed in his waiting room and received Mentaiko from Take as a souvenir. When he went home, he had trouble eating it due to the pain he received in his mouth from the uppercuts. When Ippo returned to the Kamigawa gym, he learned that Aoki and Kimura are going to have matches as openers for Takamura's first WBC middleweight title defense match in March at the Ryogoku Kokugikan. Ippo asked his gym mates if they wanted to come watch Miata's fifth OPBF title defense match with him. When they were not interested, Aoki called Kumi, who accepted the invitation to watch with Ippo, much to Ippo's dismay. The next day, Ippo went to the Korakuen Hall and met with Kumi and the uninvited Mashiba. They went inside to watch Miata's fifth OPBF title defense match against Che Jombong, where Ippo noticed the fighter is similar to him and that Miata was working on a plan to counter him. Ippo became excited that their promised match would arrive after watching Miata win. The next day, Ippo was informed by Kamigawa that his match with Miata had been postponed due to Miata fracturing both fists. However, Ippo would be the first OPBF title challenger when he recovers as his return match. Ippo then went to the Ryogoku Kokogi Khan when Takamura, Aoki, and Kimura's matches arrived. Upon arrival, Ippo learned from Fuji that Mashiba's JBC title defense match in the Champion Carnival would be against Sawamura. After watching Aoki and Kimura's matches ending in a draw against Papaya Daichu and Aleki Battery respectively, Ippo met the bantamweight world title challenger, Yuta Ishii, wishing him luck. However, Ippo watched as the undefeated Yuta got defeated in two rounds, acknowledging how huge the world is. Ippo then watched Takamura easily defeat his challenger, Richard Fox. Chaos Arc when Aoki and Kimura were reading the boxing magazine of recent news, they chastised Ippo for simply commenting that he did not know who would win between Mashiba and Sawamura to the press. Ippo told Aoki and Kimura how he did not know because even though Mashiba defended his title six times, Sawamura leveled up after becoming a junior lightweight. While Ippo did not know why Mashiba requested to fight Sawamura, Itagaki suggested to ask Kumi. He went to the Hirosue house to eat with Kumi, who was worried about Mashiba's words about killing Sawamura. Ippo then realized that Mashiba had not forgotten when Sawamura struck Kumi with a closed fist which was why he chose to fight him for revenge. Later, after Itagaki got back from sparring with Mashiba, Ippo was shocked to see not even a scratch on Itagaki's face, worrying that Mashiba is not in his best condition, which would lead him to be unable to win. A week before Mashiba and Sawamura's match, Ippo discussed with Itagaki about Mashiba's condition during their spars. Ippo was worried when he heard how tense Mashiba was and that it would make him more vulnerable to counters, which was Sawamura's specialty. Ippo then informed Itagaki about Sawamura hitting Kumi, causing Itagaki to instruct Ippo to form a Mashiba chant to make him win. On the night of the match, Ippo went to the Karakuen Hall to watch. There, Ippo sat with Kumi as they watched Mashiba and Sawamura fight. They were frightened as the match ended with Mashiba being disqualified after attacking Sawamura while the referee was deciding if he should continue the match during a count, making Sawamura the champion despite him being punched out of the ring. After the match, Ippo did not know what to say to Kumi as she told him that she did not think she'd ever like boxing. Later, Ippo found out that Sawamura got into a high-speed motorcycle accident while he was going home. Ippo then got a call from Sendo, learning that Sawamura was alive, however, he was retiring from boxing. Saiken Arc 
Ippo revealed what he learned from Sendo about Sawamura's retirement to his gym mates, and Fuji, who also revealed to everyone that Mashiba would be suspended for boxing for over six months and up to a year. Kimura then insensitively expressed his joy that Sawamura and Mashiba were out of boxing so that he can become the champion, making Ippo frustrated and not talk to him for five days. Due to players from Kimura's local shopping district's baseball game dropping out, spots were needed to be filled for the local team. Ippo was one of the friends invited to the shopping district's team. When the day of the baseball game arrived, Ippo went to the stadium and was assigned to the Sante Japan team with Kimura, Aoki, Takamura, and Itagaki. While Ippo played horribly during the game, Kimura's shopping district team won in the end. Later, Ippo traveled to Osaka with Itagaki to watch Sendo's main event match against Jose Ramirez. Inside the Osaka Prefectural Gymnasium, Ippo watched the semi-final consisting of Hoshi and Bunsaku Karate fighting. Ippo witnessed Hoshi defeating Bunsaku with only one punch using his Saiken. Ippo then watched Sendo defeat Jose and met with him after the match. Ippo, Sendo, and Itagaki went to the Marami Okonomiyaki, where Sendo revealed to the two that he was fighting Mexicans because he's after Ricardo Martinez. Before Sendo left, he told Ippo that he does not think that Ippo is fated to fight Miyata but he and Ippo are fated to meet in the ring again at the top. Ippo became down from Sendo's words about Miyata while going back to Tokyo, believing that there is no way they aren't fated. Later, Ippo watched Itagaki's match, where he won by decision and became an 8-rounder in order to be able to fight Hoshi. After Itagaki was getting pushed in a spar with Aoki and teasing him about it, Ippo reflected how it was petty after Kimura explained the teasing was because if Itagaki won, he would surpass him and Aoki in the gym's internal ranking system. While doing road work with Itagaki, Ippo helped him regain his drive as he was worried about his match with Hoshi by reminding him of the baton pass. On the day of Itagaki's match against Hoshi, Ippo arrived at the Osaka Prefectural Gymnasium. There, Ippo learned from Yagi that Shinoda was thinking of resigning if Itagaki lost the match. Before heading to the audience seats, he came across Sendo, who warned him about Hoshi's abilities when facing him, despite Ippo being sure that Itagaki would be able to win so he won't have to fight him. Ippo then watched the match with Sendo, where he witnessed Itagaki use his bullet time as he defeated Hoshi. Scratch arc. Ippo reflected on how selfish he was to his mother for starting boxing, thankful to her for letting him continue, wanting to take over the fishing business as soon as possible, and that his match against Miyata would be his last match. He then came across Miyata who did a dogaza, apologizing that their promised match would not happen and claiming that it was not fated, leaving Ippo depressed from the shocking news. Ippo later returned to the gym and, during a mid-practice session with Kamagawa, could not bring out his usual strength as he did not know who he's supposed to beat. He was then told to leave after expressing how he could not forget about Miyata after Kamagawa tried to refuel Ippo's fight spirit. He was later approached by Mari and was reminded about his fists being light, but not light enough to throw away the fists that carry his previous opponent's dreams. Ippo then remembered that his reason for fighting was to become strong, and decided to continue boxing until he gets his answer. Ippo came back to the gym and apologized to Kamagawa for his actions that led him to get thrown out of the gym. Kamagawa then told him he would immediately get a match in one month, with the goal of becoming an unofficial OPBF champion after beating multiple OPBF national champions in order to aim for the world. Fired up by the announcement, Ippo began his training with Kamagawa. The gym members returned from their training camp and were excited to see Ippo again. As they were curious about who his next opponent was, Ippo revealed that he'd be fighting against a Thailand champion, Jimmy Sisfar. The day before the match, Ippo went to Korakuen Hall for the weigh-in where he met Sisfar and was scared of his scarred appearance. The next day, Ippo arrived at the ring and the match began. Ippo had trouble facing Sisfar's tactic of charging forward from a distance and throwing powerful jolt blows, with even a cross-arm block not being able to fully block it. Ippo charged forward to stop Sisfar's charging and enter an infight. However, the punches Ippo lands, including a right counter against a huge swing, were ignored. After Ippo's hand was blown back from a close-range jolt blow, he went down when he was hit by a tornado jolt as the gong ended the first round. However, as he was hit by Sisfar's elbow due to sticking his head forward as it hit to disrupt the point of impact as a reflex, from training to do it to Miyata's counters. In his corner, Ippo was told by Kamagawa to do the only thing he can do. In the second round, Ippo took the advice and did the only thing he could do, move forward. Ippo was able to land hits, however they were not enough as after he realized that Sisfar can repeatedly throw full powered punches, he took a hit and lost consciousness for a small period of time. Ippo began to lose hope, throwing half-hearted punches as he did not expect the repeated full power blows. He was hit by another full powered blow and barely caught his fall, while bruises surfaced on his shoulders as Ippo had been having Sisfar hit his shoulders to reduce the power. Ippo and Sisfar had a dual exchange which hurt Ippo the worse. As Ippo was sliding down in the corner from the damage of the dual exchange, Sisfar was about to land another punch. However, the gong ending the second round sounded and Ippo's impending fall was saved due to Yagi's timely arrival of the chair catching his fall. Ippo noticed how he stopped Sisfar's charging after the dual exchange and believed that dual exchanges are the only option, to which Kamagawa agreed. 
In the third round, Ippo and Sisfar have dual exchanges and exchanges at the center of the ring, with Ippo throwing his punches differently to that of the Jolt Blow, which damaged Sisfar more than Ippo's usual punches. During the third round, Ippo was instructed by Kamigawa to use uppercuts rather than left and right hooks like Sisfar in order to change the rhythm. In the fourth round, after a lengthy exchange session between the two, Ippo attempted to throw an uppercut after a hook. However, Ippo brought his body up too soon and the two boxers' foreheads collided, causing severe bleeding above their eyes. Sisfar's experience of fighting in situations like this made Ippo get hit while being unable to hit back due to his vision being affected by the blood. Ippo motioned the Dempsey roll, and instead of a constant figure eight motion, Ippo moved his body up from below, aiming for Kamigawa's mitt in the ceiling's light, landing an uppercut on Sisfar. Sisfar went down from the uppercut, and the referee immediately stopped the match, making Ippo the winner. Despite the win, Ippo received a long scolding session from Kamigawa before going home and reflecting that he has branched off a different path from Miyata in order to find his answer as to what it means to be strong. Destined Boxer Arc while Ippo was fishing, Kumi joined him and tried to invite him to go to the pool, but Ippo declined as he could not do anything due to the injuries he received from fighting Sisfar. As they talked about boxing and Mashiba, Kumi requested for Ippo to make it back in one piece. Ippo felt as if he should remember that as he selfishly follows his dreams. He's making others worry a lot. Later, Ippo went to the Ryogoku Kokugi Khan and watched Itagaki's match against Alex Harker. Kimura's match against Michael Gehan, and Aoki's match against Padawan Yoda, where all three Kamigawa gym members won. Ippo watched the main event starring Takamura's second WBC middleweight title defense in his Beetle outfit, throwing only the new Beetle's uppercut many times at Ricky Mouse until he won. Afterwards, Ippo took a group photo with his gym mates, which he later sent to Nakota along with a letter about what has been going on at the Kamigawa gym. Ippo got a reply back with a poem he shared with his classmates about autumn leaves being like boxing gloves, and a poem he kept to himself about the weight of fists being inherited are heavyweight, though he had no idea what it meant. Later, Ippo and Itagaki attended Miyata's non title match against Donnie Sultan, which was his first match coming back from injuring both of his fists. Ippo watched as Miyato won using a new counter that was meant for him, predicting that he would have fell for that counter as well. Ippo also realized that Miyata using the new counter was a way of messaging him that they would never meet in the ring again. Walking away from the ring, Ippo expressed to Itagaki how he would have lost to Miyata if they fought. However, Itagaki pointed out that Ippo never said he would win once when the match was decided. Ippo made Itagaki frustrated as he felt simply being in the ring with his idol would have been enough. However, Itagaki made Ippo realize that he would have regretted fighting against Miyata if he fought with those feelings. Ippo was approached by Mr. Sakaguchi who proposed a deal for the shortest path to the world title, with the condition of defeating Randy Boyd Jr., the OPBF interim champion. Ippo declined the offer, as it would only happen if Randy defeated the full champion Miyata, which he's confident would beat Randy. Ippo was puzzled as Mr. Sakaguchi laughed at his claim and told him that history has proven otherwise. Curious about Randy's boxing, Ippo went to the monthly boxing fan to watch videos of him. He watched a video with Miyata's father, who's also there, and they're both shocked to see Randy using a southpaw stance, knocking out an opponent that used an anti-southpaw counter by switching to the orthodox stance. Learning that Randy's father was the one that ended Miyata's father career, Ippo felt as if he could cheer him on, knowing that Miyata's oath of proving his father's boxing not wrong is more important than their promise. Later, freelance trainer Baron Kurita entered the gym claiming to be sent to the gym to look after things while Kamigawa was away. Baron put Ippo, Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki through harsh training. Ippo was asked by Baron to sign a contract to get special training from him and abandon the Kamigawa ship and to join him to become Team Baron. Ippo requested to test Baron's mitt training skills as he believes Kamigawa knows the best placements and timings for the mitts. Baron was able to catch his punches at first, however, Baron was unable to keep up, and Ippo punched Baron, making him go through the ropes. Ippo then proclaimed that he would go to the world only with Kamigawa. Baron left when Takamura arrived, and it was revealed how Baron was just trying to steal Ippo in order to increase his poor representation. Winner takes all arc. When Yagi got off the phone with the police to pick up Kamigawa at the police station, Ippo went with Yagi to the station in Sendai Miyagi Tohoku. Along the way, Ippo learned from Yagi that Kamigawa went to a gym in the area to pick up tapes of Ippo's next opponent. However, Kamigawa caused an incident there. When they arrive at the Senendai police station where Kamigawa got released, they find out that the coach of the Sukahara gym was beaten by Kamigawa's cane. Ippo, Yagi, and Kamigawa listen to the coach's story of how his boxer, Kyosuke Fukui, fought Ippo's next opponent and won in a fixed match, with his boxer retiring shortly after due to the shame of his opponent losing on purpose. The Sukahara coach pleaded to Ippo for him to beat his next opponent, Filipino champion Malcolm Ghetto, before leaving. 
After returning to the Kamigawa gym, the recently retired Fukui requested a spar against Ippo to test himself. After Kamigawa provoked Fukui into getting serious and ordered Ippo to win by knockout in one round or get thrown out, the spar began. Ippo quickly defeated Fukui in the first round, and when Fukui left, Ippo chased after him. When he caught up, he tried to get Fukui to go back into boxing, thinking it would be a waste if he retired after seeing his potential. However, Fukui couldn't get over his match against Gido. Fukui then warned Ippo about Gido's magic, as his sense of distance was distorted during the whole match for an unknown reason. As Fukui left, Ippo asked if he was sure he wanted to quit boxing. Fukui Fukui answered that he wouldn't end it and he would prove himself to Kamigawa, who called his coach a failure and hoped to see Ippo again in the ring. After his match with Ghetto was approved by the gym, Ippo wanted to find out the magic behind his ability to distort his opponent's sense of distance. After having trouble figuring out Ghetto's magic, Ippo decided that he should just forget about it and if it extends, he has to avoid it and keep moving forward. Kamigawa took Ippo to the Toho gym in order to spar with Mashiba, as Mashiba has long range and was near Ippo's weight class, much to the dismay of both boxers. When the spar began, Ippo was able to get close to Mashiba after maneuvering through his flicker jabs. Ippo used his Dempsey roll, hitting Mashiba while dodging his flicker jabs until he was hit with a right uppercut. After the spar, he admitted to Kamigawa that he lost and believed the right uppercut was designed to defeat him. Ippo apologized to Kamigawa and Yagi, thinking that the spar was not of any use. However, Kamigawa disagreed. When Ippo returned to the gym, Aoki and Kimura informed him of a visitor in Kamigawa's office where a heated conversation was happening. Ippo took a peek to see and was shocked to see Ghetto talking to a furious Kamigawa only about the prize money. Ippo watched as Kamigawa Kamigawa decided the winner would take home 2 million yen. As Ghetto happily left, Ippo fell over and was offered a hand by Ghetto, who showed no signs of knowing the opponent he would face in a month. Ippo began his training with Kamigawa, who wanted Ippo to hit him so hard he would never forget him. Ippo arrived at the weigh-in, and after passing his weight check, he noticed how Ghetto had two scars on his body. After the weigh-in, Ippo found Ghetto in the ring and was offered a deal. If he received 3 million yen, he would let Ippo win. Ippo, disgusted about the deal, voiced he wanted Ghetto to fight him seriously in the dangerous sport, as he won't be responsible for what happens to him if Ghetto held back. Ghetto revealed to Ippo his hard life, and that the two wounds on his body were from getting shot in the streets, and he believed the ring to be the safest place in the world. Shocked from what he said, Ippo offered him an additional 500,000 yen if he defeated him by knockout, which Ghetto accepted. On the day of the match, Ippo realized that he did not have an extra 500,000 yen, but with the help of his mother and friends, he was able to gather it. At the ring, as Ippo and Ghetto's match was about to start, Ghetto offered to let Ippo win for another 500,000. However, Ippo only glared at him. When the match began, Ippo immediately attacked Ghetto and downed him after he grazed Ghetto's temple with a left hook. When he got up, he began to use a trick against Ippo by holding his fist out at Ippo's eye level. Then, with Ippo's attention on his fist and throwing a punch, Ghetto escaped into Ippo's blind spot, seemingly disappearing to him. Ippo had trouble with this tactic until Kamigawa yelled to watch his feet, successfully hitting him in the body once he tracked where he would go from looking at his feet. The first round then ended shortly after. In the second round, just when Ippo began to gauge Ghetto's punching range and figured out his trick from the first round, he was hit outside Ghetto's punching range, thinking his arm just extended. He continued to be unable to get close to Ghetto, being being thrown off by his lefts that are hitting him outside of his range until the second round ended. At the corner, since Kamigawa figured Ippo couldn't gauge his distance, he instructed Ippo to aim for dual exchanges. In the third round, Ippo did as ordered, and after a successful dual exchange, he got into his favorable range at Ghetto's chest. However, when he was about to hit Ghetto, he was hit by a right uppercut. Ippo attempted to do another dual exchange, but he could not reach him, even though he was hit as the third round came to an end. Ippo was unable to get a good hit on Ghetto from the fourth to sixth round, and was repeatedly hit with counters and uppercuts when he got close. After the sixth round, Ippo was told two things from Kamigawa, to keep his neck pulled in as tight to his shoulders as possible, and to stop Ghetto's movement when he closes in, which Ippo gathered that he should throw a liver blow. In the seventh round, he was first pushed back by Ghetto's left. However, after remembering Date telling him that his fists are light, Ippo felt that Ghetto's fists are light as they are fists that only hold onto money and that they do not hurt. Ippo kept his neck tight and charged towards Ghetto, getting to his chest. After dodging a right uppercut, Ippo delivered a liver blow. The punch did not stop Ghetto's movements as it only grazed him, leading Ippo to charge forward with his neck tight against Ghetto's left again. When Ippo got to Ghetto's chest, he perfectly dodged the right uppercut. However, Ghetto quickly blocked his chin and his body. Remembering Date and how Kamigawa told him to stop Ghetto's movements, Ippo aimed for Ghetto's heart and hit him there. Ghetto's time wasn't paused long enough, as Ippo's follow-up punch only grazed him. However, Ghetto immediately backed himself to the ropes from fear after seeing Ippo's punch. Ippo got to Ghetto's chest and delivered two body blows as Ghetto blocked his heart by reflex. As Ghetto retreated, Ippo became unable to keep his neck tense and his vision became distorted. After getting hit with Ghetto's left and his eyes became swollen almost shut, the seventh round ended. At the corner, Ippo's swollen eyes were healed after Kamigawa having placed his hand 
hands in a bucket of ice for 40 seconds, placed his icy cold hands on them. In the 8th round, Ippo charged towards Ghetto, knowing he could take a few hits while getting close. To his surprise, however, Ghetto's punches became more damaging due to Ghetto clinching his fist and not extending his range with unclenched fists and loose-fitting gloves. Ippo was pushed back to the ropes as he held a tight guard to his head. His guard was broken, and after getting hit with a left, Ippo dodged a right as the punches that Ghetto throws were no longer confusing him. Being able to see and dodge Ghetto's punches, Ippo hit him with multiple body blows, making Ghetto go to the ropes. After Ippo stopped him from escaping the ropes and dodged a right uppercut, Ippo hit Ghetto with a liver blow that caused him to go down. When Ghetto got up, Ippo and Ghetto's fists soon collided, with Ghetto's fist being flung away. After hitting Ghetto with a right, both boxers get hit in an exchange. Ippo then hit Ghetto with combinations until Ghetto goes down from a right uppercut. The referee immediately ended the match, resulting in Ippo's victory. In the changing room, Ippo thanked everyone for their help with his match, before going to the health room after his face began to swell, as the cooling effect Kamigawa put on him after round 7 wore off. Red Lightning Arc before getting checked at the health room, he saw Ghetto, and after learning that he would still do his extending punch trick, asked if he would still offer to throw matches, which he answered that he still would. Ippo was confused as to why he would, as he expressed how strong Ghetto was, and asked if he ever wanted to be a world champion. Ippo was then shocked after hearing Ghetto say he did, but figured it would be impossible after coming across Randy Boy Jr., warning Ippo that he may come across him if he went for the world title. With Randy being the OPBF intern champion, and me Miata's next opponent, Ippo was sure Miata would defeat him, but hearing Ghetto's words made him acknowledge how vast the world really is. After recovering from his fight against Ghetto, Ippo was asked by Itagaki to go meet him at the Korakuen Hall. When he arrived, Ippo met Itagaki and his team, who looked up to Ippo and were there to take their protest as they recently joined the Kamagawa Gym. While waiting for Team Itagaki to do their protest, Ippo then met Saiki and Karasawa. Saiki and Karasawa informed Ippo that they were planning on getting ranked first to take the JBC featherweight belt, fighting Ippo if he still has the belt when they get there, and that they'd be participating in the Class A tournament along with Fukui and Itagaki. After their conversation, Ippo checked to see how Team Itagaki did, however it turned out that the duo got knocked down and most likely did not pass. Afterwards, when Itagaki claimed that it'd be his first time fighting someone faster than him, Ippo was asked by Yagi of his opinion, which Ippo commented that Itagaki is not much slower, but lacks the experience Saiki and Karasawa have. Later, after a fishing trip, Ippo was approached by Kumi. He was excited to see that Mashibo was going to have his return match soon, as his suspension is almost over, and agreed to go with it to watch Mashibo's OPBF title match. Later, when Randy came to Japan and held public sparring sessions at the Otowa gym, Itagaki was invited to spar against him. Wanting to see Randy fight, he went with Itagaki to the gym. After Itagaki got knocked down in the second round of the three-round spar and was unable to continue, Randy's manager, Mr. Sakaguchi, boasted on how Randy would defeat Ricardo and become the world champion, making Ippo glare and ask if Randy was ready for the world since he still had to fight Miata. Sakaguchi's downplay of Miata made Ippo irritated at the two that got between him and Miata, and when the reporters realized that there was still one more round left and cheered for Ippo to face him, Ippo got ready and entered the ring to fight Randy for one round. As Ippo and Randy were about to start fighting, Sakaguchi got between them and stopped the spar, reminding Ippo of how he refused to fight Randy the last time they met, and that Randy will only face him after his fight with Miata and when Ippo's world rankings on the line. After Randy and Sakaguchi left, Ippo became down as talk that Randy being Miata's worst matchup emerged. However, when Imai joined the conversation and revealed how Miata was sparring with him and a southpaw at the same time to counter Randy's switch hitting, Ippo was amazed at how prepared Miata seemed. When Ippo returned to the Kamagawa gym and watched Takamura defeat three boxers at the same time in one spar to one-up Miata's two-on-one spar, Ippo learned that Takamura's third WBC middleweight title defense opponent in April would be Ronald Duck, Aoki and Kimura would be openers, and Miata would face Randy in the semifinal. After sparring with Kimura, Ippo and his gym mates noticed Takamura was not sweating due to the cold weather. Takamura mentioned how Miata must be worse off, which Ippo voices his worries about until Takamura stopped him and reminded him that he was about to fight the same Miata that was suffering from weight control. Hearing that, he became depressed realizing that to fight Miata he would have to go through harsh weight control and Takamura noting that it was all Ippo's fault that Miata is staying in the featherweights made him even more depressed. While the Kawahara gym stopped Imai from training with Miyata as they did not need him anymore, they began to look for an uppercut specialist to help Miyata fight Randy, wishing to have Ippo spar with Miyata. Itagaki heard about that and told Ippo, who became ecstatic until he realized Kamagawa wouldn't let him do it. He then thought about how he could help Miyata until he saw Sendo arrive at the Kamagawa gym. Sendo revealed to the gym his beatdown list, which included Miyata, with people that he could spar against to help him train to fight Mexicans. Ippo decided to take him to the Kawahara gym for Miyata and Sendo to help each other before being being stopped by Kamagawa and have Itagaki take Sendo instead. 
Due to Kamigawa not wanting to let Ippo go see the spar, Ippo became depressed until his depression annoyed the others at the gym, making them order him to go around and buy them outlandish items as a hint for him to watch the spar. Ippo arrived outside the Kawahara gym, peeping through the window and watched the spar. Afterwards, Ippo invited Sendo to sleep at his house, where Sendo argues with Ippo over who won the spar. A week later, while Ippo theorized with his gym mates about how Miyata's spars against Sendo went, Sendo arrived and confirmed that Miyata was not using his footwork, assuming his weight control was the reason. A dry up Takamura then arrived, revealing how, thanks to Ippo bringing the drink he requested a week ago, his weight control was easy. Takamura was going to bring some of the drinks to Miyata before being stopped by Ippo. On the day of the World Conquest Proclamation event at the Yokohama Arena, Ippo arrived at the venue and watched Kimura's match against Sim Rex, which ended in a decision loss in the fifth round due to a doctor's stoppage. Ippo stayed with Kimura while Aoki went to fight Ponzakurek, which also ended in a decision loss. Ippo went back out to the audience seats and watched Miyata's match against Randy with Itagaki Sendo and Sawamura. After Miyata won using the corkscrew counter, Sawamura asked if Ippo wanted to fight Miyata and was fine with Miyata being far away with him, with Ippo answering that he was fine with it as he does not think of him and Miyata as rivals, but someone he looks up to. Ippo then watched the main event where Takamura won against Ronald Duck. Second Coming of Death Arc Inspired by Miyata's unbreakable spirit in his match against Randy, Ippo began running to improve his stamina to be like Miyata's. While running, he was met by Kumi, reminding Ippo about Mashiba's match. Ippo confirmed that he was going anywhere since Itagaki is going to have a match, suggesting they should cheer both Itagaki and Mashiba together. When Kumi was leaving, she fell and landed on a sled at the hillside, which Ippo also tripped over, landing near it and being face to face with her. As he was about to kiss her, he hit his head against the ground as Kumi slid down the hill. This event boosted Ippo's confidence, and after a spar against Itagaki where he got hit a lot, he could only think about how satisfied he was to feel Kumi's breath on him. On the day of the second coming of death event, Ippo went to the Korakuen Hall with Kumi, met Saiki and Karasawa who came to watch Itagaki, and wish Itagaki good luck before going to the audience seats to watch the matches. Watching Itagaki's match against Kaunar Pachioso, Ippo was shocked to see Itagaki win by using Miyata's jolt counter. Ippo then watched Mashiba's lightweight OPBF title match against Eren Domingo where he won and became the champion, leaving Ippo amazed. In the Jungle Arc while training with Itagaki, Ippo asked him what he thought the difference between each other was. Itagaki thought it was Ippo being a champion and him being a ranker. However, Ippo explained that it was their ages and that since he's older, he had the chance of becoming a champion before him, adding that being older doesn't make him better as there are things that he can't do that Itagaki can, expressing how glad he is that he doesn't have to fight Itagaki. Ippo returned to the gym and learned from Kamigawa that he, along with everyone else, have matches coming up, with Ippo fighting the Indonesian champion who was considered an unrivaled genius with him winning all all three of his matches. Ippo asked for any information about the champion, however, with the video Kamigawa received, he could only answer that it was a nice place, much to Ippo's confusion. Upon viewing the video with everyone, it seemed to only show monkeys and Indonesia. However, after Ippo inspected it at his house, he discovered that a man was among these monkeys. Ippo reported his findings to Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki, predicting that the champion is a fast fighter with great punches. Ippo found out from Itagaki that the champion's trainer is Miguel Zale. Wishing to observe how monkeys act in their natural habitat, Ippo went to the Shimono Zoo. However, the monkeys there were not active. Mari approached Ippo and suggested that his fight with the Indonesian champion seemed even, since both boxers have famous trainers raising his spirits. At the Kamagawa gym, with the opponents revealed for Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki, Ippo began training with the group. A month before the match, Ippo trained to stop the champion from going in circles around Ippo by trapping him in a corner and using combinations to keep him there. This strategy proved to be ineffective as Ippo and Kamigawa received a call from Volg and Donkichi respectively revealing to them, after revealing the champion's name being Wally, how after he sparred with Volg, that Wally is most effective at the corner. Despite the warning, Kamigawa theorized that the deciding point of the match would be at the corner, and continued the training to prepare Ippo for the corner battle. At the weigh-in at Korakuen Hall, Ippo met Wally for the first time, and after the weight check, he was forcefully hugged by the excited Wally, who then gave Ippo some of his bananas. Feeling bad that he ate the bananas and had nothing to give back, Wally insisted that Ippo would give him something the next day. Leaving the venue with Yagi, Ippo gave his opinion of Wally that he's strong, being similar to Volg and Sendo. The next day, Ippo felt excited for the match as he ran to the Korakuen Hall and in his waiting room he imagined Wally as Miyata in his mind trying to get him on the ropes. Just as the match began, Wally dashed forward with a punch, which Ippo deflected. Ippo proceeded to block every punch Wally quickly threw. Knowing that that would not be enough to worry Volg, Ippo decided to come after Wally and trap him into going on the ropes. 
When Ippo tried to stop Wally's movements with a body blow, Wally fled from the ropes. Ippo threw a long-range hook at the fleeing Wally, who attempted to dodge, but Ippo's pinky hit his jaw, causing him to go down. When Ippo got up, Ippo rushed towards him and noticed his stance had dropped. Ippo's attacks were then dodged by Wally's new style, and Ippo was hit in unusual angles until the end of the first round. In the second round, Ippo realized that he won't be able to hit Wally at the center of the ring, so he plans to get him to the corner. Ippo led him to the ropes by throwing punches that miss. Rushing forward with his peekaboo style to begin his attack at the ropes, Ippo's peekaboo guard was broken with a smash, which also hit the unsuspecting Ippo's jaw. Ippo began to move forward again as Wally entered the Hitman style stance and used flicker jabs. Ippo blocked the jabs until they got close to Wally, but he was unable to hit him as Wally evaded the attack. Ippo initiated a bob and weave motion, dodging more flicker jabs and then trapping Wally in a corner by using a zigzag strategy. However, the second round ended right as Ippo got Wally into a corner. In his corner, Ippo informed Kamigawa of his prediction that Wally will be pushed into the red corner as he noticed a habit of Wally's that he always jumps to the right. In the third round, Ippo went through with his plan to trap Wally into a corner. When Ippo got Wally to jump right into the corner, he was surprised when Wally did not appear in the corner, as Wally grabbed onto the ropes and flung himself behind Ippo, hitting him. Seeing it a second time caused Ippo to panic and get hit. Ippo was unable to get him into the corner for some time, as Wally's movements proved to be unpredictable, and he was getting hit by unorthodox punches at the same time. Ippo managed to get him into the corner after throwing a big swing while Wally was at the ropes. However, Ippo's punches were swiftly dodged to the corner, and Ippo was hit by a counter that caused him to stare blankly and almost fell before catching himself. With Ippo at the corner, Ippo threw a punch at a charging Wally's guard, pushing him back, with the momentum almost causing Ippo to fall. As Wally put himself in front of the corner, Ippo remembered hearing from Volg that the corner is where Wally is most effective. Ippo charged the corner to attack Wally. Wally went behind Ippo and countered him. Ippo then used a cross arm block to block Wally's attacks. The third round ended as Wally pried the block open. At his corner, Ippo was advised to hit Wally when he comes toward him, which Ippo took as Kamigawa wanting him to trade hits with Wally. When the fourth round began, Ippo's attacks were unable to reach the agile Wally. Wally switched to a more offensive style, which made Ippo confident that he'd be able to trade hits. However, Ippo was the only one getting hit, as he could not land a hit on Wally. Near the end of the fourth round, Ippo hit a small milestone of touching Wally's body for the first time with his fist. After the fourth round, Ippo went into the corner smiling from his small achievement, wishing to aim for bigger targets later one step at a time, starting with tapping Wally's body five times. In the fifth round, Ippo, while getting brutally hit, managed to tap Wally's body five times. Ippo was then beaten in the corner until the fifth match ended, with Yagi catching his fall with the chair, thanks to his chair skills. Ippo was instructed to touch Wally six times in the sixth round. In the sixth round, Ippo completed his goal of touching Wally six times, getting hit in the process many times. Ippo hit Wally's block with a punch that made him fly back into the corner. Ippo approached Wally at the corner and was hit, leaving Ippo barely hanging onto the ropes. Ippo then threw a big swing at Wally, who jumped backwards and stumbled upon landing. The sixth round immediately ends, and at the corner, Ippo asked Kamigawa for the next goal. Ippo was told to throw only punches that could take Wally down. In round seven, Ippo began throwing only punches with all of his power. However, they don't land until Wally tried to use his footwork to dodge, but couldn't, making Ippo's punches land on his guard. After Ippo landed an uppercut on Wally's one-handed guard, both boxers hit each other in an exchange, with Wally being worse off. Ippo landed another hit going through Wally's guard, making him go to the ropes. The seventh round ended afterwards. Before the eighth round began, Kamigawa ordered Ippo that his next goal would be to take down Wally. In the 8th round, Ippo and Wally have a slugfest in the middle of the ring, which ended when Wally was hit by a liver blow. Wally willingly backed up to a corner, which Ippo responded by approaching him while doing the Dempsey Rolls motion. Ippo used the Dempsey Rolls motion to make Wally unable to escape the corner. Both boxers stopped moving and Ippo landed a liver blow. Ippo then landed a right, which triggered Wally's trainer, Miguel, to throw him the towel as Wally fell. The referee signaled the end of the match, resulting in Ippo's victory as he falls as well. Ippo woke up in the waiting room and he told his curious gym mates how he thought he saw a bird flying at the end, which he realized was just the towel Miguel threw, and he thinks that Wally's amazing. Ippo went back to the ring, imagining how it looks like a jungle which he thought he was in during the match. Ippo acknowledged how Wally looked forward to fighting him and wondered if he met his expectations. He then believed that one day he'd look back on the match and think that it was really fun. Kronos Arc with Itagaki's first opponent in the Class A tournament being Karasawa, Ippo let him see his boxing magazine with Karasawa on it at his house. At the gym, Ippo noticed Itagaki seemed down and went to encourage him. Itagaki then asked what round Ippo thinks he would win in against Karasawa, with his personal goal to beat Ippo's time. Ippo answered that he believed it would go to a decision. When the first round of the Class A tournament for Itagaki, Aoki, and Kimura arrived, Ippo went to the Korakuen Hall and encouraged the three boxers before running into Sonata and Saiki on his way to the audience seats. 
Ippo watched Itagaki's match against Karasawa with Sanada and Saiki, which ended in Itagaki's victory. Ippo went to Itagaki's room to check on him and gave him a wet towel for his face. He watched Fukui's match against Makoto Maizoto on a television screen and was shocked to see Fukui lose. Ippo then watched Aoki and Kimura win by decision in their match against Ito Jackal and Takeshi Ryuzaki respectively, and Imai Katsutaka and Shinobu Iga's match where Iga, who had his trainer Baron by him, someone Ippo recognized, won easily by knockout. Blind Step Arc to celebrate Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki's wins in the first round of the Class A tournament, Ippo and the three gathered at Kimura's house. After some failed attempts not to talk about boxing as it reminded the boxers of their injuries, the group has boy talk, talking about their relationship with women. To Ippo, Aoki, and Itagaki's surprise, Kimura claimed to have a girlfriend. Kimura gave the three tickets to Nermina Park, which Ippo used to go on a date with Kumi. Ippo and Kumi came across Aoki and Tomiko, and Itagaki and Mari were there. Ippo tried to stop Aoki from spreading rumors of Kimura being an anime-loving pedophile after finding an anime DVD in his room, until Aoki called Kimura to show them his girlfriend. However, Kimura was near the park, not knowing that they're there, and told Aoki that he was at the park and would show his girlfriend another time, as Ippo and the others see Kimura with a little girl. Aoki called the cops and had Kimura arrested. Ippo and Itagaki then arrived at the police station after Kimura was proven innocent. They apologized to him and walked him home, with Ippo expressing how thoughtful Kimura was taking a little girl to an amusement park. Later at the gym, Kamagawa announced that Takamura would be having another title defense and that Ippo would be having his 8th JBC featherweight title defense against Hisato Kojima, a former lightweight ranker who moved down to the featherweights. Ippo wondered why Kojima would go down to weight classes to fight him. Kimura mentioned that Kojima was looking down on him, thinking that his toughness and power from the lightweights would let him handle Ippo easily. Ippo began training to thicken his neck to absorb the shock from the lightweights' punches and building stamina not to lose out from getting pushed by another body. When he heard that Itagaki was going to the Korakuen Hall to see who he'd be fighting next between Makoto and Saiki, they arrived during the opener fights and noticed Kojima cheering for someone. Ippo felt Kojima was a good person and proceeded to request a handshake before Kojima stopped him to ask for their fight to consist of Ippo stopping and exchange blows with him. Ippo answered that was all he could do, which Kojima replied that he would win then. Kojima began provoking Ippo about how his punches would break him. However, Ippo thought Kojima was still a nice guy and provocations were common before a match. When Kojima claimed that Ippo's previous opponents were crappy boxers, hacks, and jokers, Ippo asked him why he would say that as he believed them to be good boxers. After Kojima's further provocations, Ippo walked away, telling him that he'd see him in the ring, going home without seeing Saiki and Makoto's match. The next day, Ippo learned that Saiki won the match from Itagaki, and Ippo expressed how he was disappointed in Kojima since he thought he was a nice person. Later, Umezawa visited Ippo and Itagaki at Ippo's home, and first discussed about manga. Umezawa had Ippo read the latest boxing fan magazine issue that had Takamura's title defense announcement, and Kojima had a section claiming to know Ippo's weakness, and also mocked Ippo's previous fighters. Itagaki suggests that Ippo should cancel the match if he doesn't get into the spirits that he could fight him. However, Ippo expressed that it's his responsibility, as Kojima talks a little too much. While running with Itagaki, Aoki, and Kimura, they spot Takamura next to a campfire. Takamura advised Ippo to remember the faces of his previous opponents every time he gets hit by Kojima, and then to fight like a champion since it isn't about just him this time. After hearing Kamagawa's advice to keep Takamura's words in mind, but still fight like a challenger and fight according to his boxing style, Ippo decided that he would fight using his usual boxing. On the day of the weigh-in, Ippo went to the Roigal Hotel, not worried about what Kojima might say to him as he has faith in Kamagawa's advice and his training. At the weigh-in, while Ippo was in good shape, Kojima's body looked frail. The press then asked for a comment, which Ippo told them that he would do what he was trained to do and work hard. Kojima mocked Ippo's comment and then claimed that the weakness he knows Ippo has is the fault of his trainer, Kamagawa. The provocations made Ippo visibly angry. As Ippo walked away, Kojima claimed that arcade games measure his punching power as 2 tons. When the press asked for Ippo's score, Ippo replied for them to ask Kojima after their match. The next day, Ippo went to the Ryogoku Kokugikan for his match against Kojima. In the waiting room with Takamura, Takamura asked Ippo if he was going to be fine in the match, to which Ippo answered that it wouldn't take long. Ippo then entered the ring and the match began. Ippo took a wider stance than usual, and then after about a minute of neither boxer moving, Ippo dashed towards Kojima. In range, Ippo began to throw a left hook, however he was hit by a counter. Ippo was about to fall until he caught his fall and he remembered the faces of his previous opponents and Kamagawa. Ippo immediately threw a left that sends Kojima into the air and onto the canvas. The referee quickly ended the match without a count, resulting in Ippo's victory from one punch. Despite winning, Ippo held his head down as he walked from the ring. Ippo expressed his remorse to Takamura in the waiting room from how he fought against Kojima. Ippo thanked both Kamagawa for the training and Takamura for the advice that helped him in the match. After everyone left for Takamura's match against Peter Rabbitson, Ippo fainted. Ippo was found by Aoki, who began helping him get to the doctor until Aoki found out the autograph he signed for Kojima was found in the trash by Team Aoki, causing Aoki to run off, leaving Ippo. Speed Zone Arc 
When Aoki came back to Ippo and told him how Takamura might lose the match against Rabbit Sin, the two ran to see the match. They watched as Takamura wins by knockout after only one punch in the final round. The next day, Ippo went into Kamigawa's office and received a lecture about how the boxing he did was not the boxing Kamigawa taught him. As Ippo showed signs of a fever, Kamigawa had Itagaki walk Ippo home. At his house, Kumi visited to check in on him. Ippo mentioned how he received good advice from Kamigawa that violence is bad, to which Kumi agreed. Ippo was interviewed at the gym by Mari about his match. After commenting his praise on Kojima's punch, he told her that he should never have taken that punch and that he ignored and betrayed his training, training that never betrayed him and regretted what happened. After the interview, Mari was going to head to interview Kojima. Aoki wished to come along and asked Ippo to give his signature on a pair of boxing gloves to give to him since Kojima was a fan. When Aoki came back, Ippo learned that Kojima had retired. Ippo went to Umezawa's house and helped him with the editing of his manga. However, Ippo kept on making mistakes. They discussed the odds of Itagaki, Kimura, and Aoki winning, which Ippo believed Aoki to have the best chance. Ippo went with Itagaki to attend his sparring sessions. Afterwards, he walked with a beaten Itagaki and supported him by mentioning that it was probably a bad day. While talking, Ippo became suspicious that Itagaki, Aoki, and Kimura were holding something from him. Itagaki revealed to Ippo that Aoki and Kimura were thinking about retiring after seeing someone around their age and Kojima retiring. Not wanting them to retire, Ippo wished to cheer for them as much as he could. At his house, Ippo got a call from Takamura about bad news. Ippo arrived to Takamura to find out what happened and was shown a video which Takamura claimed to be a fatal flaw of Aoki's. Watching the video and heeding Takamura's explanation, Ippo learned that Aoki's fatal flaw was that he closes his eyes as a punch is coming towards him. Since Takamura did not want to go to the gym near Kamigawa's lecture about his match against Robertson, Takamura persuaded Ippo to tell Aoki, or Aoki would lose and it would be Ippo's fault. After not being able to tell him the next day, Ippo reviewed Aoki's match videos and discovered that his trauma of closing his eyes happened before his debut match and it was a right straight. Ippo went to the gym and after stopping Takamura, Kimura, and Itagaki from picking on Aoki, he got Tomiko to perform hypnosis on Aoki to reveal what caused the trauma. When it turned out to be Takamura, the gym members came up with a plan for Aoki to overcome his fear of Takamura to cure his trauma that affected his boxing. Ippo, Itagaki, and Kimura held Aoki while Takamura threw rights at Aoki's face. Until Aoki was able to keep his eyes open and describe what type of punch Takamura threw, curing his trauma. On the day of the Class A tournament finals, Ippo arrived to the Korakuen Hall to watch Itagaki, Kimura, and Aoki's matches with Takamura. Ippo watched Itagaki's match against Saiki, which ended in Itagaki's win. Later, Ippo was called to Kamigawa's office, where Kamigawa offered him a shot at the world, with the goal of fighting WBA champion Ricardo. Kamigawa explained to him that Ricardo only accepts boxers deemed worthy and ranked first, so Ippo, ranked 7th, would be facing the second ranker from Mexico, Alfredo Gonzalez. The next day at his house, Itagaki informed Ippo that Volg has a title match set up, Proud Wolf Arc. Ippo learned from Itagaki that Volg's title match was against the IBF champion, which would take place in Las Vegas in a week. After learning that Volg was a stand-in since the original challenger hurt himself during training, Ippo wondered why Volg would accept the match when there was only a week to prepare. At the gym, Ippo found out from Kamigawa the reasoning behind Volg and Donkichi accepting the match and planning to cheer for him as he wants to see him become the world champion. A week later, Ippo encountered Sendo on his way to the gym. The two then head to the gym as Sendo expressed how he wanted to watch Volg's world title match with Ippo. However, because of the time difference between Las Vegas and Tokyo, the match would air on television the next day. The next day, Ippo went to the gym and began watching Volg's IBF title match against Mike Elliott with Sendo. During the match, the referee of Caesar's Palace was doing a long count to help Elliot and then lifted him up for him to fight, allowing the fight to continue even though Volg should have won. Seeing that, Ippo became so frustrated that he slammed his fists down on a glass table, breaking it. When the match ended in Volg's victory and him becoming the IBF world champion, Ippo was amazed. Sendo's fire in his heart was burning after watching the match and wanted to spar against Ippo who also felt the same way. They then sparred, which ended with Ippo getting knocked unconscious and being found by his gym mates. Ippo went to Kamigawa's office and was scolded for sparring without permission and also losing. Kamigawa informed him that he would be relinquishing his JBC featherweight belt to focus on the world title, while Itagaki would fight against someone for the vacant JBC featherweight title. Go to the world arc. Since Ippo's customers at the fishing boat caught a lot of fish, Ippo was handed some. He decided to give some to Kumi, and after hearing that Mashiba wasn't home, he helped her cook. After cooking, Ippo began to eat with Kumi, and the two almost kissed before Mashiba came home and interrupted them. After dinner, Mashiba was curious as to who gave Ippo his beaten face, which Ippo explained that it was Sendo and that Sendo had gotten stronger. When Ippo claimed that his reason for training to come home safely was for his mother, who waits at home for him and wants to be able to walk home using his two feet, Mashiba told him that he had gotten weak. After a training session with Kamigawa, Ippo read the 
latest Boxing Magazine issue, discovering and showing Itagaki that Itagaki's JBC title match would be against the second ranker Imai. Later at the Kamagawa gym, Ippo's gym mates warn him about Alfredo's left, which are hard to avoid because of the Mexican-specific jabs. Being asked about his plan to go against Alfredo, Ippo believed it would be best using his own usual style. Later, Ippo asked Itagaki about Imai and found out how Imai's fighting style has changed to a more reckless one consisting of dual exchanges. Ippo then mentioned to Itagaki how he noticed that Alfredo's long jabs and left uppercuts are similar to Ricardo's. While training on his weaving to go against Alfredo's longer jabs, Kamagawa introduced him to a new method of training with a glove on a stick that can extend, shrink, and bend. Ippo met Alfredo at the weigh-in and gave his comment to the reporters that he sees himself as the challenger and wants to use his training and experience to see how effective he can fight at a world level. The next day, Ippo asked his mother that if he wins the match and fights in a world title match the next time, if she would come to watch him, to which she answered that she would think about it. Ippo then went to the Korakuen Hall for his match against Alfredo. With Itagaki's title match before his match, Ippo watched his match against Imai where Itagaki lost and Imai became the new JBC featherweight champion. After focusing with Kamagawa, Ippo got into the ring and the match begins. After getting surprised by Alfredo's lefts that appear longer than he thought, he chose to go forward and use his usual pace, using head slips and the peekaboo style to close in. Alfredo had successful attempts to counter the strategy by using uppercuts. However, Ippo was able to dodge and throw a body blow, which gets blocked at the end of round one. In the second round, Ippo got Alfredo to the ropes after dodging his lefts and throwing body blows that get blocked. He rushed towards Alfredo and dodged a left that was bait for his right. Knowing he couldn't dodge, Ippo stepped in and caused the right to hit his forehead. After another punch lands on his forehead, Ippo delivered a liver blow and began an infight with Alfredo, which Ippo ended up taking more hits until the end of the second round. In the third round, Ippo proceeded to chase Alfredo Alfredo, who switched to outboxing. When Ippo noticed Alfredo was going to send out a 1-2 and planned on dodging the right to avoid the right in attack, Ippo was instead hit with a long left hook he was not expecting, making him go down and become unconscious. Ippo threw punches in place as ordered by Kamagawa until the third round ended. At the corner, Ippo was advised to diminish Alfredo's stamina over time and also make him lose his willpower, as Ippo's stamina is the one thing he had better over Alfredo. In the fourth round, Ippo questioned what he should do and which attack Alfredo would use, since Alfredo never used a left hook before until the third round. He decided to push forward as always and try to hit Alfredo. Ippo failed to hit Alfredo while Alfredo was able to land many hits up till round 5. After round 5, Ippo asked Kamagawa for permission to use the Dempsey roll, and Kamagawa allows it. Ippo motioned the Dempsey roll in front of Alfredo in round 6. Ippo landed no clean hits, with Alfredo also trying to hit Ippo in the motion. Ippo tried to counter one of Alfredo's attacks with the Dempsey roll, but Alfredo pressed his body into Ippo's, stopping the Dempsey roll. A close-ranged exchange followed, and after losing at it first, Ippo managed to hit Alfredo with a glancing uppercut which rattled his brain, causing Alfredo to go down soon thereafter. After Alfredo got up and Ippo's liver blow hit his guard, the sixth round ended. In the corner, Ippo and Kamagawa planned to end the match in the next round. In the seventh round, the boxers enter yet another exchange, which Ippo eventually won. However, as he went for the finishing blow, Alfredo landed a powerful right counter, sending Ippo to the canvas unconscious. Kamagawa ran into the ring to help Ippo, and the referee ended the match, resulting in Ippo's second loss. After Ippo gained consciousness in the ring, he realized he lost and left. Leaving the venue, Ippo apologized to Kamagawa and was taken home by Aoki and Kimura. Battle of the Beasts arc the morning after he lost to Alfredo, Ippo went on a walk and reflected on the reason he lost, being that he wasn't determined enough to win and made the same mistake as when he lost to Date, feeling that he disappointed the people around him. Takamura passed by Ippo, who apologizes to him since Takamura was doing commentary for the match. As Takamura left, Kumi approached to check on Ippo. Ippo read the newspaper that Kumi found out that Ippo lost on, making Ippo realize he really did lose. While walking together, Kumi asks Ippo why he can't stop boxing, adding that he has no duty to fight nor anything to protect anymore. Ippo answered that he was going back as he couldn't quit after betraying everyone's expectations. However, he does not want to worry his mother, so he promised Kumi that it would be his final challenge. The next time he loses, he'd retire without regrets, never fighting in the ring again. Ippo went to Umezawa's home to help him with his manga. After continuously messing up the edits, Umezawa asked Ippo to draw some straight lines on a paper. Ippo was unable to do that, so Umezawa had Ippo leave, thinking his hands were messing up since he hadn't fully recovered. Ippo went home and was sure the effects on his body are temporary while acknowledging that he'd have 
have to inherit the fishing boat business one day, but wants to continue because he loves boxing. The next day, Ippo went to the Kamagawa gym and informed Kamagawa that he had good results on his exam. Kamagawa asked why he lost, and Ippo answered that he would not make any excuses as Alfredo was just stronger. Ippo was then told that he'd be starting over and wouldn't have a match for the foreseeable future, but would assist Takamura who was having a WBA and WBC middleweight unification match. Ippo was then surprised to hear that before Takamura's main event match, Mashiba and Sendo would have matches. While doing road work with Takamura, Ippo asked if he's become weak. Takamura mentioned how Kamagawa was hurt due to Ippo not making any excuses as to why he lost. Ippo felt that he had no excuse, but Takamura believed that one needs to make excuses as not having an excuse why one loses means that they are ready to quit. Takamura drew a line on the ground between him and Ippo, with Takamura claiming that past the line was the world, where only monsters can survive, suggesting for him not to cross it and give Kamagawa false hope as Ippo should be satisfied by becoming the JBC champion while treating boxing as a hobby. As Takamura left at the other side of the line, Ippo was unable to cross the line and follow Takamura. Ippo later asked Takamura about rushing to conquer the six weight classes, which Takamura answered about the length of time one can stay a boxer and how many matches one can have, seeing a unification match as a waste of time. Later, Ippo went to the Roigal Hotel to attend Takamura's press conference with WBA middleweight champion Richard Bison. There he met Mashiba and Sendo, having to stop their fighting. The next day, Ippo went to the Yokohama Arena to watch the matches with Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki. After watching Mashiba win his first OPBF lightweight title defense against Romeo, Ippo watched Sendo's match against Mexican champion Jose Nargo, which ended in Sendo's victory. Thinking about what Takamura had said earlier, Ippo asked Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki if they make excuses when they lose. After they answered that they do, Ippo realized his reason for losing was that he did not have enough determination and confidence that boxers like Mashiba and Sendo have in their eyes. Ippo, Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki go to Takamura's ringside as Takamura arrived to the ring to fight Bison. After the second round, Takamura asked Ippo what he could do. Ippo answered, do his best. Ippo watched as Takamura won, making Takamura both the WBA and WBC middleweight champion. Seeking Heights Arc at the Kamagawa gym, Ippo found out that Takamura was rewarded with the People's Honor Award. However, it was retracted after Takamura caused a scene while naked. Later, while doing road work with Itagaki, Aoki, and Kimura, a discussion arose about how far they could go, which Ippo claimed that after watching his fight against Alfredo, he decided that he wants to see how close he can get and how far he can go and do his best. That night, while thinking about a goal before sleeping, Ippo dreamed about Kumi working with him on the fishing boat. Later, during a parade for Takamura's win against Bison, Ippo was driving the vehicle carrying Takamura until Takamura kicked Aoki out of the car and Ippo got it to help him, leaving the vehicle to get wrecked. Ippo told Kumi the event and how Yamaguchi has been examining Takamura, leaving Kumi to want to learn how to do massages. Ippo decided to let her meet Yamaguchi, however when they get to the Yamaguchi chiropractic, the trip was disrupted as a naked Takamura flies out the boarded window. Later, Ippo was asked by Sendo to get two tickets for Miyata's 7th OPBF title defense. After receiving two tickets from Yagi, Ippo went to the Korakuen Hall and met up with Sendo, who was waiting for his teacher. Ippo gave him the tickets and was shocked to hear Sendo wanting to to fight Miata or Alfredo to get to the world title match as fast as possible, since Ippo's loss changed his plans. Ippo and Sendo watched Miata's match against Luisito Iko that resulted in Miata's victory. Since Sendo's teacher didn't make it in time to watch the match, Sendo had Ippo go out and wait by the entrance while he gets his fist's bandage changed. When Ippo found the teacher, she thanked Ippo for being Sendo's friend and Ippo heard about Sendo growing up. Sendo came out of the venue and the three went to coffee shop Hearns. During the discussion between Sendo and his teacher, Sendo asked Ippo to hit him. Ippo was pressured into hitting Sendo, letting Sendo be able to ask his teacher if she wants to live at his place. After hearing their conversation about Sendo going to Mexico, and having the teacher watch over his grandmother while he's gone, Ippo had to run with Sendo and the teacher as police were called on them due to the ruckus they caused. As Sendo left, Ippo told the teacher how he believed that Sendo was helping her due to her problems with her ex-husband and informed her the reason he was going to Mexico. While training on his weaving and punching side to side, Ippo unintentionally rose up and punched, which surprised him as he had never thought it was possible to do. At the Kamagawa gym, he found Fuji doing mitt training with Aoki. Ippo then partook in mitt training with Fuji, knocking the mitt out of Fuji's hand. Fuji asked Ippo to show him his fist without the glove and wraps. After Ippo showed him his clenched fist, Fuji explained that Ippo's fists being big, flat, and hard are the key to his knockouts. After Shinoda entered the gym and Fuji and him told their story as boxers, Fuji asked Ippo if he was coming back, which Ippo answered he plans to. As Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki talk about how the Dempsey roll comes from side to side, Ippo theorized what would happen if he added vertical motion to it. Ippo attempted to add vertical motion to it while training, however he stopped himself as he heard his muscles tearing. Ippo realized that Kamagawa had the same idea due to the training methods he had given him, consisting of twisting motions. When Ippo returned home, Kumi was waiting for him. Kumi patched Ippo's injuries on his head from the training and reminded him about his promise to retire. Ippo eavesdropped on a conversation in Kamagawa's office about Aoki and Kimura having matches. 
When Aoki claimed to have a new upgrade, Ippo excitedly burst into the room asking to see it. Ippo and Aoki got into the ring for a one round spar. Learning that it was a new variation of the frog punch, Ippo got ready to counter the technique. However, Ippo got knocked down anyway from the new bell horn frog punch and claimed the new variation to be a shock. On the day of Aoki and Kimura's matches, Ippo went to the Karakuen Hall. Before their matches began, Itagaki mentioned how Aoki and Kimura may retire if they lose, leading Ippo to dismiss any thought of them retiring, thinking that talking about retirement before a match brings bad luck. Ippo got annoyed when Takamura appeared behind him in Itagaki and talked about how Aoki and Kimura should retire. Ippo watched as Kimura's match ended in a draw and Aoki wins by knockout. After their match, Ippo watched Iga's JBC lightweight title match against champion Soshi Oshima, who Ippo noted how Soshi reminded him of Hayami. After Iga won and became the new champion, and Takamura mentioned how one should continue chasing after their goals, Ippo began thinking about how he lost sight of his goal and wondered if he even wanted the world title. At the gym, Ippo had a spa request from junior lightweight boxer Matsura. When they sparred, Ippo took some hits until he got close enough to motion the Dempsey roll. Instead of the usual left and right hooks, Ippo threw an uppercut from below, breaking Matsura's guard. Ippo continued attacking with the new Dempsey roll, hitting Matsura with left and right hooks and uppercuts until he leaned on the ropes, making Ippo miss an uppercut. Matsura's coach soon stopped the spar to prevent his boxer from any further injuries. After, Ippo was scolded by Kamigawa for missing the uppercut. He felt that he has a long way to go for the new Dempsey roll. While continuing Kamigawa's training menu, he was approached by Kamigawa. Kamigawa revealed to him that his new Dempsey role would neither be entirely horizontal or vertical, but diagonal, and if his opponent backs away, he would let his momentum carry him forward to hit them with a gazelle punch. Ippo tested the new idea out and was amazed how smooth it was when he shifts his weight. Ippo continued his training with Kamigawa with added additions to train the new Dempsey role. After a training session, Ippo went up to the gym's rooftop where he meets Takamura. Takamura asked Ippo if he can deliver and if he can carry the kind of burden to live up to expectations. Ippo answered that since his next loss would be his last, he has to give it everything he's got. Ippo was tasked to spar against world ranker and junior featherweight boxer Ryuji Nagumo. When the spar began, Ippo was able to see Nagumo's punches but could not dodge, resulting in him falling down. Kamigawa got into the ring and stopped the spar. After leaving the ring, Ippo believed that his headgear was the cause of him not seeing the punches at the end while he was weaving. Back at home, when Ippo tried to draw a straight line but couldn't, he figured he must still be hurt from his match against Alfredo. Ippo tried to convince himself that he is not broken, as he wants to continue training together with Kamigawa and live up to his hopes. At Kamigawa's office, Kamigawa and Yagi had suspicions that Ippo is punch drunk, so they have Ippo try to draw a straight line on a piece of paper. After drawing a straight line, the suspicions were not cleared. Kamigawa, suspecting Ippo still had cumulative of damage banned Ippo from the gym for one month. Ippo decided to use the time away from the gym to continue his training outside for his new Dempsey role, with the goal of coming back to the gym with the technique. While training, Ippo was told not to by Itagaki, as Kamigawa did not want him to. Ippo, not wanting to stop training, was introduced to a new way of training by Mari, weight straps for his wrists and ankles. Ippo was advised by Yamaguchi to move slowly if he can't sit still, which Ippo proceeded to do while wearing his weights. Ippo went bowling with Kumi and then his gym mates while wearing his weights, using the way he throws the bowling balls as a training method for the new Dempsey role while also doing everything, including eating, slowly. With the one month ban over, Ippo headed towards the gym, slowly. When he got there, Kamigawa had Ippo take off his weights and get warmed up. After being tested by drawing a straight line, walking in a straight line, and partaking in mitt training with Kamigawa, Ippo passed and was allowed back in the gym and to do training. Ippo went to Umezawa's house and told him why he wasn't drawing straight, and answered boxing relating questions about Umezawa's first serialized manga, because it's going to be about boxing. After receiving his brain imaging results, he informed Kumi that everything looked normal and sent the results to Kamigawa. After Ippo received tickets to Nagamo's WBA world title match, Ippo went to the Ryogoku Kokugikan where he meets Miyata, who is assigned to sit next to him to watch the match. Ippo daydreamed himself fighting and losing to Miyata. After annoying Miyata with his actions, he was asked what happened during his spar against Nagamo. Ippo questioned Miyata since he also lost to Nagamo, and believed that he and Miyata should get along since they no longer have a match in process. As Nagumo's match against the champion began, Ippo realized Miyata was holding back on Nagumo during the spar since Miyata was able to read Nagumo's movements against the champion, while well, Ippo really believed Nagumo could be champion. After Nagumo lost to the champion, Miyata asked Ippo if he was broken. Ippo reassured him that he was fine and he would train more before his comeback match for the next stage. Later, Ippo went back to Korakuen Hall and watched Itagaki win by decision, Kimura get a draw, and Aoki win by knockout. After seeing those matches, Ippo desired to return to the ring and show off his new Dempsey role. Ippo 
walked Kimura home since he had the most damage. Along the way, Ippo mentioned how he believed that Aoki could get a title match against Iga and that Kimura should move up a weight class so he can keep winning. However, Kimura disagreed. Later, Ippo learned that his comeback match would be soon and would be the semi-final of Takamura's WBA WBC middleweight title defense. While doing road work with Takamura, Ippo expressed how he believes that no one can understand Takamura's perspective and thinks Takamura should stop being irritated and take things one step at a time or people will stop supporting him. Ippo asked if Takamura is lonely, to which Ippo was moved after hearing Takamura view the point he and other champions see when they reach the top as extraordinary. Ippo believed that he may not be able to do it, but Takamura suggested for him him not to think, but to go for it. 10 months in the making arc. Ippo, following his 10 month break against Alfredo, was shown a recording of his next opponent, Antonio Guevara from the Philippines, becoming the new Filipino featherweight champion after winning against Malcolm Ghetto. Ippo, after finding out Antonio is a southpaw, asked Itagaki how to fight southpaws and came to the conclusion to use his right more than his left and to keep moving with his foot on the outside. After winning in a spar with three southpaws, Ippo went training with Kamagawa, who lectured Ippo on his new Dempsey Rolls timing. Shinoda explained to Ippo that it takes a great amount of determination to catch his punches and it's hard for Kamagawa to lecture him. Ippo and Antonio meet at the signing ceremony and shook hands. Ippo noticed Antonio's natural instinct to use his left hand while shaking hands. On the day of the match, Ippo went to the Ryogoku Kokugi-Kan, and when he went to the ring, the match began. Antonio kept Ippo out of range for a while, however, Ippo slowly was able to close in on him, punching him in the face with a right, causing him to fall. However, since he negated the power by swaying back, Antonio got up. After dodging a straight right, Ippo began his new Dempsey roll, but Antonio fell after a couple hits before it started and a slip was declared. When the fight continued, Ippo got clinched, which broke after Ippo landed a liver blow to get out. The first round then ended. In the second round, Ippo got outranged and his body began visibly steaming. Feeling lighter than usual, he ran towards Antonio too hard and loses balance when the latter touched him. Ippo hit Antonio with punches that draw blood even when blocked and downed Antonio before the round ended. After Ippo declared a win to Kamagawa, the third round began. Ippo stepped into range as practiced but tripped over Antonio's foot in the process and was sent rolling on the mat, causing a slip to be declared. After getting up, the fighters exchanged hits until Ippo was at his perfect in-fight range. Antonio threw a hook that caused Ippo to fall and roll over, making the referee declare it down. Ippo got up and angrily throws a flurry of punches towards Antonio as he blocks until the third round ended. When the fourth round began, Ippo managed to step in but was caught by Antonio's foot, with the latter hitting Ippo with a right to the head, causing it down. When he got up, Ippo continued attacking. Ippo attempted to use the new Dempsey roll, however his knee touches the mat causing a down to be declared. The fight continued and both boxers exchanged punches with Antonio going down two times. On Antonio's second down, Ippo gave a look to Kamagawa as if he wanted to say something. Ippo rushed Antonio to a corner. He then weaved in ready with the new Dempsey roll, with thoughts in his head knowing that his body changed and might not be able to go with Kamagawa anymore despite wanting to continue with him. In position with the new Dempsey roll, Ippo threw a left uppercut that gets countered by Antonio's left. With that, Ippo fell, ending the fight. Ippo sat up with Kamagawa at his side, telling him that it was over. Ippo bowed to the crowd as he left the ring with the second straight loss. Ippo went to the waiting room as Takamura left for his match. Ippo watched Takamura win his match against Keith Lycount on the television screen. Afterwards, Ippo walking home with Kamagawa, telling him his favorite parts of his boxing journey and that he enjoyed boxing. When he came home, he reflected on how he had never seen Kamagawa with a heartwarming face and laughing. He told his mother that he's home before going to bed. Later, when Kumi visited, she recommended a doctor to visit Ippo for the punch drunk syndrome. He went to the doctor, and tests reveal Ippo was healthy and could return to the ring after time off. Ippo went to Kamagawa and Yagi to announce the test results. Kamagawa asked for Ippo's conclusion, the latter announcing that he'll retire because of the risk of being punch drunk if he continues and he'll instead help with his family's business. With the announcement of his retiring, Ippo said his farewells to his former gym mates. Takamura asked of Ippo's treasure in his adventure and Ippo replied that there are too many to hold. Second Step Arc Two months later after retiring, Ippo helped Umezawa with his manga and weirded him out when he perfected the edits. Though Umezawa suggested that he could be a pro boxer again since his hands aren't shaky, Ippo felt the need to commit to living a life without boxing to make sure he doesn't worry others. Later, Shinoda visited Ippo's home and asked Ippo to become a second, as the number of seconds at the Kamagawa boxing gym has fallen since Kamagawa is hospitalized. Ippo told Shinoda to let him think about it. Later, while Ippo was fishing, he told Kumi that he would return to the ring as a second to help in the gym, knowing he could be helpful again. Ippo then began training Kimura as his second until the day of his match arrived. At Koraku and Hall, as Kimura's match was about to begin, Ippo went to scout on his opponent. However, he saw Ryuichi Hayami getting ready for his match. Hayami informed Ippo that he will create a legend. Ippo watched Hayami's match and was shocked when he loses. 
When Kimura's match began, Ippo's inexperience as a second showed as he accidentally threw a chair into the crowd after the first round. Then the next round, he placed the chair sideways. However, Ippo gave Kimura the advice he needed, resulting in Kimura and Ippo winning the match. Ippo celebrated his first win outside the Karakuen Hall, which irritated Hayami. After saying that he'd become a legend and win for the people cheering, he asked why Ippo demoted himself to a support role and why he won't return to the ring. Ippo replied he simply has no reason to. Kimura asked if Ippo's okay with being a support role, however, Ippo never thought of what Kamagawa did as being a support. At home, Ippo had a conversation with his mother about how he believed that becoming second, walking next to Kamagawa and training boxers would remove the bad taste he left Kamagawa when leaving. Ippo continued being a second, helping Aoki win his match. Itagaki then had his match with Ippo as his second, hoping to get praise, but by the end of the first round, Ippo criticized him. Ippo continued to criticize him throughout the match until he won by decision. Acknowledging that being a second was hard, Ippo decided to scout someone for the gym. Ippo then passed by the riverbank and saw a group of bullies picking on a kid. In response, he went down in an attempt to stop them. Prisoner to his conscious, Ippo then decided to defuse the situation by performing a dogeza after knocking down one of the bullies. The leader, Taihei, told the others to back off, knowing they would lose from feeling Ippo's strength. Ippo saw reminiscent qualities in the bullied child, Teru, that reminded him of himself, and upon seeing this, he tried to convince him to become a boxer. Ippo had it in his mind that Teru had amazing punching power, mostly due to the similarities between them when Ippo was a student. At the gym, he managed to get Teru to draw a picture of Taihei, which looked almost identical to him in contrast to Takamura's attempt to draw Umezawa. This would be short-lived, as Teru comically had no punching power whatsoever. Afterwards, Ippo took Teru to Umezawa, where Teru would meet Umezawa and become his assistant. Ippo then went to Karakuen Hall to watch Miata's 8th OPBF featherweight title defense match. During the fight, he met Imai, who believed that Miata is not fit to be a pro due to Miata's poor performance. Ippo was shocked when he heard that Imai state that the reason for Miata's struggle is because Ippo is no longer boxing. Ippo was happy seeing Miata win the decision. Imai, however, told Ippo that that was not the state that he wants to fight Miata in and for Ippo to take responsibility for his actions. Taihei Arc After fishing with Kumi, Ippo explained how seeing Miata fight, he became just another cheering fan, despite Kumi's previous beliefs of Miata taking Ippo back to boxing. Later, Ippo was asked by Taihei to teach him how to box. At first, Ippo denied him his request, but he forced him to perform several tasks such as apologizing to Teru and vowing never to use his fists for violence again. As a final test, Ippo had Taihei catch 5 leaves in 3 days in order for Ippo to teach him boxing. After Taihei completed the test, Ippo took Taihei under his wing and began training him. Then Taihei requested to start training by sparring. Ippo went to the Kamagawa gym for boxing gear. When he arrived at the gym, he was asked by Kamagawa, who he had not seen in a long time, to step in the ring for mitt training in order to prepare himself for Takamura, who was in serious training. To Kamagawa's surprise, when he told Ippo to speed up, he was unable to catch Ippo's faster punches. After the session, Ippo received Kamagawa's old mitts that were used for the first time when he caught Ippo's punches. Upon his departure, Ippo told Kamagawa that he'd be back. After training with Taihei for a while, Ippo went home to rest before heading back out for more training with Taihei. It began to rain as Ippo was informed by Teru that Taihei had done something and Umezawa went to stop him. Upon arrival under the bridge, Ippo witnessed Taihei beating up students. Ippo, in great shock, tried to reason with Taihei, but was rejected and had the mitts he borrowed from Kamagawa knocked out of his hands, dirtying them. Ippo broke down as a result of this as he had felt Kamagawa had been disrespectful. Filled with emotions, Ippo approached Taihei and threw a slap at Taihei while swearing a face that Umezawa would describe as not the face of a human. The slap resulted in knocking out Taihei, which Ippo would soon regret doing, lamenting that he had used his hands for harm. Umezawa had a delinquent watch over Taihei as he brought Ippo to the Chuka Soba with Teru following along. After discussing with Umezawa, Aoki, and Teru, Ippo decided to turn himself in. After a failed attempt of turning himself into the police and a week had passed, he decided to shave his head bald. Ippo went to the Kamagawa gym in order to apologize to Kamagawa and to expel him from the gym. Kamagawa, however, had two punishments for him. First was to clean the gym for three months. The second one was to train the two bald newcomers, Taihei and Kintaro Kaneda. At first, Ippo denied their entry as they made him succumb to anger. However, when Taihei told him it wasn't anger but Ippo scolding him, Ippo allowed them to join. Upon them joining, Ippo also learned that Taihei is Aoki's little brother, Taihei Aoki. When Ippo went fishing with Kumi, he showed her his bald head, which reminded her of Baldichu. While training Taihei and Kintaro, they stopped by the tree that Taihei did the leaf test under. When Taihei admitted he cheated the leaf test, Ippo assured Taihei just to pour his heart and soul into boxing. After Ippo told a boxing lesson to his pupils, Miata appeared before them. Towards a resolution arc, when Miata revealed himself to Ippo, Taihei, and Kintaro, he asked them about the arm weights that Ippo was wearing despite not training. 
Ippo replied that it's just a habit. Ippo then requested not to fixate on him anymore, to stop the harsh training as a featherweight as he's never coming back to the ring. Miata, aware of his own struggles, claimed to switch, only depending on Ippo's next answer. When Miata asked who told him he was punch drunk, Ippo could not reply. Miata then walked away, accepting Ippo's silent answer and deciding that whatever lies ahead will be his decision. After working at the boat, Ippo returned, and while walking to the Karakuen Hall, found out from Taihei and Kintaro that Kumi was irritated earlier. They then see the match poster of Mashiba's match with Iga, revealing the reason for Kumi irritation. When Mashiba arrived next to Ippo, Ippo warned him that the opponent he specifically chose, Iga, is strong. Mashiba responded by nudging Ippo's shoulder with his own, leading Ippo to believe that that was the reason he chose Iga to be his opponent. Outside, Ippo introduced Taihei and Kintaro to the ring, where a four-rounder match is happening. When Taihei remembered seeing Aoki here being made into a laughing stock, Ippo disagreed, telling him that Aoki was a pro, and then he got the crowd riled up. Ippo explained to Taihei to watch closely at the main event, as Mashiba's opponent Iga is his brother's objective. Ippo noticed how Iga is strong enough to hurdle for Mashiba to show that he's ready for the world. Remembering Fuji's report on how Baron said that Mashiba has three weaknesses, Ippo watched Mashiba's match against Iga with his two students. When Iga was trying to go in his own range, he used the peekaboo style to dodge and block the flicker jabs. Ippo realized that Iga's style is just like his and successfully predicted that Iga would get hit by an uppercut. After round one ended, Ippo witnessed Baron smacking Iga in the face. As Taihei and Kintaro became angry, Ippo guessed that is how they won their matches. Ippo then told them that he got slapped by Kamagawa once in a match, but it was for encouragement, while Baron's reason is for winning. Ippo watched as Mashiba overcame his three weaknesses and defeated Iga, along with his coach announcing the relinquishment of the OPBF lightweight belt to move on to the world his next match. Because Mashiba claimed that Iga was short one weakness, Aoki and Kimura were trying to figure it out. Ippo mentioned that it was Miyata's ability to make Mashiba fearful. Ippo also learned the reason why he lost against Alfredo and Antonio after watching Miyata and Mashiba's recent match. Because of his recent discovery of why he lost, Ippo went to Kamagawa Gym to do a review. Kamagawa found Ippo punching the sandbag and questioned as to why he was doing that. Ippo explained that after he lost to Date and in the Dempsey role, he lost his left punch, which Miyata and Mashiba used whenever they were in trouble, and he used a strategy with the Dempsey role that went against Kamagawa's teaching of hit before getting hit, making him realize that losing was inevitable. However, Kamagawa thought otherwise and told him how he set aside his left to achieve victory with his Dempsey role. Ippo expressed how he realized how he should use his jab and then his Dempsey roll, getting thoughts of returning, but was stopped by Kamagawa who wanted Ippo to teach his two students everything he knows as he could become a great leader. Ippo acknowledged that Kamagawa was praising him instead of scolding him because he's no longer a boxer, angrily hitting the sandbag. Later, Ippo and his two students went to the Roigel Hotel to attend Takamura's press conference for his second WBA and seventh WBC middleweight title defense against Michael Goat, where Takamura announced that he would move from the middleweight to the super middleweight class after the match. Afterwards, Ippo explained that he, Taihei, and Kintaro would act as support with Kamagawa, Yagi, and Shinoda, and ordered his students not to take their eyes off Takamura for even a second. The next day, Ippo went to the Ryogoku Kokugikan and stayed near the ringside with Takamura's seconds and his two students, as Takamura went up against Goat. After watching Takamura win with skillful left, he believed that that should be how he throws lefts, realizing his learning will never stop as long as he's involved with boxing. At home, Ippo reviewed how he used to use lefts, and how he used to only wait for a chance to step forward by dodging and slipping in, which he did more when he learned the Dempsey role and was punished for it in his match against Kojima. After his self-reflection, he noticed how deep boxing is. Later, while doing business at the fishing boat, he revealed his usual fully grown head of hair to his customers, telling them that he's back. Sendo in Mexico arc. Ippo trained with Taihei and Kintaro by having them do exercise suited for a six rounder even though they haven't debuted yet, and a training method that resulted he called the numbering system. With the Kamagawa gym members interested in trying out the numbering system, Ippo shouted numbers for them until they got angry due to Ippo only calling out left jab. Overhearing how Takamura went overseas after defeating Goat, Ippo was reminded how Sendo declared his intention of going overseas to Mexico and wondering what came of it. Later, Ippo found out that Sendo went to Mexico without telling his gym from Mari. Since Mari and Sendo's gym do not know the reason he left, Ippo told Mari how he possibly went to Mexico to meet Alfredo. Later, Ippo was shown a news article about Sendo and Hoshi meeting the Scamaris brothers. Importance of the Support Role Arc After receiving an invitation to a class reunion from Umezawa, Ippo went to the reunion at the Kamori Izakaya to see his former classmates from seven years ago. Upon entering, Ippo was recognized as the class hero and the Japanese champion. Ippo met Aikawa while there and was surprised to hear that she watched him fight but ashamed to find out that she only watched the three fights he lost in. After the party, Ippo walked Aikawa home. 
As they walked, Aikawa expressed her love to Ippo and wished to see Ippo win a match. Though Ippo reminded her that he retired, she asked if he had a reason to return, would he come back? However, Ippo had no answer. Ippo was handed a note with her number and email address before she left. Ippo reflected on how he hasn't really changed at all despite wanting to be reborn when he became a boxer, and knew that he hasn't found his answer yet on how it feels to be strong. Later, with the Date Gym hosting a sparring tournament for new boxers who haven't had a pro debut yet, Ippo took Taihei and Kintaro there for them to spar. There, Ippo met Date, Okita, Kobashi, and Oda, who are also trainers seeking to let their students partake in the tournament. After Taihei and Kintaro easily lost, Fuji entered the gym and revealed that Sendo downed Ricardo in Mexico, and that Sendo and Alfredo would be fighting in the next three months, and the winner earning the right to challenge for the world title. While Ippo was excited to hear the news, he was left speechless when Yuji reminded him of when he said that it was impossible for him to avenge Date and take on Ricardo as he was then. Ippo left without replying after Oda wanted to know why he couldn't fight anymore. At the Kamagawa gym, Sendo arrived from Mexico and asked Ippo to lend him the strength to go against Alfredo by explaining his punch's angles and timing. Ippo explained the punch quality and Alfredo's change in personality when the match begins, which he noted to be similar to Sendo. When Sendo expressed how he wants to face the Metzli Alfredo, Ippo mentioned how dangerous it would be. However, Alfredo would be more susceptible to counters due to the wider punches. Wanting to explain better, he decided to show Sendo by doing a mitt practice session. After he felt Sendo's punches with the mitts, they switched and Ippo threw a punch at Sendo's mitts, emulating Alfredo's speed and angle, which knocked the mitts off Sendo's hands. Afterwards, Ippo saw Sendo off as he went back to Osaka and then noticed that Sendo left his belongings at the gym. Ippo sent the belongings back to Sendo along with a letter. Later, Ippo informed Kumi about Sendo's visit and how he went to the class reunion and saw Aikawa, who gave him a note. However, he revealed to her that he dropped it while shadowboxing, losing it. Later, Takamura came back from his travels, and Aoki Kimura and Itagaki have matches before Sendo's match with Alfredo. Worried about Kimura's weight management, Ippo went to Kimura's home and discovered that he was having trouble with it. Ippo began focusing on Kimura to help him with his weight management by going to a sauna and eventually resorting to shaving the hair off Kimura's whole body and head to make the weight with Ippo also shaving his own hair. After Kimura barely passed the last weight check, Ippo revealed a strategy for the match that would make him go all out in the early rounds due to his low stamina. Ippo's strategy consisted of a repeated barrage of dragonfish blows. When Kimura's match against Junpei Yoshimoto began, Ippo was his second for the match, where his strategy helped Kimura in the first round, and Kimura won by knockout in the second with a reverse dragonfish blow. Ippo was then the second for Aoki and Itagaki's match, where Itagaki won by decision and Aoki won by knockout. After his recent wins as a second, Ippo realized how grateful he is to Kamagawa when he supported him when he was a boxer, wanting to thank him. When he went to the Kamagawa gym and saw Kamagawa, Ippo mentioned that he learned how to lose weight and add muscle from books in many different ways. Seeing that Ippo wanted to continue studying, he suggested for Ippo to get a passport and go to Mexico for the best materials on boxing. Ippo in Mexico Arc Ippo informed Kumi, Taihei, and Kintaro that he was leaving for Mexico with many motivations on going. When Ippo arrived, he got into trouble after bumping into someone before getting saved by the Scamaris brothers and putting on a wrestling mask to trick everyone into thinking he was a wrestler together with the brothers. After meeting up with Sendo, Ippo went with him to the Arena Mexico and was delighted to see Alfredo and Ricardo. After the press conference, Ippo ate with Sendo at a restaurant and was shocked to see that the waiters that were Alfredo's fans put a bug in Sendo's salad, warning him about it. At the Lucha Lucha gym, Sendo wanted to spar to work off calories, and Ippo was pushed into doing a no-contact spar with him. While Sendo intended to hit Ippo, Ippo dodged all of his punches while throwing held back ones. Sendo became irritated and shoved Ippo, making him lose balance. Sendo threw a smash that Ippo barely dodged, making the punch hit his headgear as Kazuhiro Yanaoka and the Naniwa coach arrived and immediately stopped the spar. The next day, Ippo went to the Arena Mexico to watch Sendo and Alfredo's match with one of the Scamaris brothers, Milo Scamaris. As Sendo was making his entrance, Ippo was confused as to why the locals were cheering for him, learning from Milo how Mexicans love tigers. Being asked by Milo about who he thinks will win, Ippo couldn't make a prediction, but deemed their ability as equal. Alfredo being precise and Sendo having more destructive power. After the first round, Milo was worried that Sendo would be going home after not being able to do anything. However, Ippo disagreed expressing how Sendo is someone who is unpredictable and can make the impossible possible. During the second round, Ippo explained to Milo that Sendo is getting used to Alfredo's punches, and that, besides his raw power, his animalistic sixth sense and ability to adapt are things that make him a world ranker. As Alfredo was cornering Sendo with attacks, Ippo mentioned to Milo how Sendo was prepared for this, remembering his motto of sticking to a strong opponent is something he loves, and he believes that Sendo has never changed from the moment he's met him. During round 3, the audience began stomping their feet, which Ippo compared to Koraku and Hall's Lollapalooza. When Milo noticed Alfredo's face change despite Sendo missing his punches, Ippo noted that Sendo is doing a lot and slowly closing the gap. 
concluding that he sees Sendo doing his best while also being jealous, reminiscing about being back in the ring. During round 4, the referee stopped the match as the taping on one of Sendo's gloves came loose. When Ippo noticed Hoshi fixing the tape and purposefully going slow to buy time, Ippo yelled not to stall and to cool Sendo down because Sendo was already fired up, prompting Hoshi to quickly fix it. Ippo continued to watch the match as Sendo defeats Alfredo in the 4th round by knockout. After watching the match, Ippo did not understand how Sendo was able to withstand the counter that he had lost to when he fought Alfredo before, concluding that the match was a good learning experience and that he still has much to learn. Ippo watched as the main event began with Ricardo's 22nd WBA featherweight title defense match against former WBC featherweight champion Billy McCallum. Before the match began, Ippo explained to Milo about McCallum's background, and how one can tell who will win a match the moment they throw their first swing, with a boxer's shadow boxing being able to give a hint. After being shocked at seeing McCallum's sharp punches in his shadow boxing and how McCallum is not showing any fear towards Ricardo, Ippo became worried that Ricardo could be in trouble. Ippo was breathtaking from seeing Ricardo's perfectly natural stance, and even more breathtaking that McCallum is fearless next to Ricardo with his guard down in a Detroit-style stance. As Ippo watched Ricardo being unusually offensive in the first round, he was confused and wondered why Ricardo's acting like that. While seeing Ricardo land hits on McCallum after breaking his guard, Ippo thought it must feel lonely not having anyone to be able to draw out his true abilities and strength. After Ricardo defeated McCallum by knockout in the first round, Ippo realized how he grows because of the opponents he fights, while Ricardo has never experienced it due to having trivial matches. He at first thought it would be lonely. However, he remembered when Takamura told him that his view isn't lonely, but extraordinary, wondering what view Ricardo sees. Ippo began to leave the audience area with Milo to group up with Sendo for the victory party. Later, Ippo, Sendo, and his group, and the Scamaras brothers arrived to Mexico's airport. Sendo gloated to Ippo how he won by knockout against Alfredo, who defeated Ippo by knockout, implying that he's stronger than Ippo. Ippo responded that it makes sense, making Sendo frustrated that Ippo doesn't care about being one up. Ippo worryingly asks Sendo if he'll face against Ricardo. Sendo revealed that he will once his broken fist heals, reassuring him that he will figure something out against Ricardo. Sendo left with his group after thanking the Scamaras brothers for everything. When Ippo heard the brothers tell Sendo goodbye in Spanish, Ippo was confused. Ippo learned common Spanish sayings from Milo before leaving after thanking him. On the plane to Japan, Ippo thanked Mexico as he feels that he's learned a lot. When he got back to Japan, he gave Kumi, Takamura, Aoki, Kimura, Itagaki, Taihei, Kintaro, Kamagawa, and Yagi masks. During his visit to the Kamagawa gym, when Kimura took off his kappa mask, everyone, including Ippo, laughed as Kimura already has a kappa hairstyle, which made Ippo feel at home. That night, Ippo went to see Kamagawa and Yagi at the gym's office. When Kamagawa asked Ippo if his trip to Mexico was of any use, Ippo answered that he sees why Mexico is the kingdom of the lighter weight class and that Sendo was amazing, knowing that he will be able to figure something out against Ricardo. Ippo mentioned to Kamagawa that on the way home to Japan, he fought Ricardo a hundred times in his head, and after the 95th time, he decided that if he took him to a close range punching match, there was some hope as Ricardo would have an opening for him to push through. Kamagawa asked Ippo about the 101st time, but Ippo noted that if one thinks too hard about it, even in a match where everyone thinks it's impossible to win, if they even have one hint, they can open a path, adding that the opponent is human, so as long as one keeps moving their body and head, nothing is impossible. As Ippo concluded that that is what he learned and plans to tell new boxers in the present and future, he thanked Kamagawa before leaving. Keith Dragon Arc At the Kamagawa gym, after doing mitt practice with Taihei, Ippo learned from Aoki and Kimura that Takamura is going to challenge the WBC super middleweight title. With Ippo excited to hear the news, Yagi told him that it'll take place in Japan, and gave him the champion's profile, which was in English. With the help of Itagaki, Ippo managed to translate it to Japanese for the gym members. The champion's name is Keith Dragon, along with his boxing information. When Ippo came across Heaven's Cannon and Ground Cannon, he becomes confused. Yagi suggested for him to look at Dragon's hobby, which turned out to be Mahjong. Ippo asked Yagi if Dragon is good at Mahjong, to which Yagi reveals that his skills earned him the nickname Manhattan's Demon King. That night, after cleaning and turning off the lights at the Kamagawa gym, Ippo went to Kamagawa's office where Shinoda asked Ippo how Kintaro and Taihei's training has been going. Yagi also informed Ippo that they've been talking about letting them do their protest and debut, requesting another weight classes. Ippo replied that they're not old enough to debut yet, but will be soon, and he will think of what weight class to put them in. As they discussed Dragon having to come to Japan to fight Takamura, Yagi expressed his desire for the gym to have a match at the Tokyo Dome, which would be a dream come true for Kamagawa. Ippo believed that it would be his dream too as a second to see his boxer make it to the biggest venue there is while bringing his hopes and expectations with them. Walking away from the gym and reflecting on how his current dream is for Taihei and Kintaro to debut and win, Ippo wondered why Takamura wouldn't fulfill Kamagawa's dream of debuting overseas. 
Later, while Ippo was doing road work with Taihei and Kentaro early in the morning, he informed the duo that they will take their protest when their birthdays pass. Ippo spotted Takamura and revealed that Kamagawa and Yagi have a dream of having a fight at the Tokyo Dome. With Takamura motivated to have Ippo and him take Kamagawa to the Tokyo Dome, Ippo reminded Takamura that he isn't a boxer anymore, but Takamura told him that it doesn't matter how he gets there. Ippo followed Takamura as he did his road work, reflecting that Takamura makes him feel like there is nothing impossible to accomplish. Later at the Kamagawa gym, when Takamura informed his gym mates of the bad omens he had at the Yamaguchi chiropractic, Ippo suggested for him to get an omikuji at the shrine he goes to. Takamura declined at first before going with Ippo and Itagaki to the shrine to get an omikuji. After Ippo pulled a future luck, Takamura pulls a worse luck omikuji. As Takamura ran away, Ippo became worried about him when Itagaki mentions that Takamura's luck has reached its limit due to having to fight a man blessed by the goddess of luck. After asking Miyazaki for something to improve one's fortune, Ippo got a variety of good luck charms and showed them to Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki, wanting them to be placed at the lucky corners of the gym to purify the evil around them. Kimura suggested to believe in Takamura's strength. However, Ippo wanted to do whatever he could to ease the anxiety, as that is one of his responsibilities as one of the gym's staff. As the gym members grabbed their good luck items, Aoki asked Ippo how he should give Takamura the voodoo doll since he will not accept it as he isn't superstitious. Ippo revealed that he already slipped one in his pocket a few days ago. When Ippo learned from Yagi that Takamura was going to the hospital in an ambulance due to a traffic accident, Ippo and Yagi hurried to the Tokyo Metropolitan Hirakane Hospital. There, they were relieved to see Takamura unhurt, as they learned that he saved a boy from getting hit by an incoming vehicle and that he was in the hospital for the boy since he cracked his ribs while saving him. While doing road work, Ippo informed Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki of the event and wondered if the bad things that keep happening to Takamura are really just a coincidence. After watching Takamura defeat his sparring partner, Ippo found Takamura running water on his right leg. Ippo figured that his right leg must be injured from jumping off the hood of the vehicle while saving the boy, which Takamura requested for him not to tell Kamagawa about. Ippo mentioned to Takamura that he's noticed that the weight control is still affecting him despite moving up a weight class, and his movements are dull, advising him to focus on recovering. When Takamura showed him some shredded material that he found in his pocket after the accident, Ippo realized that it's the remains of the voodoo doll that he put into Takamura's pocket, thankful that it protected him. Ippo wrapped Takamura's leg with a bandage with sutra writing on it. Later, Ippo waited outside Takamura's house in order to be Takamura's chaperone. When Ippo was about to walk with Takamura, he noticed a falling potted plant that's about to hit Takamura's head. Ippo quickly punched the potted plant before it hit Takamura's head, however Ippo was hit by Takamura since he thought that Ippo was trying to attack him. The day before Dragon is scheduled to arrive in Japan, Ippo believed that it would take a miracle for Dragon to arrive in Japan due to the typhoon. The next day the typhoon passed over which he thought was strange. Ippo decided to go to the shrine to pray for Takamura's victory over Dragon, who seemingly made the typhoon pass for his expected arrival. When Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki also arrived at the shrine, Ippo wondered why they came since they looked down on praying. However, they reveal that they've changed their minds when dragons seem to cause the weather to bend for him, so they can only rely on God now. The four continuously prayed, throwing their coins in the slots. When Ippo went home, he began watching videos of Dragon's matches to try and find something he may be overlooking, as his record of 25 matches with no losses can't just be from luck. Ippo was amazed to see Dragon is not just about luck, as he sees his calm left leading to his strong right despite the right being a huge swing. Later at the Kamagawa gym, Kamagawa had Ippo accompany Yagi to Shibuya in Tokyo so that Dragon can play Mahjong, since it was a condition that Dragon set that he has to play Mahjong if he comes to Japan. Ippo learned from Kamagawa that Yagi was known as the king of the underworld in the Mahjong world, being undefeated for 20 years and that the goal is to have Dragon lose in order to not let him go into the ring in a good mood. Ippo and Yagi arrived at the Mahjong parlor, Otakugan, and was introduced to the two other Mahjong players by the owner, Takachan Oi and Jen Murakami, who are Mahjong professionals and Yagi's pupils. When Dragon arrived to the Otakugan, the Mahjong match between Yagi, Dragon, Murakami, and Oi began, with Ippo watching. After Dragon won the first Mahjong match, the second match ended after Yagi got banned when he tried to start gambling with Dragon. Dragon's use of his left hand during the Mahjong matches made Ippo come to the realization that Dragon is a southpaw, soon confirming it when he watched videos at his house again. After receiving a call from Takamura, Ippo ran off to the shrine where Takamura was waiting for him. There, Ippo was surprised as Takamura made an offering. He figured that Takamura was anxious about fighting Dragon, but Takamura was excited for the match. After Takamura pulled the string too hard and broke it, he asks Ippo if he ever thinks that he should give something another try, as he has his boxing and natural talent, asking what's more valuable than those. 
Without hesitation, Ippo answered with his mother. As Takamura left, Ippo wondered what Takamura prayed for. Later, Ippo went to Takamura's press conference for his match against Dragon and the hero's way afterwards to eat. Walking back to the Kamagawa gym, he explained to Taihei and Kintaro how Takamura was a lot more calm when he ate compared to his previous weight controls, adding that the weight control is different for everyone, but it's harsh for Takamura. Before he ran off, Takamura requested for Ippo, Taihei, and Kintaro to meet him at the Chuka Soba after they drop off his champion belts at the gym. That night, Ippo along with the rest of the Kamagawa gym boxers went to the Chuka Soba, however Takamura was late. As everyone got worried about Takamura's chances against Dragon, after Kimura mentioned how Dragon was not only playing around with Mahjong, but also training for the match, Ippo remembers that Takamura even recognizes how strong Dragon is, revealing to everyone how he prayed at a shrine. Kimura asked Ippo if he gave Takamura a voodoo doll. Ippo and everyone else were worried as Ippo found the voodoo doll in his pocket. However, everyone became unimpressed of Takamura as he showed up looking in bad shape, claiming that Yamaguchi threw him out again. The next day, Ippo went to the Ryo Goku Kokugi Khan for Takamura's WBC Super Middleweight title match against Dragon. While preparing ice for Takamura's corner, Ippo had Taihei and Kintaro help him. When he saw Taihei and Kintaro try to get ice from another trainer, Ippo made them stop and apologize, recognizing the trainer as Oguchi and his boxer, Daisuke Watanabe from the Nabe Gym. After Ippo apologized to Daisuke, the latter wonders how Ippo knows him, which Ippo answered it's because he is in the same weight class as he used to be, telling him what he knows about him. When Daisuke left for his match, Ippo, Taihei, and Kintaro watched and cheered for Daisuke as he won his match by knockout. Ippo remembered when he used to be in the ring and did the best he could. He pondered that he has no regrets, but if there was one, it would be that he couldn't fulfill his promise to Miyata. Walking away from the audience area, Ippo came across Miyata. As Miyata mentioned how he came to the venue to simply watch his former gym mate, Takamura, he began to tell Ippo about Dragon's dominant arm seemingly being his left. However, Ippo interrupted him, revealing that he also noticed while watching Dragon play Mahjong. Ippo went off to Takamura's dressing room, regretting how awkward he is around Miyata still. Ippo helped Taihei and Kintaro build Takamura's ring entrance costume made by Wataru in time for Takamura to wear it. As Takamura's match against Dragon was about to begin, Takamura arrived to the ring with his costume designed by Wataru. After being unable to open Takamura's wings on the costume that were controlled by a device to open them, Takamura was able to open it himself. Ippo watched at the ringside as the match began. During the second round, Ippo felt as if something had been off since the beginning of the match. When he was asked by Kamagawa if he noticed anything, Ippo realized that Kamagawa had the same feeling and confirmed to Kamagawa. However, he did not know how to explain what it is. As Yagi and Shinoda tried to find the source of their discomfort, Kamagawa revealed the source as Takamura being stronger than usual since he's been freed from the shackles of weight control, which Ippo agreed. During the third round, after Takamura had a down declared on him, Ippo noticed how the event and Takamura's right leg being injured is due to bad luck, and as the match goes into Dragon's favor, he began to think that it's the work of the divine. After Takamura won in the fourth round, becoming the WBC Super Middleweight Champion, Ippo noted how incredible the proud Takamura and Kamagawa are. In Takamura's room in the venue, Ippo was tasked by Kamagawa to take Takamura to a taxi to send him home due to his injured right leg. Despite Takamura's complaints, Ippo carried him out of the venue to send him home. In a taxi, Ippo congratulated Takamura for his victory, believing that Takamura's wish to the shrine paid off. But Takamura claimed that if one has something to accomplish with the rest of their life, the one who's going to grant the wishes isn't the gods, but oneself, as the one who can do what they want to do is oneself. Ippo asked what Takamura means by that, however, the latter fell asleep. Upon arrival to Takamura's home, Ippo carried Takamura and encountered Yamaguchi, who came out to help Takamura. Ippo slept as Yamaguchi helped Takamura. Ippo's dream about hugging Kumi after coming home from a harsh battle led to him waking up to him and Takamura hugging, as Takamura also had a good dream. Thinking that the world title match was also just a dream, Ippo congratulated Takamura after he picked up a newspaper about a super middleweight world title match victory, realizing it wasn't a dream. Grim Reaper to the World Arc at the Kamagawa gym, Ippo continuously makes mistakes while mitt practicing with Kintaro, until Aoki came over and began holding the mitts for Kintaro instead. As Ippo saw Aoki flawlessly mitt practicing with Kintaro, Ippo claimed that Aoki should become a trainer since his mitt holding skills are great, making Aoki angry since it's like suggesting for him to retire from boxing. Ippo found out that Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki watched Takamura's match with Miyata and that Miyata's back looked lonely as he left. When Yagi entered the gym, Ippo was shocked as he revealed that he had another Mahjong match with Dragon, where after Dragon was thrown off by Robo Amatsu, Yagi won. Later, Ippo was fishing as he thought about how his gym mate said Miyata's back looked lonely, thinking that Miyata should go for the world already as he shouldn't have any opponents in the OPBF. Ippo was approached by Kumi and became excited when she revealed that Mashiba's world title match had been decided. Ippo learned from Kumi that it was Mashiba that claimed it had been decided. However, the world title match will be after the world preliminary title match against Juan Garcia. Ippo recognized the former lightweight world champion's name, knowing it won't be as easy as Mashiba says it will be. 
While Kumi was worried about Mashiba coming home in pain, Ippo was excited to see Mashiba join Sendo and Volg on the world stage, wishing for Miata to do the same. Later, while on a break from doing road work with Taihei and Kentaro, he was asked by Taihei about the left body blow, as he knew that boxers do it differently. Ippo demonstrated how he does it by lightly pressing up under Taihei's ribs, causing him and Kentaro to be surprised and ask Ippo if he could win a match still. However, Ippo mentioned that everyone he's fought and are still active are far ahead of him now. Later, Ippo was invited by Kumi to Mashiba's encouragement party at a public bar. There, everyone at the party wanted to know everything Ippo knew about Juan. After a detailed description about Juan and mentioning how a failed world title preliminary match can lead to retirement, Ippo got yelled at by everyone for ruining the mood. After the party, Ippo walked home with Kumi. On the way home, Ippo learned that the woman walking home with Mashiba is the daughter of the owner of Tanaka Transportation, Rie Tanaka, and that the company has people who were the first to accept Mashiba. Later, Ippo went to the Karakuen Hall to watch the title match between JBC featherweight champion Imai and the first ranker Hoshi. Ippo watched as the match ended in Imai's victory in the first round by knockout. Ippo and Itagaki met Sendo at the corridors where Sendo informed them that his match against Ricardo has been finalized. The three head to Fuji and Mari for the details, however the reporters revealed to them that Ricardo called a press conference for his next match, but his next opponent isn't Sendo, and that the match is already in contract, so Sendo isn't able to stop it. Ippo was shocked and excited to learn from the reporters that the opponent is the third ranker in the WBA and former Indonesian champion Wally. A week before Mashiba's world title preliminary match, Ippo did road work with Taihei and Kentaro. On the day of Mashiba's world title preliminary match, which Itagaki's match against a Filipino ranker is the semi-final of, Ippo went to the Karakuen Hall. Ippo was the second of Itagaki during his match, and he kept giving Itagaki advice that contradicted Shinoda's, making Itagaki confused. The match ended in Itagaki's victory by decision. After leaving Itagaki in Shinoda's care in his room, Ippo went to the audience area and met with Kumi as Mashiba's match against Juan was about to begin. Ippo watched as Mashiba defeated defeated Juan by knockout in the 7th round. Outside the Korakuen Hall, Ippo discussed the events with Aoki, Kimura, and Itagaki, being asked by Kimura what Mashiba said when he grabbed the microphone since it was facing him. Ippo believed that he was excitedly telling Kumi that he would do his best in the world title match. Ippo thought that the day that Mashiba will be accepted by the world will surely come. Later, Ippo was called by Sendo and was invited to go with him to Mexico to see Wally and Volg's matches, which Ippo accepted. Ippo soon told Taihei and Kentaro during road work about him going to Mexico again and how excited he is about it. Alpha and Omega Arc while doing road work with Taihei and Kentaro, he comes across Takamura, who made a failed attempt to scare him. Takamura asked Ippo if he was fired up from seeing his friends have world title matches, and if he's jealous of them since he defeated them and should have been the one going where they're going instead. Ippo admitted he is excited, but declines that he's jealous, as he is even rooting for them. After Takamura suddenly dashed, Ippo followed him, keeping up with the world champion even when he went full speed until they reach a shrine. As Ippo began to head back since he has work to do, he saw Takamura eat the offering to the gods that he warned him not to do, thinking that he will get smote. Later in the day, Ippo went to the Kamagawa gym and hit the miss with Takamura to settle unfinished business from earlier, with the rules being whoever quits first loses. After Ippo landed a body blow punch on the mitt, Takamura rushed to the bathroom to defecate, ending the practice session with Ippo thinking he must have gotten smote. Later, while fishing with Kumi, Ippo learned that Mashiba broke his jaw during his match against Juan, but since it was a clean break, it should heal quickly and he should be back to boxing in 3 or 4 months. Ippo revealed to her that he's going to Mexico again to see Wally and Ricardo's match, watching the match for research. After he was asked by Kumi what Miyata means to him, Ippo answered that he was his goal, since his new goal is to make Taihei and Kintaro win as professional boxers. While walking away from the fishing spot, Kumi thanked Ippo for making her be able to watch her brother fight and become proud of him, resulting in Ippo blushing in embarrassment. When Ippo arrived to Mexico, he met Sendo and Yanaoka at the airport. Yanaoka told Ippo that Sendo and Volg and Wally will need them to be sparring partners since they crushed the others already, much to Ippo's dismay. Outside, they meet up with the Skamaris brothers, who begin to drive them to their gym where Volg and Wally are. Along the way, Ippo asked Milo and Volg of Wally's condition, which Milo answered that they're fine, but the lack of sparring partners is troublesome. As Ippo noted that Volg's opponent is a short fighter type, Sendo decided that Ippo will spar with Volg while he fights Wally. Ippo was shocked as Milo was about to hit a pedestrian in the middle of the road, however the pedestrian jumped back and landed on the roof of the vehicle, and it was revealed to be Wally, who cheerfully greeted everyone. When everyone arrived at the Lucha Lucha gym, Ippo was excited to see Volg again. Ippo was asked by Volg's trainer, Don Kichi, if Kamagawa is in good health. Ippo answered that he is, which Don Kichi was glad to hear. Ippo watched as the spar between Sendo and Wally began. When Ippo saw Sendo was having trouble against Wally, he yelled out that he should aim for body blows, as it worked against him when he had last fought them. As he watched, Ippo was amazed by how Wally evolved. 
Preparing to spar with Volg, Ippo was handed headgear and requested by Volg to take his weight straps off, which he did. Ippo gets in the ring with Volg, deciding he has to be helpful to him, since the then-retired Volg helped him by sparring before his match against Ryuhei Sawamura. Ippo was requested by Donkichi to do what he always does and crush the distance and close in on Volg. When the spar began, Ippo rushed towards Volg, following him while punching his guard repeatedly. Volg was unable to escape as Ippo keeps closing in on him, punching his guard while dodging his punches. As Volg stepped back and Ippo continued charging at him, Volg launches the White Fang, which Ippo caught both hits of the technique. Ippo and Volg threw left and right jabs while moving along the side of the ring at close range. Ippo motioned the Dempsey roll and was about to throw a punch from below with it, however Sendo got in the ring and stopped them, scolding both of the boxers as it was supposed to just be a touch spar. Ippo slept in a room upstairs where Miguel and Wally watched over him. When Ippo got up, Miguel asked how Ippo's feeling as they may need to take him to the hospital. Ippo answered that it's only painful where Volg hit him and he was just tired from the fight. Wally asked Ippo since he retired if he no longer likes boxing, something that Ippo taught him was fun and why he won't come back. Ippo answered that he still loves boxing. While he doesn't give any answers as to why he quit, he claimed that he is giving it all to show everyone the greatness of boxing now. Ippo was surprised by Wally's excitement for his match against Ricardo. Later, Ippo told Sendo that he hopes Volg and Wally win. However, Sendo thinks that it won't happen because Wally lacks bloodlust. Ippo, remembering Date's amount of bloodlust couldn't stop Ricardo, thought that Wally would be a challenger that's unlike anything they've ever seen before just the way he is. At the Arena Mexico, Ippo watched Volg's press conference and Ricardo and Wally's press conference. Afterwards, Ippo was suddenly asked by Miguel to be a second in charge of the chair and water for Wally, as well as giving advice since he's familiar with Ricardo. Ippo reluctantly agreed after being guilt tripped by Miguel and Wally. The next day, Ippo went to the Arena Mexico. In Wally's room, Ippo was nervous about being a second for Wally, practicing placing the chair down. Ippo watched Volg's second IBF Junior Lightweight title defense on TV as it began. After the match ended in Volg's victory by a one round knockout, Ippo went to the ring as Wally's WBA featherweight world title match against Ricardo was about to begin. Donkichi asked Ippo what he knows about Ricardo. Ippo detailed how he uses the first round to scope things out, stays at middle range while not throwing a lot of punches, and how he is skilled at reading opponents' habits and strategies. Ippo learned from Miguel that Wally will be going full throttle from the start as the match began. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.